The anime begins with Suma, a 15-year-old boy who competes with his father Joikiro, for who cooks the best, every day they have a different judge, today Asuma's friend will be the judge, Mayubi tries the two dishes, everyone is waiting for her verdict and she says that the tastiest dish is Joichiro's. Suma's father is winning 489 times and Mayubi tells Suma that his dish tasted good too, so Suma forces her to try his new dish of squid tentacles with peanut butter, it is so appalling that Mayumi is traumatized by the taste. Suma has the quirk of combining strange flavors even though they taste disgusting, just like his father who once mixed sardines with strawberry jam. Later, an urban planner arrives, Minegasaki, who wants to buy the small restaurant to build a luxurious condominium. But neither Suma nor his father are interested in leaving the restaurant since they have the responsibility of satisfying their customers, so she asks them what they will do if they can't accommodate a client's wishes, and Suma tells her that they will close the place. The next day, Suma leaves school and receives a call from his father. Joichiro tells him that he has business to do, and they cannot open today, before hanging up the call. Joichiro asks Suma what he will do after finishing middle school, and he replies that he only thinks about learning more cooking at the restaurant. When Suma arrives at the restaurant, he finds that the entire ingredient store has been destroyed. At that moment, Megasaki shows up and wants a juicy meat dish to be prepared for her. Suma realizes that this is all her doing and agrees to cook her a meat dish. If he manages to please her palate, Minegasaki will leave the restaurant alone forever. Minegasaki is very confident, so she accepts and Suma gets down to work and prepares the closest thing to a meat dish with the ingredients he has. She starts to get scared and doesn't understand how he is cooking if they destroyed all the ingredients they had. But Suma still manages to cook a pork dish with potatoes. She thinks that he is teasing her since she ordered a meat dish, not pork. But Suma is very confident about the taste of his dish. So Minegasaki can't take it anymore since the smell is too good, so she tastes it and feels that she is in heaven. But she keeps insisting that this is not what she ordered. So Suma takes the plate from her and he doesn't let her eat anymore, so Minegasaki promises not to bother them again if he lets her finish the dish, so Suma allows her and her henchmen to continue feasting on the food. After that, Suma starts to clean up all the mess they cause, but the next day his father arrives and tells him that he will close the restaurant for two or three years and go on a trip with his friend, Suma is speechless upon hearing the bad news. But his father has other plans for him as he tells Suma that he will go to a culinary high school to learn everything he needs. Suma thinks that it will be a boring school where they are taught nonsense. But when he arrives, he realizes that it is not what he thought. Outside the school, there are students crying because they did not pass their exams and parents begging for another opportunity for their children. It turns out that it is not just any school, it is the top culinary academy in Japan, with a graduation rate of less than 10%. It's a super elite institution, the Tatsuki Culinary Academy. Stuma's father calls him and tells him that he's in America, a famous restaurant where everyone wants to try his dishes. He has been visiting several countries and has gained many fans. Also, he challenges Suma to survive the three years in that school or he will never be able to surpass him as a chef. So Suma gets motivated and hangs up on him before his father can give him a very important advice. The trick to be a good chef is finding a woman you want to cook for the rest of your life. At school, Suma meets Nikaido. He tells Suma that almost all the students come from families that own chain restaurants. Even he is a rich boy and his family runs a French restaurant. Suma tells him that he also has a small restaurant, but Yashiaki is shocked and shows his displeasure to learn that he is low class and tells him that this school is not for people like him. Suma gets angry and thinks that in this school appearances are more important than food, so he doesn't expect much from the person who will examine them in the school transfer test. But he is wrong. The examiner will be Arena, the tongue god. She earned this nickname since as a child she proved to be a genius with gifted taste who has been tasting famous chefs since she was a child and earning her score means failing in the cooking industry. Then she tells all the applicants that they must make a dish with eggs as the main ingredient, but they all run away in fear when they learn that she will be the examiner. Irina thinks that now that she got rid of all the applicants, she can go make new dishes, but Suma hasn't left yet, so Irina is surprised that someone accepted her challenge. Since there are no restrictions in the challenge, Suma starts to cook a dish that he knows very well, but Arena doesn't know the recipe he is making, so she forces him to tell her what he is cooking, since her time is not something he can waste unless for someone without any culinary recognition, so Suma has no choice but to confess that he is making rice with seasonings. Arena is stunned to hear it and wants to leave out of indignation, but Suma tells her that she will love his dish, so Arena stays until he finishes it, but the dish looks so normal, so she feels that he has wasted time. Then Suma tells her that she hasn't seen the transformation yet, since he has to mix with the rice, and as soon as this happens, it gives off a smell that captures Arena's attention. She takes a bite and loves it, so she keeps eating it, and the more she does it, the more indignant she is that the Suma's low-class cooking has gotten into her gourmet paradise. So he asks if she likes it or not, but the pride Arena's is stronger than her despite the fact that her whole body is captivated by the taste of the food. She says that the dish is disgusting and runs off. Later, she reports to the director of the academy that no student passed today's exam. 
Suma sits outside speechless, and Mayumi is a girl who left her hometown to be a great chef. But things did not turn out as she expected, and she is one step away from being expelled from the academy. Days later, the director of the academy welcomes the new students to warn everyone that the first phase of the academy will not be the same as the usual high school. From now on, it will start a filter that will expel the mediocre and useless ones, and only the elite will remain until only a handful will graduate, and those who reach that point will have an assured future as great chefs with international projection. Thanks to this, everyone is motivated and Arena listens from the side, lamenting for all of them, since no one has a chance against her. But she still cannot forget about the unpleasant feelings she had with Suma, although she is glad that she will not see him again. To her bad luck, Suma appears on stage, saying that the Academy is just one more step in his life, and that is why he will be number one, since he does not plan to lose against people who have never served real clients, which ruin the hatred of all the students. Then, Irina asks him what he does there if she discarded him, but Suma received an acceptance letter. He tells her that she should accept that she liked his food, although Irina completely denies that his food was delicious, so Suma is motivated to change her opinion in the time that he will be there. All this is heard by the director with a smile. After the ceremony, Megumi thinks that the best thing for her is to lay low to pass little by little and survive as long as possible, but luck is not with her, since in her first class, she is paired with Suma, who is the target of the other students who got mad at his speech. And to top it off, the teacher is famous for never smiling and being very strict since every dish that does not deserve an A will be graded with an E, so Megumi begins to lose hope. But she remembers that Suma seemed quite confident, although he is a bit lost since he never cooked French cuisine, so he goes to see the recipe. Meanwhile, Megumi begins to cook the dish as the recipe says, but as soon as she takes her eyes off, some students fill her pot with salt, ruining all the progress Megumi had and she starts to get desperate It can't start again, because the dish takes a long time since they have to soften the meat and they only have half an hour left. But Suma doesn't plan on giving up so easily, so he gets to work with Megumi as his helper, and in the twinkling of an eye, he manages to cook a meat that melts like butter. The teacher is amazed since he saw the accident they had and is surprised that he managed to make the meat so tender in such a short time, so Suma explains that he used honey. When he was a child, he read in a cookbook that pineapples can be used to soften meat, but he didn't like using pineapple just for that, so he experimented until he found honey, which had the same effect. The teacher and Megumi taste the dish and get lost in the exquisite flavor that honey gives to this dish, for which the teacher smiles, which is something meritorious enough to be a grade higher than an A. But unfortunately, that grade does not exist, so the rest of his classmates get angry since they didn't expect Suma to defeat them. And because they got distracted, the ones who mess up Megumi's dish ended up making a burnt dish for which they get a well-deserved eat. After that, Suma asks Megumi if she wants to try his new squid dish to celebrate. She agrees, but soon regrets it, because Suma makes her try honey squid, a new disgusting dish. Meanwhile, there are quite talented boys from other classrooms who also want to defeat Suma because of his superb words in the entrance speech. On the other hand, Irina finds out what Suma did and gets angry deciding that she herself would purge him soon. In the afternoon, Suma has to go to the Polar Star dorm, but it is so far away that he begins to starve and only has stuffed squid tentacles to chew on. Although he sees that all dorms are very sophisticated, so he hopes that his it may be similar, but he is very disappointed to see that it is a rather old dorm. Upon entering, he realizes that there are many weird students in this dorm, but the one that scares her the most is the caretaker named Fumio, who asks him what ingredient he will use for his dorm entrance test. Suma is left confused since he doesn't know what she's talking about, but it's tradition for Fumio to accept new students after they show her in the kitchen that they deserve to stay there. Suma didn't bring anything with him, but Fumio says that he can use the leftovers from the kitchen. So Suma accepts the challenge of preparing a delicious dish with the leftovers and gets to work. Fumio can't believe he's thinking of making something with so few things, so she warns him she will not accept it if he cooks an unappetizing dish, but when he's done, she's speechless when she sees he made a perfect burger and soup. Suma explains that he used canned mackerel for the burger and eggs for the soup, then Fumio tastes it and delights in this burger that could easily pass for meat before being dazzled by a soup that has all the flavor from the sea. It turns out that Suma still had some stuffed squid from his experiment, which he used to prepare the soup. Fumio accepts that Suma stayed there and thinks that he will be an interesting student, so Suma goes straight to the bathroom and enters totally no clothes, but there was Megumi also with no clothes taking a bath to forget about all of Suma's bad experiments. Then Suma goes to his room and reflects that it is the first time he has left his house, but he can't think much about it since one of his doormates named Satoshi calls him to give him a welcome party. Suma realizes that they are all weirdos, but Megumi believes that he would fit in perfectly, and she was not wrong since Suma perfectly joins the celebration, laughing, singing, and eating the dishes that all the students prepare. One of them brings up the topic of the Elite Ten of the Academy, so Suma asks them to explain who they are since he does not know about them. 
Then they tell him that it is the student committee made up of the 10 best cooks in the school, who have direct decision-making power in school and are only below the principal. After everyone goes to sleep, Satoshi cooks one of his dishes for Suma and he is amazed at how delicious it is, even though he made it in just a few minutes so, Satoshi reveals that he heard his speech and believes that becoming number one will not be as easy as Suma thinks, and he introduces himself again, he is Satoshi, the seventh seat of the Elite Ten of the Academy, and he wants Suma to show him that he is not just words, cooking him a dish that surpasses what he just tasted. Suma gets excited and understands why his father put him in this academy, so after realizing what Satoshi did to cook this wonder, Suma decides to make a dish with the same ingredient and with the same spring theme that Satoshi used, and then he gets to work, and the others are woken up by the sound of the kitchen, but they get a big surprise since it is a cook-off and Satoshi is the one who started it. Suma finishes his dish, which is tea over mackerel rice ball, so Satoshi at first glance believes that this dish is too pedestrian, since it looks like dinner for the masses. But when he tries it, he completely changes his mind since he feels a taste that he never would have expected. The others ask Suma how he got the fish to be so crispy and Satoshi reveals that Suma used a French method, pola, but it turns out that even Suma himself did not know the pola method, since he only learned it from his father, he taught him that this is a good way to cook fish, and Suma says that he doesn't know his father very well, but he believes that he learned it because he visited many countries. Satoshi is impressed by Suma's flexibility by not being tied to any traditional or country style, so his options are endless. Satoshi recognizes him as a cook and Megumi just woke up to burn her eyes with Satoshi's butt. Satoshi shakes hands with Suma and declares a tie. Then everyone goes to their rooms, but Suma wants to become number one, so he asks Satoshi if he would take his place after defeating him. Satoshi is impressed by Suma's ambition. He thinks that the residents of the Polar Star dorm should be like him, but he rejects his duel, since it is too late and also, Satoshi believes that Suma is underestimating a little how serious the students of this school take the cook-off, since cooking is everything here. The next day, Suma waits for Satoshi to challenge him again for his position as seventh best cook, but no one seems to care so he is left confused. Over breakfast, Satoshi explains that to challenge someone you have to offer something of equal value, but 7th place is worth even more than Suma's expulsion, so he doesn't want to accept something that puts him at risk. Meanwhile, Marina is in a cooking battle, she is facing off with the leader of a club that she considers unnecessary, because they try to live off the achievements of their ancestors, without evolving after so many years. Satoshi explains that to have a cook-off, three steps must be followed an official certification that guarantees the legitimacy of the challenge, an odd number of judges, and an agreement between the two participants on the conditions of the challenge. All of this is necessary for the challenge to be official at school It is called Shakujiki, Cooking Battle. Returning to Arena, she crushes her opponent 3-0 and he can't believe it. So Arena goes to his dish and mentions all the mistakes she can find with her own eyes, so he does the same and feels that Arena's dish takes him to paradise, which forces him to accept defeat. So Arena goes ahead with the demolition of his club in front of everyone. Meanwhile, Suma is surprised how complicated it is to organize a shakujiki. But Satoshi has high expectations for him since he was able to get a draw out of him despite him being the 7th best cook in the school. But Ebisaki, a doormate, doesn't think Suma is special. Since Satoshi didn't cook his specialty and didn't seem to take it very seriously, though Satoshi denies it since he gave his all. The next day, Satoshi wakes up Suma to ask him for help in the farming tasks, they plant and harvest their own ingredients in order to have the best of the best, and Suma is surprised to see the farm they have set up among so few people. Although the big surprise is to see Satoshi in his excessively revealing outfit. Megumi is also helping and Suma is grateful to see her, since she is the most normal one there then. Suma tries one of the tomatoes and is surprised at how delicious they are. They spend all their time cultivating the land to harvest. After a while, they take a break and Megumi prepares them some onagers to eat. But these are delicious with varied flavors, so Suma is surprised that she is doing so badly in class. But Megumi says it's because she gets nervous in exams and her mind goes blank. Then, Satoshi tells Suma about the research society, since they are the clubs of the school, which are designed to create new dishes from a specific area. So Suma goes to investigate and is amazed at the diversity of clubs that exist. But the one that catches his attention is the Donbury Research Society, since the rice bowls are tasty and cheap and could give him ideas for his restaurant. Upon arriving at the club room, they find the depressed leader because the club is shutting down. He tells them that Arena spends her time dismantling clubs that do not seem useful to her, and the club is empty because everyone fled when Arena set her sights on the Rice Bowls club. Suddenly, Akumi arrives, she is Arena's lackey in charge of dismantling this club. The leader tries to stop her, but he can't do anything since he doesn't think he can beat her in a shock of Jackie and Akumi mocks him since she thinks she's invincible for having the ability to prepare the best meat dishes. Stoma defends the leader of the club and challenges Ikumi to a shakajeki, saying that if he loses, he will leave the school. 
but if he wins, she will join the Donbury Research Society to support the development of this dish that has been so despised. Akubi is surprised, but she is confident, so she agrees and says that the meat will be the theme, and they both make a bowl of rice. The members of the dorm are worried about Suma, so he begins to plan what they will prepare, and the leader prefers to move away from the beef that Akumi dominates so much and focus on chicken or pork. But Suma does not want to do it that way. Since he wants to teach Akumi that the rice bowl is a decent dish, it would be better to show her that a dish with cheap meat can be her famous A5 meat. But the leader is not so convinced, since he once tasted the best Akumi meat and felt that it melted like butter in his mouth. Anyway, they have to practice, so he asks how much budget he has, but what he hears is sad. So he goes to look for the money that his father left him, although it is not much either, so he remembers how carefree his father is. After that, the leader and Megumi collect all the Aris recipes for rice bowls that they have and get to work to try to overcome Ikui's meat, but after spending a couple of days trying, they get nothing, for which the leader gets sadder. Megumi thinks that they should rest and maybe Suma will light up again like when he used the honey to soften the meat. This gives Suma a perfect idea. So he prepares a steak with onion that ends in a dish of meat so soft and tasty that can be cut with chopsticks, which is the best they have prepared so far, but the leader doesn't know if this will be enough to defeat Akui. The day of the Shakajeki arrives and Megumi gets nervous seeing so many people gathered in the arena, but Suma doesn't seem to have nerves since, according to him, a restaurant is more terrifying. Although the leader is still surprised, since when he had a Shakajeki against another Aras, there was not a single spectator. Then, Akumi enters the stage and her fanboys go crazy for her, since Akumi is known for cooking wearing flashy brands that show off her big melons. After her, Suma goes on stage and is booed by almost all the students who still remember his speech at the opening ceremony, though Suma doesn't know what he did to deserve so much hate. After that, everyone is surprised to see Armina. She also came to see the Shakajeki to witness how Suma is expelled once and for all. The Shakajeki begins and Aikumi shows her high-quality ingredient, the F5 meat that she treats with great precision and delicacy, forming a perfect cut, which begins to give off an exquisite smell when cooked, and on the other hand, Suba shows that he will use cheap meat and on sale, so Aikumi thinks she's already won. Irina asks her secretary if she knows what Aikumi's secret skill, and she replies that it might be her great strength, but Irina says no since it's the opposite. Akumi is so delicate that she can sense the temperature precisely and the way she touches the meat is just like a pianist. Then, Akumi goes to look what Suma is cooking and tries to provoke him, but Suma doesn't fall for it and says that the more you talk in the kitchen, the more you make it clear that you don't trust your abilities, so Akumi gets annoyed, although she smells what Suma is preparing and is speechless, so she goes back to finish her dish. Time is up, and now it's time for the judges to decide who wins, so Akumi delivers her dish first and the judges praise the beautiful presentation and dedication that the meat has, the dish is exquisite. Because of this, the whole crowd think that Akumi is the winner, even the judges joke that they don't want to try Suma's dish to keep the taste of a five meat in their mouths, but Suma is not intimidated and brings his dish to them. They immediately change their minds, smelling what Suma cooked. They eat the first bite, and that's when the winner was decided, since there was no going back and they ate without stopping since Suma. In addition to tenderizing the meat with onion, improved the sauce so that they combined perfectly and added handmade pickled plum paste to the rice to even out the freshness of the dish, generating a perfect combo that doesn't let you go once you start eating. Akumi doesn't think her dish was that far behind in rice, but she notices that the judges didn't finish eating her rice and Suma suspected that would happen since the F5 meat overshadowed the rice too much and she did not beat the requirements of a bowl of rice. This dish is characterized by being a whole in perfect harmony to boost the flavors of the other ingredients. Akumi is still in disbelief as Suma only used cheap ingredients, but her opinion changes when she tries the Suma rice bowl as she remembers her childhood. The dish whispers to Akumi to be herself. After that, all three judges vote in favor of Suma. Marina gets angry seeing this and decides to fire Akumi and take away the new kitchen that she had given her to top it off. Suma congratulates Akumi for being the new member of the Donbura Research Society. Then the leader runs to Suma and thanks him for saving the Aras from Arena, and tells him that he deserves to be the true leader, so he vows to follow him to see how Suma will raise the Aras to the next level. The next day, Akumi dresses up to go to the club room, but she only finds the leader. He tells him that Suma did not accept being the leader because he only went to see him that day because he was interested in a recipe not to join the club. Akumi can't believe it, and she becomes more violent than she was before. Days later, the first year students are notified about the culinary trip. Megumi begins to tremble in fear, as this camp is reputed to be a strainer that eliminates more than half of the freshmen. But Suma doesn't look afraid since he only has to be in the half that is going to survive, so he motivates all the members of Polar Star Dorm to do their best to survive this camp. They spend the days practicing and packing everything they need for the trip. When they arrive at their destination, everyone is surprised to see a resort with a luxury hotel. 
although Sua tries not to be surprised, even though it is obvious how surprised he is. The commencement ceremony begins, and they show who will be their evaluators. All the students are surprised, since the evaluators are nothing more and nothing less than former academy graduates who have achieved great international success and are practically celebrities in the culinary world. As soon as the chefs enter the room, Chef Shinomiya expels a student before starting the tests for using citrus-scented hair gel, making it clear that everything counts in the perfection they see, including their personal appearance. Then the head chef of the hotel named Jin begins to speak, who is recognized for having been the number one student in his class, who proceeds to separate them into a group to start the hell camp. The first test that Sumo will have will be given by Chef Hinako, who brings them together in pairs and a student named Takumi appears in front of Suma to declare war on him. Since he heard Suma's speech, he has wanted to confront him. Meanwhile, Hinako tells them to cook something Japanese with the ingredients at their disposal which are found in nature, which makes everyone nervous since they have to hunt or fish first and have little time to think of a main course with what they find. Unlike the others, Takumi and Suma remain calm and Takumi asks Hinako to rate their dishes to find out which is the most exquisite, but she refuses since it is not part of her job. So Takumi is embarrassed that even his twin brother, Asami, laughs at him. They start hunting for ingredients and Suma starts fishing on Megumi's orders since they don't have time to look for something better. So Takumi doesn't miss the opportunity to make fun of him and show him that there were much better things a little further than where everyone was already looking. Takumi and Aizami found ducks and also managed to see rabbits and chickens. The twin brothers get down to business and impress everyone as they are incredibly fast because they both work at the restaurant for the masses of their family in Italy, just like Suma. So they believe they are the ones to defeat him. Takumi and Mizumi finish their main course in the blink of an eye, and they manage to adapt an Italian recipe to the Japanese style. So Himako is amazed at the duck delicacy they prepared for her. She tells them that they have passed her exam. Megumi can't help but see the resemblance they have to Suma, as they improvise combinations to accomplish their goal. Two years ago, when Takumi and Aizami were 13 years old, their father decided to send them to the academy in Japan, because even though Takumi would surpass him in a short time, he would not go any further. So he sent him there so Takumi could find a rival that would force him to surpass his limit, and he seems to have found it in Suma, as he can't forgive him underestimating him like that at the opening ceremony. Hinako changes her mind and agrees to decide which of the two dishes is better, since she expects Suma to prepare something that is up to the task. So Suma thinks and remembers that Takumi mentioned chickens, then he comes up with an idea. He asks Hinako if everything he have within reach can be used, and Hinako says yes. So Suma takes Hinako's snacks to use as a secret ingredient and gives Megumi a list of ingredients while he gets the last thing he needs. Suma finds chickens and behind them are what he was looking for so much eggs. Meanwhile, Hinako starts to get bored since everyone makes boiled fish and they all have the same texture, so it's hard for them to stand out. Suddenly Suma arrives with eggs and uses Hinako's snacks as a breading to make a fried fish which surprises Hinako since in all the years she did this test. No one could deliver fried fish, so she tries Suma and Megumi's dish, and she is amazed with the texture he achieved using her snacks. He also made a sauce that lightens the fat in the fish when using the eggs, and the vegetables also fulfill their function. So Suma and Megumi pass the test. Then Takumi wants to know which of the two dishes was the best, but Hinako can't decide between one or the other. And to make matters worse, Shinomiya calls her since they have taken longer than expected, so Hinako tells everyone to go to the buses, so as not to having to give an answer at this moment. Then Takumi tells the Suma that the next time they meet will be in a shakajiki to settle the war. Although the next time they meet is on the bus and he has no choice but to hang out with Suma. Upon arriving at the hotel, Yuki believes that after these ordeals they will finally be able to enjoy the luxuries of the hotel, but unfortunately, this is not the case. They will have to cook dinner for the guests, and to have free time they will have to prepare 50 dishes so everyone gets to work, and Suma finishes in an instant, then tells them that he will wait for them in the room to play, so his friends are impressed by the amount of energy he has. Suma changes his plans and decides to take a bath since being the first he will have everything to himself, but on the way he collides with Arena who had finished even faster than him. Arena is embarrassed and prays that Suma didn't hear her, since she was humming happily as she walked, but Suma did notice which makes Arena even more embarrassed. She changes the subject saying that she can't believe how boring this camp is for Arena, it's not the hell they tell her, but Suma sees her quite happy, so Arena pretends she doesn't know what he's talking about, then her secretary arrives and Suma tells her that they just ran into each other and he fell on top of her. But this is very easy to confuse, so Arena is embarrassed and Suma leaves to avoid more trouble. After that, he arrives at the men's bathroom and meets Jin, who is surprised the student arrives fast enough to find him again, since Satoshi also managed to find him last year, and to Jin, he seemed like a promising boy. Jin talks to Suma about Arena, and Suma realizes that she finished earlier, then Jin tells him that she is probably the most talented in the entire academy, 
since her Tum God has been praised since she was a little girl and has led her to where she is now, but she is still a diamond in the rough, so Suma has to sharpen his fangs to try to devour her. Later in their rooms, they arrive with a lot of energy, but almost all of them collapse after a couple of minutes and the others are surprised that Megumi is still standing since she usually ends up exhausted, but this time it was different for her. She felt that she was useful today, and she gained a little bit of confidence, so Suma and the others also cheer her on, they know that she's a good cook. The next day, it is the test of Chef Shinomiya, he gives them one of his recipes and gives them the ingredients to cooking it, he also tells them that they cannot form teams and all those who help each other or share information will be expelled that everyone fights to get ingredients quickly, but Megumi can't get a cauliflower in good condition, so her first reaction is to ask Suma for help, but she manages to stop herself in time and begins to think on her own how she can fix the problem she has. Suddenly, one student gave advice to another, and they were promptly expelled. Later, very few pass Shinomiya's test, Suma manages to pass it. Megumi also finishes her dish and presents it to him, but she fails to pass the test. Megumi wants to know why, so Shinomiya explains that it's because she used vinegar to fix the color of the cauliflower and added a slight sour taste that harmonizes with the sweetness of the other vegetables, but he never said that they could change his recipe, since what he wanted was to highlight the sweetness, and there was no room for acid. After that, Shinomiya leaves thinking that you will have no complaints with that answer, but Suma cannot remain calm, and says that Megumi only improvised due to the unfavorable circumstances she had. And it was his fault that there were bad ingredients, but Shinomiya says that he did it on purpose, since it's part of the test, then he threatens to expel him too. So Megumi tells Suma not to worry about her, as she's fine with his answer. Suma sees Megumi's teary smile and remembers all the short but good moments he had with her. So he decides to challenge Shinomiya to a shokojeki, since that's the way problems between cooks are resolved. Shinomiya laughs at the shokojeki's nostalgia, but they both have to agree and he doesn't want to, so there's no more discussion. Suddenly, Jin appears and tells him not to decide so quickly. Hinako and Jin try Megumi's dish, and it is delicious, then Hinako gets upset because Shinomiya has been too inflexible. But Shinomiya doesn't want to listen to her opinion and tells Jin that he has complete authority in his tests, so they shouldn't interfere. Shinomiya says that he doesn't want to have a duel to withdraw Megumi's expulsion, but Hinako says that she does, so Jin uses this tie in the decisions to approve the Shakujiki after the activities. After that, Megumi starts to cry because Suma is in serious trouble now that he proposed this shakujiki. But Suma tells her not to worry since he did it, because he doesn't think she should fall in this test. Mike comes and their doormates are worried because Megumi and Suma don't show up, so it gives them a bad feeling about Suma's eagerness to get into cook-offs. Later, Jin takes them to the basement of the hotel, and there they have the other instructors as judges, not counting Hinako because of her clear preference for Megumi. Then Jin begins to explain the rules. They will use the leftover vegetables, and the most surprising condition is that Suma will be the assistant chef and Megumi will be the one who decides what to cook. So Suma asks why, and Jin says that he won't be able to save her always. So she has to show that she deserves to stay and Suma trusted her, so he shouldn't have any complaints. Because of this, Megumi is very nervous since her opponent is a chef graduate and a very good one. So Suma grabs her hands and claps with all his might, taking her nerves away from the impact. He also tells her that she shouldn't focus on Shinomiya. He reminds her that she's a good cook, and advises her to think about her own food, this touches Megumi, who remembers her childhood when she cooked with her mom. So Megumi decides what recipe they will cook, and she tells him about it. It seems perfect to Suma, and he says that he will show them why he was the second best chef in his restaurant. So they start cooking, and even though Megumi makes some mistakes, Suma is always attentive to solve them without neglecting his tasks. This impresses the judges, and one realizes what Suma is doing. Suma is always several steps ahead to be able to support Megumi in whatever she needs, without getting too far ahead of her. So they recognize that Suma is above of the other students of the academy. The time ends and the first to present his dish is Shinomiya. He presents Ichu Farshi. This surprises everyone since Shinomiya is famous for preparing extremely gourmet dishes, so a dish from the daily cuisine of France is unexpected. But when they try it, they realize that it is not an ordinary Ichu Farshi. Shinomiya changed the filling and the preparation of the vegetables has several layers and each one at the ideal temperature. Then, Jin realizes how Shinomiya could succeed alone in France, earning the respect of French gourmets with vegetables despite the fact that in France, the meat dominates so much. Shinomiya was named as the Magician of Legumes. This dish is so delicious that captures them and imbues them with all the magic that is felt in Shu Farshi, so they are delighted. Jin is surprised that he didn't make his specialty, but Shinomiya asks him if they see him as cruel enough to make his best dish against a student, even though the rest think he would be fully capable of it. Now it's Megumi's turn, she's so nervous that she can't walk, but Suma pats her on the back and encourages her to present her dish, which is a terrine. This dish makes the judges curious since it is the same dish that Shinomiya used in his exam, so he thinks that it is a way to challenge him by improving his own recipe. 
But Megumi says that it is not the case since she only made the dish in her own way. They start to eat and are delighted since it has a variety of pates with two sauces, generating up to 14 flavors. They also feel all the love that Megumi has in this dish if Shinomiya is a magician. She would be a goddess of kindness, but some disagree and start debating a nickname for her. Megumi is happy to see that her idols are praising one of her dishes, so she feels a bit confident. After that, they start voting with coins and Megumi closes her eyes to not see the result. But when they finish voting, she realizes that everyone chose Shunomiya's dish. Even though Megumi's dish was very tasty, Shunomiya's dish was undoubtedly better and by a lot, then Megumi begins to cry because her path is over. But above all, she feels guilty because she drags Suma with her. Then Shinomiya tries to leave, but Jin uses a coin to vote for Megumi. Shinomiya gets upset and asks what he thinks he's doing since he's not human judge, then Jin tells him that the answer he's looking for is in Megumi's saucer and says that Shinomiya is in a rut. It turns out that 10 years ago, Shinomiya went to France to train as soon as he graduated from the academy and opened his restaurant at an early age, gaining fame. But this made the chefs who worked with him jealous, reaching the point of changing his recipes with the excuse to improve the dish. Because of this, he began to lose popularity and it reached a point where his restaurant was hanging by a thread. So he decided to scrap everything that interfered with his cooking, and he forced everyone in the restaurant to follow his recipes to the letter. Thanks to this, he managed to get the prize he wanted so much, but now that he is at that high point, he doesn't know what to do. Shinomiya is upset, but Jin tells him to try Megumi's dish. So he tries it and realizes several mistakes in the preparation. But there is more than that, despite how clumsy Megumi was, it has a taste that reminds him of a mother's love, which it brings tears to his eyes, and he gives his vote to Megumi. Shinomiya says that even though she is clumsy, she has a particular characteristic in her kitchen. So he asks her why she used the allspice and everyone thinks it was just to hide the smell of the chicken. But she also used it to make her dish light since after having eaten so much in practice, she wanted to prepare something that was easy to digest. Then, Shinomiya realizes how much love her dish has, so he admits that he has been ignoring the others for too long and Hanako also votes for Megumi. Although she cannot do it, resulting in a tie and Shinomiya finally agrees to not expel Megumi, since it seems that is what everyone wants and they are doing whatever it takes to save her. After that, Megumi breaks down in tears, realizing that they both survive. As the other chefs leave, Chef Itoshi is surprised that Jin noticed Shinomiya's stagnation, and he took advantage of that fact to save the two students. But Jin thinks that he gets too much credit, because the one who allowed all this was Suma, by challenging Shinomiya. Later, Megumi runs to tell their friends that she is fine and Suma lets her go ahead. And thinking that he is alone, he lets out his frustration for having lost with a punch against the wall. This is seen by Jin. He feels that Suma has the same desire that Shinomiya had when he graduated from the academy, which led him to be a great chef. The next day, Suma realizes that Megumi is doing better than before, but he is now more concerned with his own skills as he has to improve himself in order to be better and reach the level of chefs like Shinomiya. That night, after finishing all the activities for the day, the students are very tired, but Jim announces over the hotel loudspeakers that everyone should report to the banquet hall. After that, Jin tells the students that they must present a dish worthy of being added to the resort breakfast. So they have to plan an innovative egg-based dish that they will present the next day at 6 o'clock am. So everyone panics since they don't even have time to sleep and since they are tired, it costs them more than normal. But Takumi already has a clear idea of his next dish, so he takes the opportunity to brags in front of Suma, then his twin brother has to take him away, so he can stop showing off and get to work. On the other hand, Irina finishes her dish quite quickly and goes to sleep. But Suma is having a bit of trouble, since his dad told him that to modify a menu, you cannot serve just any dish. Since the menu has to be designed for the consumers eat what they are looking for, suddenly he comes up with an idea for his dish and gets excited cooking it. A girl named Alice and her intimidating lackey Ryu appear in front of Suma, and she recognizes what he is cooking. Since she saw the ingredients he is using, then she leaves a little disappointed in Suma, since she had high expectations because of all the talk about him. But the dish that he wants to present is a direct failure. The next day, Suma is surprised at how big the place where they are going to serve breakfast is and, coincidentally, his workplace is next to Arena. So she gets nervous, but she sees it as an opportunity to show him how wonderful her cooking is. But Suma takes it as if she wanted them to compare flavors. So Arena gets upset because he didn't understand her sarcasm. Then she is surprised to see that Suma is going to prepare souffle omelette since he is relying too much on the spongy texture from his dish. Suddenly, Jun announces that the judges will be the suppliers of the resort and the kitchen staff of the hotel. So they have to deliver 200 servings to pass the test. Then they all start to show their dishes to the public and Takumi is doing great, along with Megumi who manages to impress the most intimidating judges. But the one who ends up stealing the show is Arena, who presents an Eggs Benedict breakfast. At first glance, it does not seem like an innovative dish, but she modified it, resulting in a culinary masterpiece, worthy of being called the best American breakfast since she made the egg yolk liquid and added fish egg to add a saltiness that combines perfectly. 
to the point of making it clear who is royal between them, so she ends up impressing everyone who tries her dish. Later, Arena and Takumi want to know how Suma is doing, but they are in for a big surprise when they see him. Suma finishes preparing many of the souffle omelets, but he realizes that nobody eats them, and it is because they deflate after a while, so he realizes that he made a serious mistake, since unlike his restaurant where the dishes are served at the moment in a buffet, it is the client who decides when to take the dish, so the short durability of his dish is a disadvantage, so Irina thinks that she will finally get rid of him. While she watches as the people devour breakfasts, she delivers all 200 breakfasts in an instant. On the other hand, Alice's breakfast becomes popular from one moment to the next. Her dish, which seems simple at first glance, is actually a masterpiece that shows one surprise after another, so she reaches 200 dishes very quickly. Meanwhile, Takumi and Megyuma also achieve the goal. After a while, Sue remembers that his father always told him to stay calm, so he can analyze what he has to do first, so after doing the calculations, he comes up with an idea to achieve his goal. It will be very difficult because he only has 30 minutes left and he has to deliver almost 200 dishes. But the first step is the first customer, so Suma calls a little girl who couldn't reach Arena's dish, and he cooks her an omelette souffle in front of her eyes, to which she is attracted, and when she tastes it, she is amazed. After the little girl, some of the kitchen staff arrive, and the reaction is the same, so more and more people are arriving, and Suma begins to get customers in droves, he also begins to amaze consumers with the juggling that he has to do to be able to meet the number of dishes that he has to serve in a few minutes. And it turns out that this is an attraction in some restaurants, since the live cooking adds a little interest in the product when seeing how the process to prepare the dish is. And as time goes by, the speed increases, so it's quite a visual spectacle. And finally, he manages to get 200 dishes, with a couple of seconds left before the test ends. Stuma looks at Arena with a fulfilled face, then Arena tries to say that he shouldn't be happy because he almost got knocked out, but Alice interrupts her and congratulates him for having passed since she thought he wouldn't make it, although she does not believe that he can become the best that way because it is a very old-fashioned way of winning clients, so she recommends the cutting-edge technology that she uses. It turns out that she is Arena's cousin and her father runs a company focused on the study of food and the behavior of humans by taste, so she uses all this technology to enhance her food, although Arena also belittles her since Alice clings too much to that. So they end up fighting and Alice leaves but not before telling them that she will be the one who snatches the position of best cook at the academy. Gin tells everyone that they have four hours before the next activity, then the students realize that the camp continues, and the next day, they are reunited without any explanation in the main hall, so they think there will be another surprise task. But this time, Jin is happy to tell them that those who survived till now can be considered camp survivors. Now they have a moment to relax, they will have a buffet run by the instructors, then everyone begins to taste the exquisite dishes of the chefs they admired so much, and Suma does not stop thinking that this school is more interesting than he thought at first. While the students who weren't expelled eat happy, Jin and another chef talk about the diamonds in the rough of this generation. Soon those diamonds will face each other in the autumn selection. The next day, the students must return to the academy then, Suma and Megumi realize that Shinomiya is going to France again. So he explains that now he plans to make his restaurant the best in all of Paris and almost recruits them to when they graduate, but Hinako and the other chefs stop him since they all want them for their restaurants. Jin explains that this trip is for the chefs to recruit students to work with them in the future. Although Suma rejects their offers since he belongs to his family's restaurant, so he goes out with his friends from Polar Star and Jin looks at his silhouette and thinks he sees one of his old friends in Suma, for which he is surprised. Suma realizes that he forgot his bandana, so he runs to pick it up, but when he returns, he gets the bus wrong and ends up losing his. For his good luck, Arena had also forgotten something, so they both end up going together in a car to the academy. Then Suma tells her with a smile that he survived, but Arena says that he will not be chosen for the autumn selection, but he doesn't know what it is, so she explains that it's a gourmet festival where first-year students are allowed to show their skills, the authorities of the academy, and all the heavyweights of the food industry will be present. She also tells him that the selection has already started, the selectors were watching them at the resort. All this seems interesting to Suma, and he wants it to start soon, but Arena does not believe that he will be selected, also she refuses to accept Suma's philosophy. According to him, you learn from mistakes. But for her, the kitchen must be perfect like the one she tried when she was a child, so he asks her why she missed the bus, but she refuses to answer, it's a secret. Arena had forgotten a cookbook that has a much-loved photo on it. It's a photo of her as a child next to Suma's father. Meanwhile, the caretaker of the Pole Star is surprised that someone would arrive so soon, but it turns out that it is Suma's dad who greets her as if he has returned home. After a while, the Polar Star's residents arrive and are happy when Fumio tells them that they will have a welcome dinner. But the one who is cooking is Suma's father, Jochiro, who begins to instruct his son to help him, and Suma instinctively reacts as if they were in their restaurant. 
Suddenly, Suma realizes that his dad is in Polar Star, so he asks him what he is doing there, so Fumio explains that he is Sabajo Ichiro, the former second best cook at the academy. Suma is shocked for the first time since he came to the academy and seems to be in a trance. Everyone else is surprised that Suma is the son of a former Elite 10. Then, Satoshi recognizes Joichiro. He is famous for being a nomadic chef who travels around the world in the best restaurants. Although he disappeared long ago and his name is now a legend, he asks Suma why he never noticed. But Suma believed that it was normal for his father to have photographs in different parts of the world. After a toast, they start to eat. And everyone is amazed by Joichiro's food, since it is like a trip to the Middle East and the others also have similar experiences with the rest of the dishes. Each and every one of them is exquisite. Except for the weird experiments of his that he used to cook. Fumio is surprised that he is gentle now since in his school days he was known as the demon for being a beast in Shakujiki along with Jin. Thanks to them, Polar Star is a huge residence with fields, farms, and kitchens of different types, but Fumio does not miss the opportunity to tell him that he has forgotten them. But he defends himself by saying that sometimes he goes to see her, so it is inevitable to compare him to a stray cat unlike Jin who is always in contact with Fumio, similar to a loyal dog. That night, Suma asks Jochiro more about his days at school, so he keeps telling him stories until it is time to sleep and by chance, Suma has the same room that his father had, so he is thoughtful as he has just realized that he does not know his own father at all. The next morning, Jochiro wakes up his son. He wants Suma to show him how much he has improved or worsened in this time that they have been apart. The Shakajiki will have Fumio as a judge and Satoshi finds it interesting to witness this duel. But there cannot be even judges, so it seems that he will only be able to see. But at that moment, Megumi appears who is still half asleep so they sit her down in a chair without her knowing what she is doing. The theme of the duel will be a breakfast that will give you energy for the rest of the day. So they begin to prepare their dishes and Fumio at first thought that Joichiro would hold out against his son. But this has never been the case. On the other hand, Megumi finally wakes up and realizes what is happening and tells Suma that fighting against a former second best cook of the academy is crazy. But this is nothing new for him, because Suma already did it other times, although he has lost them all. Satoshi is shocked to hear that Suma lost nearly 500 times and this makes him realize why Suma isn't afraid to face on anyone in the Shakajikas. From the beginning, he has been trying to outdo someone who is too awesome. Suma finishes his dish and it is an apple risotto which is delicious for its sweetness and lightness. But even so, it does not lose texture thanks to Suma's ingenuity since he gave it the flavor of the apple with the juice and added the fruit at the end, which results in an exquisite dish. But when they add pepper, it improves since a contrast is created between the spaceness and the sweetness that they cannot explain and it ends up being almost perfect. Fumio cannot believe that someone can prepare something better than this, but Joichiro's aura is that of a person who can do it and easily. Joichiro presents a ramen for which everyone is speechless, since it looks very heavy for a breakfast that had to be light, then Fumio scolds Joichiro for not having overcome the old habit of cooking crazy experiments in Shakacheki. In the past, he sometimes lost because he would experiment with his dishes, but Megumi realizes that the scent is very light, so they take a taste and are surprised as they can't stop eating since it's surprisingly light. Then, Joichiro explains that he uses a vegetable to give the broth a creaminess, and he didn't use meat to replace the pork he used fermented soybeans which are famous for simulating meat. Then he used seaweed and mushrooms. It is a totally vegetarian dish. He tells them that once he had to feed a monk who was fed up with the vegetarian food that he had to eat for his religion, so now he uses that knowledge from that experience since creating flavor with meat or fish is easy, but he does it with vegetables. The three of them eat the dish and feel all the energy it provides them, to the point of feeling younger so they declare Joichiro the winner with a landslide victory. Satoshi tells Suma that his dish was delicious, but for him that came from doing physical activity, it felt lackluster. So Suma realizes that he focused too much on cooks something light and reduced the impact of his dish too much. But his dad did the opposite to maximize the satisfaction of the judges. Joichiro tells him not to get discouraged since the apple risotto was a good idea, but he still has to improve then he challenges Suma not to lose to anyone but him, and they immediately start taking notes about their shakageki to improve their mistakes, leaving clearly all the dedication they have with their duels. Megumi realizes that despite having lost so many times against his father, Suma does not lose his motivation but Suma doesn't see the strangeness in that, since surpassing his father was his goal from the beginning. So he tells Megumi that they must first reach the top 10 in the academy, Megumi thinks that this is something impossible for her, but he trusts in her talent. Later, Jochiro leaves again, and Fumio realizes that it is too much of a coincidence that he has come just when the autumn selections are going to start. So it seems to her that everything was planned to prepare Suma, but Joichiro denies it smiling. After that, Fumio tells Suma that his father left him a message to air out the restaurant once in a while. So Fumio advises him to go home for a bit on the next holiday. 
Classes end and Suma's former middle school classmates are passing by his restaurant and Mayumi stares at the restaurant to remember Suma. Suddenly, he appears and surprises everyone since he came to air out the place. At that moment, all the neighbors realize that Suma is at home, so he has no choice but to open the restaurant temporarily. After pleasing all his clients, he realizes that the neighborhood is very empty, so the chairman of the commercial district tells him that a Karad restaurant has been opened at the train station, which is attracting everyone and now no one goes through the commercial area of the neighborhood. So the situation looks very bad for them. Suma is not thinking of sitting idly by, so he tells them that they have to get their clients back and the only way to do it is by preparing a better Karag than theirs. But the chairman doesn't have much faith since they have everything against them, although Suma doesn't care about this and just wants to try. Then Mayumi's friend tells her that this is her chance to get closer to Suma, so she tells Suma that Mayumi could play the taster and to him it seems like a good idea, so they agree to meet the next day to taste the curry of the competition. That night, Suma thinks that he needs a meat expert, so the person that comes to his mind is Akumi. So he calls her, asks if she can help him, and she tries to play hard to get, but ends up agreeing to the meeting. The next day, Mayumi is nervous because she doesn't know how to get closer to Suma, and everything gets worse when she sees Akumi. Although Suma doesn't even notice her nervousness and only has in mind going to the train station to try the Kara, Suma is surprised at how big the station is, so he's not surprised that it is such a good point of sale. But when they arrive at the competition stand, they realize that the district chairman is in disguise to try the Karag and support in what he can. Although this disguise is so bad that the owner of the place named Kinu immediately discovers him and since Suma was next to him, she deduces that he also comes from the commercial district. Kinu has no problem letting them try her Karag, and she even tells them how to prepare it by keeping the secret ingredients so. Suma thinks that she is too confident about her Karag, and he is not wrong. Kinu says that no matter what he does, he won't be able to replicate her Karag. So Suma takes it as a challenge and tells her that it would be a shame if they managed to make a Karag better than hers, generating sparks for the tension between the two. Later, Mayumi is terrified, and the scare does not go away even after they left, but Suma and Akumi only think about starting to cook. Suma tries to copy her preparation method, but even though it is tasty, it lacks impact, so Akumi comes up with an idea and she thinks that they could use her five meat to achieve it. Suma thinks that it's a little expensive, but Akumi tells him that she would leave it almost at cost, so Suma sees the light there thinking that the price will be affordable, although when she tells him the figures, he rejects it immediately. They keep trying for a while and Suma asks for ideas, so Mayumi says that they could take advantage of the fact that they are in a commercial district, but since her idea is not very concrete, she refrains from talking more, although after a while, Suma realizes that they have a guaranteed flow of students, so he comes up with an idea thanks to Mayumi's advice. Their great idea is to take advantage of the weakness of the competition. In the train station, you cannot eat while you walk, since you would bother other people, and that is why they have the product designed to take it home and eat it there. But the best way to eat Karag is as soon as it comes out of the fryer, so they have to take advantage of the fact that in the commercial district, they don't have that limitation and they can present it the way they want. So the chairman gets motivated and goes to his store to create new ideas. Meanwhile, Kinu receives the bills from her advisor, who was the reason for her to be so successful. Even though the recipe is hers, the advisor was the one who gave her the guidelines to make her business a success in a new area. But she doesn't like being run by such a young person, so she plans to fire him. Returning to Suma, he puts his karag in a small carton to eat it with chopsticks. But due to the smallness of the packaging, it results in very small portion, so the packaging they will use remains unknown. Then, Aikumi recommends using chicken thighs instead of breasts since they have much more flavor. Then, they experiment until they get a pretty good marinade, but the packaging issue still needs to be resolved. Suddenly, the chairman appears, who had an idea to present the kara. He creates a rice ball of karag inside since rice goes well with kara, but this is too common, so they scrap his idea right away. But this gives Suma a great idea to overcome this situation, so he gives instructions to everyone, and they prepare a counterattack the next day by surprise, with the intentions of giving Kinu a definitive KO. The next day, Kinu looks forward to the afternoons because it is the time when people come and give her all their money. But this time, she sees some people passing by with their wrapped karag in their hand. But she doesn't worry as she firmly thinks that nobody would prefer another karag to hers. So she let the days go by and see more and more people go through the station with these new karags, also, her sales decrease by 20%, which makes Kinu go crazy. Then, her co-workers recommend that she should call the advisor, but Kinu does not want to continue depending on him. So she goes directly to see who is stealing her clients, and when she arrives at the commercial district, she realizes that it has revived in a matter of days, and she can't believe there is a huge coup waiting for the new karag. Suma is in the kitchen hand-in-hand -hand with the Kumi cooking the karags, and they take advantage of the smells to keep their clientele. But Suma realizes that Kinu is outside, 
so he goes to return the humiliation she gave them when they went to gossip at her place and makes it clear to her that the commercial district has what it takes not to die for lack of innovation as they all work together to give customers an unforgettable experience. Kinu is surprised at how good a tactician Suma is for reviving the commercial district, but refuses to accept that her karag is inferior so Suma, so Kinu tries it and can't help but be engulfed in the flavor of his karag. It is combined perfectly with rice to make a Sumer mark karag roll, which makes you feel your youth again. Stuma must go back to school, so he asks Mayumi to help the chairman to keep the business afloat since he needs a lot of help. But Mayumi doesn't seem capable, so Suma tells her that she is the most responsible person that he knows. So Mayumi accepts the job. When Suma returns to school, he is escorted by other students to Kinu's advisor. He offers Suma to work for him since he proved to be skilled. But Suma declines as he doesn't plan to work for anyone other than his own family restaurant. So the advisor introduces himself as the ninth best cook in the academy. He's part of the Elite Ten, isn't better known as the alchemist. Izen tells him that he knew that Suma would not accept the job because his mind is conditioned to work in small places without opening up to the world. Also, Suma cut his streak of more than 500 successful businesses, so he will crush him in the autumn selection, since Suma is one of the selected. At the Elite 10 meeting, Irina tries to get them to back down on Suma's selection, but Satoshi says that Irina shouldn't have an opinion on Suma, because when it comes to him, she always loses her temper, and her assessment becomes very personal. Izen also thinks that Suma has achieved enough feats to deserve to be in the selection, although he has his own bad intentions. So they decide that Suma is one of the selected ones. Days later, the list of 60 selected is revealed. They are divided into two groups, but only half will advance to the true autumn selection. Almost all the members of Polar Star are selected, also Takumi, so he challenges Suma, although he doesn't seem to care much. On the other hand, Arena's secretary, Hizako tells her that she will defeat Suma, but this only discourages Arena more, since she had told Suma that it was impossible for him to be selected, even so, she cheers herself up, because she is in a different league, since the Elite Ten do not participate in this tournament, to make room for other new talents. Elsewhere, Alice tells Suma and the Polar Stars member to do their best, since all the Elite Ten of each year have managed to stand out in the autumn selections of their year, so this pattern is probably repeated, and the new members of the Elite Ten will arise from the selection. Days later, Polar Star receives an envelope with information about the selection. This year, the theme will be curry, so Suma remembers that his father told him about an old friend, Shiomi. She specializes in curry and could be of help to him. She is an instructor at the academy now, so Suma and Megumi go to look for this old friend, but they get a big surprise to see that her workplace is a mess. Then, Suma tells her that he is the son of Sabajo Ichiro, and Shiomi's reaction was not as expected as she punches Suma, knocking him out. It turns out that in the past, when Shiomi came to the Polar Star residence, Suma's dad used her as a guinea pig to test all of his experiments and because of this, she is traumatized for life. At that moment, Hayama, a first-year student and Shiomi's assistant, appears. He tells her that she shouldn't treat her guests badly, so Shiomi gets upset since she wants him to treat her with more respect. But Hayama refuses since without him, she couldn't do anything by herself, so he starts reciting all the tasks that he helps her. After that, Megumi is surprised to find a curry leaf there, since they are extremely rare due to Japan's cold climate, but this is thanks to Xiaomi's studies, so she starts giving them a class on spices and Hayama thinks it's easier that they understand it by seeing it in person, then they go to the kitchen and Hayama prepares them a first course of curry, with the curry leaf that surprised Megumi so much. The dish is delicious, but then comes the second one that is much better since it roasted the spices so that they get their full potential. So this slight change completely changed the flavor of the dish and finally, he stopped using broth and began to cook the spices in water since Xiaomi's theory says that the fewer flavors you work on, the more the ones you have used will stand out. So the last dish is the one with the best aroma and flavor even though all three have exactly the same ingredients. Suma realizes that Hayama did not see or taste the dishes in the kitchen at any time since he was cooking with his nose, and Hayama reveals that his main function in this laboratory is to put into practice all the theory that Shioman develops. And not only that, he is also a selectee and is in Suma's group, so he feels a little sorry for Suma for having curry as a theme, since it is a dish in which spices are essential and the food enters first through the nose, so mastering the fragrances is essential to reach the top, which means that he will be the one who will take the title of best cook in the school. Suma instead of being scared or losing hope, says that he will prepare a curry even better than his. So Hayama is surprised, but he still doesn't think he can lose since his sense of smell is very special, so he doesn't see a way for Suma to beat him in cooking curry. Megumi panics due to Hayama's great ability and she doesn't see herself capable of doing something similar, but Suma has already experienced similar situations since he was a child, so he's not nervous besides, spices are important, but they're not everything. 
Time passes, and the selected students spend their summer days studying the spices for the curry, and Megumi is overwhelmed by so much information. Even Akumi studies the spices in detail since she learned that meat is not everything. So the president from the rice bowl, Aras, is touched as he thinks she is doing it for them, which annoys her and shuts him up so she can focus. Summer break arrives, and almost everyone goes to visit their families, but Suma stays in the Polar Star dorm to continue experimenting. Meanwhile, in the basement, there is a student named Now who is obsessed with Arena and wants to get rid of her secretary, so she plans to defeat her in the selection. At that moment, Hizako feels a chill from the bad feeling, and Arena worries about her and becomes overprotective, since she is bored from not being able to participate in the selection. Although she is not the only one since Alice already decided her dish, so she is also bored. The days of summer break pass, and Suma spends whole nights thinking and combining spices, although he is not the only one, since Hayama also does the same to get his ultimate curry. He wants to show that his duel with Shinomi is invincible. The opening ceremony of the autumn selection begins and Suma meets his friends, but before Takumi challenges him as usual, the academy principal begins his speech and explains that the stage they are standing on is the Hall of the Moon Gods and it's special since normally only the members of the Elite Ten can have cooking battles there, so it's quite an honor. And not only that, the walls are covered by all the former students who came to be part of the Elite Ten of the academy to cook here. They will have to pass the preliminaries and only the best four of their respective groups will pass. With the rules announced, the two groups separate into two domes, and the students go to their kitchen stations to start preparing their curry dishes, and as judge, Natsuma arrives. Better known as the Queen of Curry in Japan, she will evaluate the group A, since Aiza managed to convince her to attend, but she does not have high expectations since they are only students. Meanwhile, her twin sister, Ori, is in group B and doesn't stop flirting with Satoshi, but as she starts to smell the aromas of the dishes being prepared, she pays attention to the different styles she is witnessing. In Group A, the one who stands out the strongest is clearly Hariyama, who will use fish head and naan, but is a special one since it is his secret weapon to demonstrate his superiority. The room is flooded by the aroma of its spices, which surprises the Queen of Curry, but is not the only one since in matters of aromas. Ibuzaki Shun is not far behind due to its smoke products that stand out on the nose, so the Queen asks Aizen who he thinks will win, but he only cares how Suma will do. To everyone's surprise, Suma had fallen asleep. But when the aroma of what he is cooking starts to come out, he immediately wakes up and Hayama is surprised as he can recognize some ingredients and the way he prepared them. But there are several spices that have been used in a special way, which gives it this smell so strong that not even he can decipher 100%. In Group B, some students look down on Megumi for her weak appearance, and they are not the only ones since even Hauju, who is obsessed with being a strong woman, sees her as a weak cook since she relied on Suma to deal with Shenomiya. Suddenly, Megumi brings a fish that leaves everyone surprised since the monkfish is too difficult to cut, and in this situation, it would be condemning herself to fail. So Megumi puts her hands together, thinking about all the moments she spent with Suma, and she knows that this is the time to show that she can hold her own too. It turns out that nine years ago, her grandfather stopped being able to do the show that her family had to dismember the hanging monkfish, so Megumi went with the fishermen to ask them to teach her, and they accepted thinking that she would give up quickly. But Megumi made an effort every day until she was able to cut the hanging monkfish properly. So now by controlling her nerves, she was able to do the same and left everyone surprised since no one had faith in her, except Fumio, who knows her true potential. The preparation time ends and the presenter says that the judges can give 20 points each and only the four best scores will advance to the next round. So they start judging the first student who looks quite confident because they praise his dish a lot. But at the time of judging him, they only gave him 33 points so he asks for an explanation. This annoys the judges since they are all chefs who have the best gourmet dishes available. So this dish that is good at the student level cannot satisfy them and due to this high barometer, a chain of low scores is generated. Noah's turn arrives and her dish has a putrid smell. So one of the judges is about to give it a zero without trying it. But Ori gathers the courage to give it a taste since this is her job and to everyone's surprise, the dish, it's delicious. It turns out that now use kusaya, which is a fish fermented by herself for a long time, and adding the correct ingredients generates a curry that makes you forget the smell and becomes tastier the more you try it. Living up to her nickname, which is the Boiling Witch, which refuses to follow the aesthetic standards of gourmet food, her cuisine traps you and makes you its prisoner, for which the judges score her with 84 points, being the best so far. Then it's Arena's secretary turn, Hizako, to which now rejoices at her because she can finally get rid of her and be at Arena's side. But Hizako tells her that they already arranged that she can't get close to Arena through a chef Kojeki two years ago, but now trusts that after seeing her defeat, Arena will change her mind. Hizako's dish seems weak to the eye, so now laughs as her food leaves a curse on those who try it since they cannot forget about it. But when they try Hizako's dish, they feel as if they are already revitalized. 
This dish is made from medicinal cuisine. It turns out that the spices used in medicinal cooking are similar to those used in curries, so they can be easily used in curries, and Hizako took advantage of this to make her own combination of spices to make this dish that fills you with life. Bet and Hizako says that she is in charge of taking care of Arena with her medicinal cuisine, so the judges feel that Nao's dish was insignificant next to her and score Hizako's curry with 92 points. Nao does not understand how she did to free the judges after eating her dish, so Hizako gives her a portion and even Nao is purified by trying, so now Hizako is the new Nao's obsession. The next one is Huju, and she leaves the judges shocked since her dish is like a direct hit by taking advantage of the techniques of Chinese cuisine in the curry for which they recognize her as the worthy successor of the oldest restaurant in Chinatown and give her 87 points, jumping to second place. Then it's Yuki Turn, who surprises everyone by using wild duck. But she knew how to find a fresh flavor using the spices and orange juice, so she wins over the judges and one of them invites her to his gourmet club, for which she reaches a score of 86 as the little red hood for her smiling attitude. Then comes the turn of the Aldini brothers and I Sammy is the first to present his dish and it is a calzone which goes with pizza ingredient, but he modified it to be with curry. Also the liquid in his dish is completely from tomatoes and spices he managed to balance his acidity, which is why he achieved this exquisite dish that ranked him in second place with Haoju 87 points too. After that, Takumi presents his dish which are noodles, although the judges believe that the presentation is very simple compared to his brother, which gives them the impression that his dish is inferior. But when they try it, they change their minds since he combined different meats with a variant of soy that gives it more flavor and the surprise touch is the parmesan cheese inside the pasta, which generates a combination never seen before. Isemi remembers that this always happens since their childhood. His brother is the one who is praised and recognized as the better of the two, so this led him to feel frustration as a kid. But his brother never saw him as inferior, since he believes that both of them are one half and the best facet of them comes out when they work together. Although this time, Takumi comes out the winner again with 90 points. Alice's turn arrives and she shows an extremely strange dish that doesn't look like curry, but she tells the judges to try it first before saying that it is not curry. And when they try it, their reaction is unexpected since they ran out of word because they do not know what they are eating. So, Alice has to explain the process she used and it turns out that she used her state-of-the-art machines to create a dish that plays with the temperatures of the dishes and thus achieve this masterpiece. But the judges are annoyed that they don't have words to describe the wonder that their mouths taste, so they give her 95 points. Now, Alice is in the first place, followed by Hizako, then Takumi, while Huju and Aizami are tied for fourth place. So the judges will have to make a decision to see who passes the preliminary, but Megumi still hasn't been called to present her dish, so the crew riddles her for ruining this movie's ending, although the fishermen from her hometown came to support her and do not hesitate to chant her name. Thanks to that, Megumi plucks up her courage and shows her curry dish with monkfish, which transports the judges to an ordinary home. But monkfish was not the only thing she used. They see many vegetables from her homeland, and after several attempts, she was able to create a bridge between the broth and the flavor of the vegetables with monkfish. So this dish is capable of transporting them to Megumi's homeland. Then Megumi remembers when her mother saw her talent and offered her to go to cooking school. Her mother wanted her to see how big the world is. Time later, the whole town went to say goodbye to the train station trusting her. But her grades were not as good as expected, so she had to work hard every day to survive. But now, everything is paid off and she has scored 88 points, beating Haju and Aizami. Megumi has passed the preliminaries. After that, Huju reflects that silencing men by force is not the only way, which makes her somewhat envious, since she would like to create the atmosphere that she feels around Megumi in her restaurant. Meanwhile, in Group A, the scores are being disastrous since Natsume is very strict and has graded many students with zero points until Ryu arrives who prepared red lobster curry, but Natsume does not think it is a very innovative dish since it is quite common, although she stopped thinking that as soon as she tried it since it has a very strong forest essence. It turns out that Ryu used cognac and that's why it has the aroma of wood that gives it so much pleasure, so the judges are impressed with his French curry, but that's not all. Suddenly, Ryu puts on his bandana and his personality changes completely. Then he says to add cognac to the head of a lobster and after slurp the juice, eat the rice, but Natsume refuses as it is a very vulgar way to do it. But Ryu sees through her and tells her that it shows on her face that she wants to drink it. Then he practically forces her to follow her wishes and they feel the great impact that the lobster has that harmonizes with the aroma. They give him 93 points. Then Ryu doesn't see this as a feat since he's been in cooking battles since he was a kid, but it's still a surprise to everyone because they thought Hayama would be the favorite. Although now, it's not so clear. It's a Kumi turn, she made pork curry, the meat is so cooked that it wobbles with just touching the plate and despite that, it can maintain its shape. Matsu begins to tremble since she has not yet recovered from the lobster, but Akumi convinces her to succumb to the temptation of meat. So Matsu once again feels the power of the pork, which Akumi has balanced it with the spices, so the smell of the skin does not invade the dish. 
Although that is not all since the rice has spices that avoid being cloyed with the meat, making an infinite cycle in which they cannot stop eating. Now the Kumi will be recognized as the meat general. Suma congratulates her on getting 86 points, but she says that she only did what he taught her, since the Udon should be complete in one bowl. The next one is Ryuko, who presents a curry that at first glance is quite common since it is Japanese style, but upon seeing it well, the judges realize that it is thicker than normal, so they try it and are surprised by the deliciousness of the curry natto. But that's not all since she added his own fermentation and with that multiplied the flavor of her dish, which made it an irresistible dish, giving her 86 points and tying with a kumi. Then, it is Maru's turn, from whom no one expects anything since the way he cooks look very simple. But his dish has a lot of personality since it is pure white, from which the judges cannot stop eating, since he take advantage of his vast knowledge about gastronomy to be able to use multiple culinary techniques from ancient and recent times, achieving this dish that led him to surpass Ryuko and Akumi, positioning himself with 88 points. After that, it is Ibusaki's turn, who has a dish with the best aroma of all of them, thanks to the fact that all its ingredients have been smoked. But Natsume says that a curry dish of smoking is not everything, but when eating she realizes that even though the ingredients are very different, they combine perfectly with each other. So Ibusaki explains that he used a specific smoked sea salt for combining all the flavors by adding the spices, managing to increase the flavor instead of hindering it. The judges give him 88 points. There are many ties in the results, so Izan tells the public that if the ties continue, there will be a second vote, but it's still too early to decide because there are still participants like Suma and Hayama. The first of the two is Hayama's curry which used a fragrance bomb since his curry was covered with dough, but when it is uncovers, suddenly released all its fragrance. But the most impressive thing came later, Natsu realizes that Hayama used fresh holy basil which is practically impossible to get in good condition in Japan, but this is the work of Shiomi, the famous spice genius. Stuma also eats Hayama's curry and realizes that for his dish, not to be overshadowed by the holy basil, he uses yogurt since this spice is a double-edged sword if not used carefully. So Matsu becomes obsessed with Hayama, since it is very rare to find someone who can use it, so she asks him to be hers. But Hayama fights only for Shiomi, although this only increases Natsu's desire to have him. The judges give Hayama's curry 94 points and two judges, given their maximum scores, 20 points, which no one had achieved, so Hayama is the undisputed best so far. After that, Suma's turn comes and he also gives Hayama his dish, so he is surprised that he can keep his composure after trying his curry since this means that he can win. But he does not believe it since until a month ago Suma did not even know the existence of spices for curry. Stuma had the same idea as Hayama when creating a fragrance bomb. His omelette hit a risotto which released an aroma that made you want to try it at all costs, then the judges take a bite and realize that it is like a series of hits that harmonize with the sauce, generating two layers of flavor. But Hayama is intrigued since his nose can only scratch the surface of the Suma dish, so he tries it and realizes that to give it the depth it has, Suma used mango chutney. The judges see this as a battle between a spear with a direct hit from the holy basil and Suma using a series of blows taking advantage of the harmony of his symbol, but Suma only scores 93 points for second place tied with Ryu, although three of the judges valued Suma more, so if it had been a shuck of Jiki, the winner would have been Suma. Because of this, the judges start arguing as they can't believe the other three pick Suma over Hayama's dish, while the other two that are Hayama supporters praise his use of holy basil which is very difficult, but the best of the two will have to be decided in the official tournament. After the competition, the members of Polar Star Dorm and their new friends start to celebrate, but not everything is happiness since many classmates feel frustrated for not having achieved it despite having given everything like Yuki or Ibusaki. Meanwhile, they are not the only ones celebrating, Shiomi also had too many drinks out of joy because Hayama has made it to the main tournament, then he promises to win the official tournament, he wants to repay Shiomi for saving him as a child. On the other hand, Alice asks Serena to celebrate, but she is busy, so Arena only congratulates them for having reached the main tournament and also congratulates Hisako. Although Arena knew that her secretary would pass the preliminaries, she knows that Hisako worked hard. The only thing that won't let her rest is that the Suma dish made her want to eat it, but this would be accepting Suma cuisine into her gourmet paradise, so she continues to maintain her position that Suma cuisine is disgusting. After the celebration, Suma is on the rooftop balcony, he is bummed out by the result, so Megumi goes to see him and Suma confesses his frustration. He wanted to get a 20 on all the judges. Then he changes the subject to praise Megumi for using ingredients from her homeland for the curry. But Megumi believes that it's all thanks to Suma, since she's known him she was able to get out of the bottom she had entered to be on the verge of expulsion. But Suma tells her that it is not true since she cooks very well and he likes her food, so Megumi gets nervous and the atmosphere becomes romantic, at least for Megumi. Suddenly, Satoshi brings everyone so the party can start again. We go back to a short story that happened after the camp, since they had a few days off and most of them went for a walk. The Aldini brothers go to the port tower, 
But Takumi is still traumatized by the shame he suffered because of Suma, so his brother plays a prank on him by trying to break the glass of the floor, although it only manages to anger him. Then they go to even Omiris at a cosplay cafe since Asami is very interested in Japanese culture and Takumi has some of that interest too, so he agrees to go with the flow at the restaurant. Although at the moment of casting the spell on his Omiris, Asami laughs out loud as it's too cringe even for him. Curiously, this Omiris was tasty than he expected. This was thanks to the fact that the hostess from the academy was the waitress who served them. Meanwhile, Megumi and the other girls from the Polar Star had gone for a walk and suddenly, they met the twins, so they are going to eat together. It turns out that Megumi has never tried manjayaki, but upon hearing her choice of flavors, an old man from the restaurant gets upset because he believes that putting cheese on the manjayaki is a sin. Then Takumi defends her and says that no one should tell her what to eat. Then the old man says that he cannot discuss Japanese food with foreigners. This annoys Takumi even more. Since he is a cook and despite being a foreigner, he respects Japanese food a lot and cannot allow the old man to tell him that he does not know something about the flavors. So the old man challenges him to a duel to see who prepares the most delicious manjayaki and Takumi accepts. The judges will be the owners and regulars of the restaurant and they will use the ingredients they have there to make their dishes. So the old man starts to prepare his manjayaki in the most classic style possible. Meanwhile, Takumi thinks what he can do but what comes to his mind is Suma saying to use everything at hand. So Takumi gets annoyed because that's what he thought first and he didn't want Suma to get involved. Although the others saw him as crazy for fighting with himself. The old man finishes his manjayaki, and it is a very nostalgic dish because it's very traditional. It takes you back to your youth and happy moments, demonstrating all the experience he has acquired over the years. Then Takumi also starts cooking and everyone tells him that he's cooking it wrong since the proportions of the ingredients and the techniques are very different, but Takumi will do it in his own way, combining Japan and Italy cuisine and achieving an exquisite dish by taking advantage of the clams that he was about to send to his parents. The judges wonder why they send clams from Japan, so Takumi acknowledges that Japan does some things better than Italy since their style is to take foreign dishes and improve them, although they don't only do that with foreigners as they also tend to change their own dishes, and that is what represents Japanese cuisine. The old man refuses to accept Takumi's ideas, but when trying his manjayaki, he realizes that he has been being stubborn, then he regrets having had a closed mind since this cost him his relationship with his daughter, when she introduced him to her boyfriend and he did not accept him just because he was a foreigner, so now the old man is willing to accept him. The victors end up being the Aldini brothers. During summer break, Arena tries to help Hizako to achieve the best possible dish, but Hizako prefers to do it alone since she wants to prove her worth with her own strength. So Irina tells her that it's fine and leaves, but now she doesn't know what to do, so she's bored. Suddenly, Alice calls her to invite her to the pool. But Irina gets a big surprise when they arrive because it's the public pool and Irina thought they would go to a private one as usual. So Alice tells her that they have to go out to explore the world since they lack too much experience of normal people. So she almost forces Irina to enter. Meanwhile, at Polar Star Residence, the girls are kind of heat to the point that Megumi no longer seems to act coherently. So Yuki has a great idea and it is to build a small pool for all of them to enter. But it was so small that the water heated up instantly, and they were super tight then. Yuki gets desperate and starts throwing water at the others, which evaporates and generates the effect of a sauna. After that, Suma and Satoshi arrive. Suma tell them that he went out to exercise to get rid of the heat, but he doesn't know why he feels even hotter now, so he will go out with Satoshi because he has an idea of where to cool off. Back to the public swimming pool, Arena draws everyone's attention with her bikini, but she's embarrassed because she was never so with no clothes in front of so many people, although this does not bother Alice at all, so she attracts all the attention with her bikini. Meanwhile, Suma is looking for more people since the more, the better, so he asks Sakumi if she wants to join them, but she thinks that they will go alone, so she's very disappointed to find out that a large group will go out, so she prefers to stay in the club room improving her curry. At the pool, Alice warns Arena to be careful with the guys who try to flirt in the pool, but no one goes near them and Arena is a little disappointed since she thinks that they are all herbivores. Although in reality, it is for because of Ryo, who scare everyone who thinks of flirting with them. Then, Suma and the others arrive at a lake and Takumi challenges Suma again as his eternal rival, but he is not interested in being competitive now and just wants to have fun. Satoshi arrives with ice to prepare ice cream, so they create the challenge to become the king of ice cream. So Takumi eats as if there was no tomorrow to beat Suma, but everyone realizes that no matter how much they eat, it will not freeze their heads since the ice is so finely shaved that the cold melts fast enough to prevent it from freezing your brain, even though Suma still doesn't want to compete against Takumi. After a while, Akumi arrives since her R's president insisted a lot, then Suma gives her figure ice cream and Akumi is amazed. Later, when it's time to leave, Arena is surprised to see so many couples, but she says that she's not interested and leaves with Alice who makes fun of how she looked in a towel. At night, Suma and his friends enjoy the fireworks after a great day of fun while Arena watches the fireworks from her bedroom window. 
Irina has been blessed with the god's tongue since she was a child, but she still doesn't know the flavor of love. After passing the preliminaries, all the finalists are summoned to receive instructions for their next match, so Megumi and Suma go together, and when they arrive, Irina tells Suma that his kubaf will be the first and the theme will be the bento. Suma is surprised since it is something quite simple, for an academy that has so many prejudices. But Irina is annoyed since bento is something that has been internationally recognized, so she can't believe the extent of his ignorance. The day of the battle arrives and Suma has to face Alice, the winner of Group B, she apologizes to Suma since she wanted to see him cook more, then Suma tells her that if he wins she can do it from the public. But Alice doesn't think this will happen since her molecular cooking is much more modern than his archaic methods. Then they start cooking and everyone is surprised at what Alice does, because it's something completely new even for genius people like Maru. The first to finish is Alice and she prepares a tamari sushi that is adapted to be a bento which improves as you eat as it leaves some traces of flavor that later combine and lead to an ending that leaves even the academy's principal shocked, taking it to the point that his chest is exposed, something that only happens when a dish is extremely good. Everyone is surprised by Alice's dish, but the only one who has not flinched is Suma, so the principal asks him what he has cooked and Suma replies, that is a nori bento, which is a dish so average that everyone thinks he's lost already. Then, Suma presents his bento in a lunch jar and Alice is surprised how far bento technology has come although in everyone's eyes she's happy because she thinks that she already won. The judges begin to taste the fried fish and are amazed at how soft and delicious it is. In addition, the accompaniments are made with a delicacy worthy of praise and the soup is not far behind since he used a dried tuna broth, which it has a very refined flavor and by taking advantage of the heat from the container, he was able to cook the soup in the same compartment of the lunch jar which is one of the advantages of the bento since it is prepared to be eaten several hours later. Finally, they eat the rice and are surprised by the presentation of the nori since it is not as sheet as they are used to, but little beads that explode when eaten and release the nori juice. This is a molecular cooking technique, so Alice is surprised that he has such knowledge, but Suma learned it thanks to some candies that he liked as a child, which he copied and allows him to make concentrated balls of almost any ingredient. Alice thinks that this won't be enough to win her over, so Suma reveals a secret weapon that is hidden in the first container and tells them to sprinkle it on the rice. The judges know it themselves that it will be delicious, so they eat non-stop as this dish takes them back to their childhood, where they enjoyed the bento as if it was the best food in the world. Alice thinks that even if his dish has a heart, the most important thing is the flavor, but the director interrupts her and says that Suma's dish took advantage of everything related to the bento. Instead, she made something that she could perfectly prepare if the theme was sushi and Alice froze. Since she didn't realize when the director's chest was exposed, then Sumi gives her a taste of his dish because he also agrees that the flavor is important. When Alice tries it, she understands what they were trying to tell her since it brings her a lot of nostalgia for when she was a child and she felt so alone for being overshadowed by Irina. The bento is like a warm comfort to the sadness of her inner child. In the end, the director of the academy, even with a bare chest, signs Sumi's victory. Alice begins to cry in the middle of the stage for having lost, so Suma helps her to stand up, although he does not miss the opportunity to tell her that he is closer to being one of the Elite Ten. After that, at the backstage, Alice meets Ryu he makes fun of her cooking a bit, so Alice tries to put him in his place, but Ryu tells her to save those words for when she has won him in a cooking battle. A day before the match, Megumi and Ryu were told that the theme of their duel will be ramen, but the academy will provide the noodles, so Ryu unhesitatingly chooses the noodles he wants and leaves, but Satoshi tells Megumi that she has until midnight to choose. At Polar Star Dorm, Megumi gets to practice since Raymond is quite complicated, but all she can do is experiment with the thick broths since Ryu plans to make a powerful ramen out of the noodles he chose, but nothing goes right for her as she fails to bring the flavors together. At that moment, Fumio appears and gives her a package that Megumi's family sent, and Megumi finds something that she can use, she will use these ingredients for her ramen. Back to the arena, as Megumi suspected, Ryu prepares a rich broth and on the other hand Megumi will make a light broth, but this worries some of her friends since they don't know if she will be able to cope with a broth as strong as Ryo's, so Yuki tells them, not to worry since Megumi comes from a port town and knows perfectly how to deal with seafood. Suddenly, Alice appears behind them and tells them that Ryu also comes from a port town 10 years ago when she was in Scandinavia. She heard about a restaurant in the port and went to eat there but was surprised to see that the head chef was Ryu at a very young age. Then Yuki says that Megumi also cooks from a very young age, so she begins to chant her name to support her by waving a large polar star flag. This makes Ryu angry, and he tells Megumi that it makes him sick. However, doormates encourage her, since he believes that the kitchen is a war field where you have to make your enemies kneel, but this goes against what Megumi thinks since she likes to share moments with her friends and she plans to show him how wrong he is, so she tells him not to speak ill of them even though she does feel intimidated by him. The judges come to admire the beauty of Megumi's broth since one of the attractions of Raymond 
is that is prepared in front of the customer. So the process is highly appreciated and they do not stop praising how beautiful it is. But Ryu cuts this moment by straining the noodles in a very flashy way and hands them their dishes for them to try. Alice remembers that Ryu has always been like this. Since he was a child, he has dominated others with his cooking. And this has not changed since the power of his Raymond is such that it could be interpreted as a bare knuckle fight in which he surprises even the director who is bare chested. Megyuri is not affected by these comments and finishes her Raymond. Although the judges no longer have so many expectations of a light broth after Ryo's Raymond, but they get big surprise since the broth, despite being light, has much impact, and this comes from the secret ingredient called Kozuyu. Although this is not all since that alone would not generate as much flavor, so Megumi explains that she used the flavor of the vegetables since when simmering it, it releases all its flavor in the broth and the director realizes that this is typical of a regional Japanese dish that Megumi has adapted to turn it into ramen. But this is not all since Megumi made a sauce that completely changes the flavor and enhances the flavor even more of her ramen. Then Ryu asks her to give him a taste of her ramen, so she does and explains that she knew that she could not compete against Ryu's seafood. So Ryu recognizes her for having predicted that he would make a rich Raymond and having acted to try and counter it. But he gives her his Raymond and Megumi is overwhelmed by its strong impact, but still maintains her composure and this results in a bare knuckle fight between the two. The director grabs the brush to decide the winner and it is Ryo. So everyone realizes that Megumi's saucer didn't reveal the director's chest, which means it didn't have enough impact. Everyone goes to support her and now she is no longer the one they thought was there by chance and everyone applauds her and congratulates her for having done so well. After that, the director realizes something that he had not noticed before. He had inadvertently removed his underwear, which shows how many geniuses this generation has. The next day, Suma falls asleep for having worked so hard for his duel, then he is intercepted by the eighth competitor of the final tournament named Subaru, who gives a very bad impression to Suma, but to his surprise, he is quite meticulous despite his appearance. Back to the tournament, the theme that was chosen is the hamburger and Hayama faces off against Hizako, so Hayama begins to get fired up with trash talking. But this does not work with Hizako, since she will be the only one who can be Arena's successor. They start cooking and Hayama opts for a kebab, but Hizako does something more peculiar. She brought a turtle and works it right there, so everyone is surprised at how cold she is to not hesitate one bit. Then Megumi goes looking for Suma, so he can hurry up and he tells her that he took too long because he meets Subaru. But what he didn't know is that Subaru is a first-rate stalker who already knew more about Suma than himself and also from Takumi, since he had other hidden intentions until he invites them to watch the Hayama vs. Hizako match in his waiting room and also calls Takumi. Hizako is the first to end up with a very hearty burger and a soft bun that altogether makes you feel on fire since it has the turtle's blood and shell powder in the burger, so everyone is surprised. But the director says that no matter how much they see it, they cannot judge it since it is necessary to try to understand the true flavor of this hamburger. It turns out that it is very viscous and is intended to stimulate the touch, so this burger is rich in another way besides the taste, leaving an impression that makes you feel giant against a monster of deliciousness. But suddenly, the attention changes when Hayama is plating his hamburger, since it has a very powerful aroma, which has the judges like hungry dogs waiting for food. Hisako thinks that Hayama is being crazy for stuffing meat so hard into a burger, but the judges can't help but gobble it up in an instant. It turns out that inside the pita bread, the hamburger has a preparation based on yogurt and other spices that result in a hamburger with a strong aroma, but pleasant to be able to eat it without getting tired. In addition, he considers that the hamburger has four levels, the bread, the sauce, the meat, and the accompaniments. But Hizako used only ginger, so she completely ignored this level. Instead, he put an accompaniment made by him that resulted in a flavor enhancer for the meat, ending in a hamburger that unleashes the desire to eat human the judges. Everything is very clear and the judges praise Hayama's sense of smell since it could reach the level of the tongue god with that precision that it has. The winner is Hayama. Hizako knew that it was going to lose when it smelled Hayama's hamburger, so she's embarrassed to face Arena. Suma leaves and is surprised that Subaru predicted the outcome with such certainty, but Izan tells him that he has an exceptional talent. Before the next cooking battle, Subaru grabs Tamuki's Mezzaluna to try to provoke Takumi, and seeing that he didn't he gives in, begins to insult his brother for which he manages to anger him and takes advantage of this to challenge him. They inform the judges that this becomes a shock of Cheki since they meet all the requirements and the director agrees. They, they both enter the stage and Takumi challenges him to a duel which is a tradition in their country when they stay in the honor of a family. The theme of the shakujiki will be desserts. Meanwhile, Megumi is surprised that they have reached this point, but Ebusaki knows Subaru and says that he always stalks his victims and then provokes them into accepting a shakujiki against him has earned 99 shakujiki. Then Subaru uses the same ingredients as Takumi and when the judges review in the records of Subaru's shakujiki, they discover that he always wins by cooking the same as his rivals. So he starts to provoke Takumi, telling him everything he will do 
that Ebisaki adds that Subaru always steals the most precious utensils to his opponent, but the girls aren't worried since the desserts require a lot of delicacy, and that's why they get a big surprise to see that Subaru is being as delicate as a girl doing embroidery. After that, Subaru makes the recipe different since he plans to make improvements to Takumi's recipe and takes the opportunity to show him the secret weapon that Takumi was keeping, Limoncello from Italy. So Takumi breaks his poker face, he realizes that Subaru knows everything that he's going to cook and plans to defeat him with his own techniques, taking advantage of the fact that Takumi is very proud about his techniques and recipes. Takumi is cornered, but he remembers that he's been through a lot in his family's trattoria, so he realizes that the only way to win is to outdo himself right now. Subaru presents his dish, and one of the judges refuses to acknowledge him because he thinks that Subaru is despicable, but Subaru tells him that he does not understand why since he always puts all his effort into investigating his victims to prepare the most delicious dish possible, then the judge has no choice but to taste it and admit that the dish is delicious. Takumi also finishes and presents his semifreddo, but it is different from the one he always practiced as it has a fourth layer. When the judge is trying it, they feel a freshness that has never been seen before in this dessert, and it's all thanks to a lemon sauce that Takumi created at the last moment using of the olive oil that he always carries with him as an amulet from his father. But the judges notice something. Subaru also added a secret ingredient that enhances the freshness and sweetness of his semifreddo. It turns out that Subaru also anticipated that Takumi would surpass himself, so the judges have no choice but to accept that Subaru dessert is slightly better, so he wins. The final four are Subaru, Hayama, Suma, and Ryu, and Aizen informs the public that they will face each other in a week. Everyone feels bad for Takumi, although they don't know how to cheer him up and Suma doesn't want to tell him anything. But upon arriving at the residence, they meet Subaru, who wants to talk to Suma. He came to inform him that both of them are rivals in the next match, so he wants to challenge him to a shakujeki if he wants to recover Takumi's honor. Subaru knows that Suma hates unnecessary humiliation and appreciates his friends, so he knows that Suma must be upset about what happened to Takumi and Suma doesn't deny it. But he feels sorrier for Subaru since despite his undeniable talent, he only limits himself to stealing the effort of others, so he accepts his challenge. If Suma wins, Subaru must give him the 100 weapons he has won in all his duels, and in exchange, if Suma loses, he will quit being a chef. Suma decides to save him the work and even tells him what he will cook, so everyone goes in to shut him up since he is giving too much information, but Suma knows that Subaru is going to get it anyway, so it doesn't matter since it's not enough for him to just recover Takumi's Mezzaluna, and for that reason he will bet everything he has on this Shakageki. On the other hand, Hizako takes a break to get over the humiliation she received from her match, while Arena thinks that Hizako never asked what she thought of the result. The next day at Polar Star, a journalism club student named Mitsuru goes to see Suma. He wants to take note of everything he does until his shakageki, so he will become a famous journalist with this big story, but Suma refuses. Mitsuru doesn't stop asking him all day long, and when it's time to practice his dish, Suma agrees to let him help him, but as a taster since he has to improve his dish. First he prepares the beef stew that he knows how to make and Mitsuru thinks it's delicious, but he doesn't understand why he showed this dish to Subaru. Then Suma explains that in this way he balanced the game, and now it's just a war of imagination to see who manages to make this dish more exquisite. After several attempts, Suma can't find a way to achieve a better beef stew, and Mitsuru is already very full of so much stew, so Suma realizes that he needs a more accurate opinion. Back to Arena, she is learning about love by reading a shujo, but she finishes the manga too fast and can't get the sequel because Hisako is not there. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and she runs to open the door thinking that Hisako is back, but to her bad luck, it's Suma, so she gets angry when she finds out that Alice let him in, but Suma gets to the point and asks her to try his stew. Arena refuses since, even though she hates him, her trying a dish has a price that Suma cannot afford, so he tries to leave, but he sees that she was reading a manga that someone at Polar Star has, unlike Arena. That person has the complete set, this catches Arena's attention, and she agrees to make a deal with him. Although she will only tell him how she knows and will not give any advice, since as one of the Elite Ten, she cannot help him. When trying his beef stew, it seems terrible to her since he is not properly focusing on the theme of the match, and after that, she runs them out of her house. Mitsuru feels cheated since Arena didn't tell them anything specific, but Suma is uneasy with her appreciation since she gave him an undercover hint. Meanwhile, Subaru psyches himself up by imitating Suma as he is the real Suma. The next day, Akumi gives meat to Suma that the Aris of the Rice Bowl sends him as support, although Suma sees that they are unusual cuts. But thanks to this and Arena's words, he realizes what he was failing, so he takes out Mitsuru from the kitchen and starts practicing for the rest of the days. The day of the semifinals arrives, and Suma almost didn't arrive on time for sending a message to Takumi. He leaves telling him to watch his match. After that, Suma and Suru enter the arena. This time, the judges will be chefs that graduates from the academy. 
but one of the judges sees that both Subaru and Suma give a bad impression to prepare stews since Suma sees himself as a dining room's chef. And this is very different from the gourmet stews since their stews are usually weak so as not to tire the customer, but Suma had already realized this, so he chooses a very gelatinous part of the beef oxtail to enhance it with his secret ingredient and so instead of taking away its impact, it will result in the opposite, so Arena realizes that what he will prepare will be much better than what she tasted. Suma is counting on it since he wants Arena to change her mind about his stew. Subaru stops imitating Suma for a while and takes out some bacon that he will use as a garnish. But it's not just any bacon as Ibusaki recognizes it as bacon smoked with a very rare wood in Japan, which gives the bacon a unique aroma. According to the opinion of the judges, Suma will be left behind because of this magnificent garrison. But Hinako does not lose faith. Suma is in trouble and Subaru thanks Mitsuru. Thanks to his notes, Subaru had a much easier time investigating what Suma was doing. But Suma doesn't lose his cool, suddenly he pulls out different types of meat cuts, which surprises the judges. Megumi realizes that Suma will do improvised cooking and Sumeru also realizes what he's up to and to Suma's surprise. Sumeru tells him that he knows that he went to see Takumi in the morning and then he went to get the meat that he is cooking now. After that, Subaru presents his dish to the judges and they are inundated with a great flavor of the beef stew. Sumeru explains that the bacon has been cooked for five days which creates a flavor that could not be achieved by improvising and instead overshadowing the flavor of the meat ends up enhancing it, generating a double attack between the meat and the pork. Subaru thinks that he has already won because no matter what Suma improvises, he won't be able to top this, but Suma smiles, since he was also confident that Subaru would prepare something exquisite. Then Subaru is afraid to see Suma confidently handing over his dish despite having seen what he did. Suma prepared the stew with meat as a garnish and even though it may seem like a mixture of meats at first glance, the judges are shocked to see how exquisite it is since everything harmonizes perfectly. The two dish looks like a castle against a house of cards, comparing it to Subaru's stew. Suma had also thought of bacon while thinking about how Subaru was going to attack him, but he decided not to take that path since that is not his style. His dish contains all the experiences he has lived since he started cooking since he was a child. The five judges unanimously vote for Suma. He is the winner of the Shakageki. Subaru doesn't think his stew could lose to something improvised, so Suma feeds him his dish and reminds him of his childhood, when his father scolded him for copying recipes instead of making his own, which led him to overcome his father's masterpiece, and because of this, his father ran away from him, and Subaru began to take away the pride of all the cooks he faced, since it was very easy for him. After that, Suma returns all the kitchen tools that Subaru had taken. Then Subaru decides to retire from the academy since all his pride is taken from him, but Suma tells him to not talk nonsense since his chef must recover from defeat because a professional cannot stop just because he loses, and the clear example is Takumi, he doesn't agree to receive his mezzaluna for free, he will leave it to Suma until he can win a duel against him. At the end of it all, Suma tells Arena that he is one more step close until he can challenge her to see who is the top first year, but she doesn't even see him as a rival. The next semifinal is for Hayama and Ryu. They both prepare for their battle and Suma wants to see them in the front row. So he goes to the VIP room with Arena. Hayama chooses duck, taking advantage of his great mastery of spices to work its strong flavor and everyone sees him as a favorite since, thanks to his sense of smell, he is considered the main candidate to be one of the next Elite 10. Suma asks Serena what she think about the match, and she had a very different image of Ryu since he always prepared his dishes just enough to not to disapprove. Alice appears and tells them that Ryo's talent cannot be judged that way since Ryo has grown up in a very different environment from the other chefs, so he has developed a hunger to win that is the greatest of all. Ryo gets annoyed with Hayama since his look does not show the interest that he deserves in this battle, but Hayama says that it is not necessary since his nose tells him that it is impossible to lose. Hayama's dish has an aroma that even people who are experts in ducks like Yuki don't know what he is doing. Meanwhile, Ryo prepares his eel with a multi-card approach to counter Hayama's strong flavor, but when presenting his dish, Hayama envelops the judges in the aroma of his dish, knocking over any cards Ryu might be preparing, but Ryu still doesn't lose the winning look on his face as he has one last ace up his sleeve. Ryu delivers his dish, and the judges belittle it for not having as much aroma as Hayama's, so Ryu forces them to eat quickly before it gets cold, and the judges are very surprised to feel plums inside the eel, since it is an acid bong which increases the flavor of the eel. Ryu tells them to try everything together because if they combine it with the puree and the bread, it will be able to feel the true flavor of his dish. The judges eat it and feel an exquisite flavor bomb on their palates for the first time. Hayama feels that he may lose. The judges start to think about their vote and stay longer than they usually do to decide. The first two vote for Hayama because of the great aroma of his dish and the next two vote for Ryu since the impact that he generated was much greater. So everything remains in hands of the last judge, but she can't decide. Ryu gets upset with her, but Jin says that this can happen, and in a shock of Jackie, another battle would be scheduled to have a result, but since it is the autumn selection, it cannot be done that way. 
Ben Jim proposes that this round is a draw and the final will be three participants. The director listens to this idea and finds it interesting, so he approves it. After that, the journalism club start interviewing the finalists and Suma says that he appreciates this opportunity because it has the two people that he wanted to defeat the most, which is a clear declaration of war against these two. Then, Satoshi brings the ingredient that will be used as a theme in the finale. It is Pacific Sori. This is a fish that was eaten by the villagers, but in recent times it has gained quite a bit of international fame for which it became a gourmet dish. And it is perfect considering the finalists since it matches some of their specialties. It's a fragrant fish so Hayama will know how to handle it. Ryo has a lot of knowledge about it because it is fish and it's popular in diners, so Suma also has his own advantage from it. The final battle will be in 10 days. The next day, Suma gets up early to go to the fish market and Megumi accompanies him, but he looks at the freshest sori for which he feels confident since he always prepared this dish in his restaurant. Suddenly, he meets Ryu and Alice. Ryu always comes to the market as he can feel which fish is better just by touching it, and he doesn't want to lose his touch due to lack of practice. Suma thinks that he can choose the best fish because of the experience he has, but Ryu contradicts him since it is not only how he looks and feels at that moment, so they make a competition right there and Megumi realizes that Ryu's fish is much better. After already proving that he is superior in choosing ingredients, Ryu leaves and tells Suma that he will not let someone like him beat him. To make matters worse, he hears about Hayama who had come earlier and chose the best fish without seeing them, so Suma realizes that he is at a great disadvantage when competing against opponents who can spot the best fish very easily. So Megumi tells him that he can go every day to the fish market to be better at choosing ingredients, but Suma remembers that his dad told him that acquiring that skill could take years and he only has 10 days. On the other hand, Hayama begins to do tests. He wants to prove that he is the best even though Suma has managed to overshadow his curry and Ryu has threatened him. Meanwhile, Ryu is also upset since he felt humiliated by Hayama and wants to show him who is the best, so Hayama doesn't underestimate him again. At Polar Star, Suma stares at the fish to see if he can distinguish them better, but Fumio tells him that there are a few ways to improve the flavor of a fish without it being the best, because the way you prepare it influences a lot, which gives Suma an idea when thinking about how long he can prepare his fish. For his idea, he looks for Abusaki, Ryuko, and Aikumi, since all of them are experts in aging meat and his idea is to increase the flavor. But since the process takes three days, he will have few opportunities to practice. In any case, he takes advantage of the free time he has to learn as much as he can about the fish, and when the day comes to try how his fish tastes, he realizes that it is a success since it has improved a lot. Although Megumi says that the best fish is Ryo's. Suma already thought so, so he thinks about what to do with the time he has left. Because it is too early to give up, also his plan worked, and he is closer to eliminating the disadvantage he has. Early in the morning, he is on his way to the fish market and he sees Fumio who is drinking at dawn, which gives him a great idea to catch up with his two opponents. The day of the grand finale, Ryu and Hayama realize that Suma didn't go to the fish market for several days, so they wonder what he was doing, but what they don't know is that Suma managed to perfect his fish just in time. The judges enter the arena and Alice's mother is the guest of honor, so she takes the opportunity to tell Suma that she expects a lot from him for having defeated her daughter. Ryu and Hayama presents their perfect ingredients and Suma shows a fish that is still covered and does not look appetizing. The other two realize that he aged it, but they do not believe that it achieves the same flavor as a perfect fish in season, so they discard Suma as a rival. They tell him to enjoy his third place. The judges set their eyes on Ryu who is preparing his dish with very strong ingredients, so they worry a little about how it will end since they could overshadow the sori, but they realize that he is very confident in his ability to select ingredients. Alice says that Ryu is a very good cook, she has faced him since they were children in order to force him to respect her. She had to beat him several times when they were still in Scandinavia. Until two years later he was able to beat her. Ryu has gained all this experience from countless duels against Alice. Ryo uses heat-resistant film to finish his dish and Suma wonders what he's planning, so Hayama tells him that he's going to do something that Suma knows very well. It turns out that when the judges open the bag, it generates an aroma bomb that whets your appetite, and when they taste the fish, they are surprised at how delicious it is despite not having been seasoned. But this is because Ryu used butter with fine herbs. The dish is so delicious that Alice's mother lights up and everyone is scared because they think her chest will be exposed like the director, but in her case, she loses her accent and begins to praise everything she likes about the dish, for which leaves a great impression on the judges. After that, Hayama introduces his dish, and it's carpaccio, which is an appetizer with raw sori, but it's too simple, and Ryu thinks it's impossible for this dish to compete with the taste and smell bomb he made. But it is not finished yet, it still needs to be sealed with a blowtorch. To everyone's surprise, this causes the sori to release an aroma that matches Ryu's dish, but they don't understand why. So Hayama explains that he put a sauce on top of the fish that made it easier to seal and strengthen the taste and smell as well. Sealing it with the blowtorch prevents the fish from losing flavor, so the sori is at its best. 
Time is about to end, and Suma finishes his dish just in time. He presents a dish with his rice-cured sword, which releases a fragrance that makes the judges drool over tasting his food, making it clear that his dish is on par with the other two. It turns out that Suma got the idea from seeing Fumio's salted rice brand pickles, and with the knowledge he gained from his friends who are experts in curing techniques, he was able to elevate his fish to put it on par with the best fish that Ryu and Hayama picked. The judges finish Suma's dish and begin to deliberate, but Suma asks them if they want to repeat it since they still need to add the broth to the dish, so the judges agree to repeat the dish and are surprised at how thick that this broth is. Alice gets annoyed as she thinks it's a rehash of what he did to her in their battle, but it's different since this broth is made from soy milk and because of this, it makes the rice taste better. The entire dish has been made with rice, so the dish itself managed to reach a flavor that made the director's clothes tear and Alice's mother lose her accent. On the other hand, Satoshi explains to Aizen what Suma Fortress is and why he has such a bad reputation. Satoshi discussed this with Suma's father, and he was surprised by the answer. It turns out that even his father did not see Suma's talent for cooking and thought that what he said about wanting to surpass him was a child's whim that leaves after a few days or months, but he never gave up, and after several years he realized that Suma lacked something that everyone had, and it is the feeling that you can lose to someone with more talent since he always believes that he can win, so he does not have unnecessary thoughts like it is normal to lose or his talent gives him a lot of advantage, so Suma always gives his best and tries to improve each experience he has. Before announcing the winner, the judges say that all three dishes are equally good in terms of taste, so they chose the dish that can be considered a specialty, which is a dish that only that chef could have prepared. In that moment, Hayama remembers how Shiomi adopted him and gave him a home, so he started learning to cook with the intention of revolutionizing the culinary world, but one night, he heard Shiomi worrying that maybe he was forcing him to do something he didn't want, but that was all the opposite, since what he wants most is to win to prove that Shiomi is right. So he put his all into the dish, and thanks to this, he is the winner of the autumn tournament. Gin sees what motivates Hayama to cook and realizes why he was able to reach this level, but he warns Hayama to take care of his talent since at times it can be a burden, although Hayama has teammates with whom he can rival since it is good that the rough diamonds collide with each other to polish themselves better. After that, the entire audience applauds and celebrates the birth of a new culinary genius. As Sue returns home, his father calls him and asks how it went, but just by listening to his son's voice, he realizes that Suma lost. But when he hears that Suma lost to Hayama, Joichiro starts laughing and says that it is the equivalent of him losing to Shiomi, and that had never happened, but Suma is the most frustrated. Although this is exciting, since he would never have met someone so amazing like Hayama, if he hadn't gone to this academy, his dad is glad he found someone his age to put him in his place as that's the best way to improve. Soma understands this, so he spends his days off with Ryu at Shiomi's laboratory to compare the dishes they prepared, and this only makes Hayama cranky since those two feel like being at home. But Shiomi tells them that they won't be able to relax for a long time because the practical training program, the stage air, is coming soon. Shiomi explains to them that the stage air is an academy program, they will send first-year students to various businesses in the food industry, it can be high-class restaurants or food manufacturers, so the students can have practical experience and Hayama thinks that with only doing their work where they're supposed to be will be enough. But Shiomi says that they have to leave a visible mark there, and if they mess up where they are, they could be kicked out of the academy, as it would be a dishonor to the school. The first test of the internship is in pairs and Hizako is Suma's partner, she gets upset and says that she will pass the test alone. He thinks it will be a luxury restaurant, but they are assigned to a family restaurant that is suffering from not being able to cope. So Suma tries to get along with Hizako by staring a conversation, but she is still down for having lost to Hayama and having walked away from Arena because of this. After that, Suma tells Hizako to do her best, so she gets upset because she thinks that serving customers in a restaurant won't be a challenge, since at the academy she has participated in group tasks where they have to simulate many deliveries of dishes. But Suma warns her that serving an endless customer is not easy. And he was right because at that moment, a horde of customers arrives and Hisako realizes what Suma was referring to. Since she gets lost among so many orders and customers complaining about not receiving their dish on time, she feels that she is in a field of war. To top it off, there is no rest between waves of customers. So Suma gets to work and receives the orders at the speed of light and then starts cooking the dishes in record time, also orders what to do. To Hisako, she gets upset but realizes that he is right, so she reluctantly complies with him. At the end of the day, the restaurant employees praise them for being so skillful, including Hizako, since in less than a day, she adapted to the rhythm of the herds of customers. On the other hand, Arena and Megumi were assigned to a fancy restaurant, but the head chef wants to make them wash dishes, so Arena refuses as she thinks it's a mistake. The next day, the restaurant begins to improve without a doubt since Arena took control of the kitchen, so the head chef has no choice but to bow his head to someone who is undoubtedly better. 
Meanwhile, Suma wonders if what they're doing is enough, but Hizakama doesn't know what he's talking about, so Suma asks her if she'd like working in a restaurant like that and keeps the rest of his opinion to himself, though the next day, Hizako can't help but think about it and realizes that when they leave, everything will go back to how it was before, so she announces an emergency meeting to change this. She explains the problem, and they suggest options such as hiring more people, reducing the menu, but they don't like all these options. So Suma asks the owner what kind of restaurant he wants to have, so after thinking about the customers, they arrive at the conclusion of attending by reservations only, even though they will rejected many people because, which at first was their fort, is being a burden now that the environment has changed due to the excess of clients, so they have to cling to what they want to achieve, and it is satisfying customers. It ends up being a great idea since the customers of yesteryear who have been faithful to the place since it opened come back before they couldn't get in due to the excess of people and the owner is happy that his place returned to what it was before, a place that feels familiar to customers and gives them a happy place to enjoy food. Thanks to this change, they passed the first test, so Suma asks Hizako if she will go back with Arena, but this makes her sad. On the other hand, Arena recognizes Megumi's talent since she recognized a defect in the menu just by washing dishes, so she praises her for her great ability, but Megumi is modest and says that she had very bad grades before, but everything has improved since she met Suma, so Arena gets mad. Megumi then tries to change the subject and asks her about Hizako, but this makes Arena sad as she misses her. Meanwhile, Hisako tells Suma that she doesn't think she deserves to be with Arena since she has been defeated for being so self-indulgent, but Suma tells her that she still has to aspire to walk beside Arena and not behind her, since she has to follow her own advice to hold on to what you love the most so Suma gives her the mangas he owed to Arena to use as an excuse to get closer to her again and Hisako thanks him as she really wants to be by Arena's side again. Finally, Suma realizes that they are alike since he too has been following his father all this time, but now he will meet the outside world and try to find a new approach to his own cooking. The next day, Shinomiya is preparing the pre-opening of his restaurant in Tokyo and finds out that the academy will send him a student as an intern, but he says that he will not accept anyone who has not reached the final of the autumn selection, so he is surprised to see that his intern will be Suma. Suma thinks that he will learn a lot right away, but Shinomiya sends him to do cleaning tasks since they haven't opened the restaurant yet. Then he takes the opportunity to introduce Suma to the staff and the head chef named Abel, who can't help but be surprised to see how Suma and Shinomiya interact so confidently, since it took him a long time for Shinomiya to talk to him like a normal person. The other chefs agree since they lived through it, but it seems to them that since Shinomiya returned to Japan, he has become kinder, and even he tells them what they can improve on. So they think that Shinomiya likes to teach, unfortunately, Shinomiya overhears this and shuts them up, so they don't waste time gossiping. Later, Shinomiya asks Suma why he is so glad that he ended up in his restaurant since it would be easier to pass in a restaurant with little prestige, but Suma doesn't think of just approving as he is looking for a new identity for his cooking and thus finding his own specialty. After that, Shinomiya makes lunch and everyone is amazed at his dish, but even so, Shinomiya doesn't think it's good enough and thinks about how to improve it. Sometime later, the night of the pre-opening arrives and Suma will be Lucy's support while he gets used to it and if he manages to adapt, he will be able to help Abel, so Suma thinks it will be something simple. But as soon as the first customers arrive, he feels an unusual tension in the kitchen, and suddenly everyone acts fast without making unnecessary noise, but Suma accidentally makes a noise and Shinomiya threatens to fire him if he does it again, since everyone is focused on perceiving even the smallest detail. To make matters worse, the preparations are very complex, so Suma takes a long time and it gets to the point that he is late for which Abel tells him that he does not recognize him as a member of the team and does not want to have bothers in the kitchen. To everyone's surprise, Suma gets to work instead of freaking out as Suma is aware of his current level, but he doesn't plan to leave it there, so he plans to adapt before the pre-opening ends. To achieve this, he stays at night to study and improve his technique, and the next day, he waits for the chefs to ask them questions. Abel tries to refuse since they have to prepare to open, but Suma has already done all the previous work so they can answer to his questions and he repeats this day after day, trying to correct his mistakes that he makes. Abel is surprised that he can stay so composed since it's obvious that he's been very useless these days, but he still keeps asking questions and is surprised when Suma adjusts to the pace and starts to have everything ready before he is told, which gives him the opportunity to finish a ditch completely alone. The staff are happy for him since they were worried because Shinomiya didn't give him any advice, but Shinomiya knew that someone who had the guts to challenge him could not succumb to this test, although he did not count on Suma's audacity. At the end of the day, Suma asks Shinomiya to allow him to present a dish in the competition that they will do the next day to choose the new dish from the menu, since Shinomiya always had a competition in mind and Suma want to prepare a new recipe in which he can use all the knowledge he had acquired. The last day of the pre-opening arrives and Suma is surprised at how good a teacher Abel is, but Abel tells him that it's only because Suma doesn't know anything about French cuisine. Shinomiya tells them that they will open soon, and they all get ready. 
Later, the last customers leave, but then some special guests arrive. Like Professor Chappelle, who was Shinomiya's French cuisine teacher, and his graduate friends from the academy who were instructors at the camp, and lastly, Shinomiya's mother. Ben Suma asked him why he specialized in French cuisine, and this question reminds Shinomiya that it was because the first time they ate in a fancy French restaurant, his mother smiled like never before, so he wanted to cook French food that makes her smile that way, but he makes a scary face and refuses to tell him. They finish eating, and Shinomiya's mom leaves. But the graduates don't want to leave because they heard about the contest that Shinomiya's chefs will have. They think that Sumo will not have it easy because he has not received the basics of French cuisine in middle school, and no matter how much he can recreating recipes, creating one from scratch is something else entirely. Suma is surprised that Y is also participating. So she explains that she was one of the managers of the original restaurant, but she switched jobs to learn other perspectives, although she never neglected her chef skills. Everyone takes this contest very seriously, so they assume if he does see it, with the seriousness it deserves, and he says that he is going to give his all to adopt all the new techniques he has learned from French cuisine, and thus become a chef who can cook his specialty. Suma is the last to present his dish, and is a whole quail. But Suma says that he made a Dunbury, so everyone is speechless, since this dish is served in a bowl. Although after trying it, they realize that it is filled with what a Donbury would normally have, so Suma redid the dish and cooks it with a French technique. Abel doesn't understand how the inside doesn't spill, but Shinomiya realizes that he wrapped the contents in cabbage, and Hinako remembers that this was what Suma Nan Megumi did in the Shakocheki against Shinomiya. Although this is something that Chappelle can't find out, so they shut her up immediately. It turns out that the hidden purpose of the internships is for students to experience other cultures and try to steal knowledge to appropriate it. And this is just what Suma did since he learned everything he could about French cuisine and reinvents the cuisine he has known since childhood to become something completely new. Shinomi appraises him for his dish, but tells him that it's not enough, at least not for now, since they have to tweak it to make it worthy of being used on his menu. So he begins to point out everything he could improve on the dish, and they stay until the next day cooking the correction. And in the end, they get an exquisite dish that will be on the Shinomi menu. The next day, Suma thanks Shinomi since he was a great teacher. So the girls make fun of Shinomi for having a student, he is angry with them and before saying goodbye to Suma. He tells him that he hopes that he is in the first place of the Elite 10, and Suma says that he will. All the first year student had tests they had to overcome when facing the difficulty and many of them were left behind. But this marks a before and after since they are now considered as possible victims of the higher years, so Suma receives a lot of cards for Shokujikus. Suma is delighted with the idea, and it doesn't take long for him to win the first Shakujeki against a second-year student. Megumi and the others arrive at the residence and realize that Suma is not there since he spends his time in Shakujekis after the students gave him endless letters to challenging him. So Megumi goes to see him and is surprised that he has won a duel against two people at the same time. Suddenly, Suma is surprised when a strange girl approaches him and tastes what he cooked before leaving with Satoshi and other older-looking students. Meanwhile, the director announces the Autumn Leaves Viewing and Arena and does the same with the Elite 10. Then Satoshi calls Megumi and Suma to let them know that this event is for the finalists of the Autumn Selection to meet the Elite 10. So Megumi gets a little nervous, but Suma finds it interesting and Megumi worries even more, since it's totally possible that Suma will do something crazy. The day comes and Suma realizes that bringing them together was not a very good idea since not everyone gets along. Arena is also there because although she's a Elite 10, she was also a first-year student. Later, the Elite Ten arrive, and the first to say something is the Eighth Elite named Cuba, since he wants to end the meeting as soon as possible, because he does not see the first years as worthy of his time. But the others disagree with him since it was a request from the director of the academy, and due to this, they begin to fight, making it clear that their relationship is even worse. Vet in the first seat of the Elite Ten says a few words, but all he does is get depressed because of the job he was given for having a Shaka Jeki in the middle of the autumn selection. So Suma and Takumi are surprised, since it is very different from the other first seats they have known. But the weird girl that Suma met lifts his spirits since he has to make a better impression. She is Rindo, the second seat of the Elite Ten. Suma takes the opportunity to request a Shakujeki from anyone who is willing, but they all refuse and Cuba says that they don't have time to duel against the first years. Suma thinks that they do it out of fear of losing their seat, so he tells them that they don't need to bet on it, since he only wants to face the best. But Cuba says that it's not because of that, since Suma doesn't understand what it means to be an Elite 10. Cuba explains that they have access to information that others could dream of having in Satoshi, adds that all these resources are better the more you go up the Elite ladder, so fighting to be the best is everything. Even the first Elite emphasizes that in the way of studying cooking, it is very useful to be an Elite since it speeds up the process. But Rindo ends this conversation since they have to try the dish that the fourth Elite named Momo prepared for them. Momo is considered the best pastry chef at the Academy which is why she made them some desserts that stunned all the first years since they seemed to have a whole world inside. So the elites think that with this, they made clear the difference 
that there are between skills with first years, so the whole Shakujeki thing should end there. Kuga ends the meeting since they are very busy and to make it clear that he is superior. He says that he will accept a Shakujeki if someone proves to be better than him in some aspect of the kitchen. So Suma is motivated to hear that he has an opportunity to challenge him. The next day, Suma is thoughtful since there are not many opportunities to face someone from higher years, then Megumi remembers that the Moon Banquet Festival will be soon, which is held every end of autumn. Suma sees this as a great opportunity, since he was popular at the festivals he participated in. Then he goes to sign up to have a food stall and meets Arena. Hearing that he plans to beat Kuba, she realizes that he may not know how the Moon Banquet Festival works. Suma wonders what Kuba specializes in and Megumi thinks it's Chinese cuisine, so they ask Hojo, since she has the same specialty. But she tells them that Cuba specializes in Sikwan cuisine, which is more specific. But since Suma says that he will do everything by himself, Hojo prefers to show him how Cuba works instead of explaining it. They go to Cuba's fortress. There are many men synchronized to do the exact same thing, and Cuba is surprised that Sumi and Hojo come to see him. But Suma doesn't mince words and asks him straight up what he plans to cook for the festival. Kuga doesn't know what he will do, but one of his signature dishes is Mapo tofu, and he makes 10 dishes for Suma so he can understand the difference between his cuisine and his restaurant. Suma is surprised that his staff are so synchronized. They made 10 dishes at the same time, and all of them have the same spicy and explosive flavor. So Cuba tells Suma that he will have to sell more than 1,000 dishes a day, if he wants to position himself in the top of the festival, but Suma is alone. So he asks what he plans to beat him with, and Suma says confidently that he will do it with his cuisine. Hondro asks Suma what he will do, but Suma still doesn't know. So she takes the opportunity to give him one last warning since Cuba is very well known and many people want to try his food. So Suma will start with a lot of disadvantage. In Polar Star, Satoshi asks Suma to participate in the residence's food stall. But he explains that he already has plans to defeat Cuba. Everyone is surprised so they recommend that he choose an area that suits him what he wants to do. Suma wonders if it's that important and everyone says yes. Since in the lower area there are cheap food, so they tend to be simple. In the middle area, there are professional dishes, so the price is usually medium term. And in the high area, everything is gourmet food, so the price has no limit. Suma spends days thinking about where to go, but he can't find an answer. Several days later, he meets Arena in class, and he realizes that they always sit together by chance, and thanks to that, he remembers what happened in the camp. After that, when choosing booth positions, several students fight for the position they want, but people like Arena have no problems, and Suma apparently doesn't either, since he chose the position next to the Chinese food RS where nobody wants to put their stall because Kuba takes all the customers. Suma says that he plans to seal his clients just like he did with Arena, but after he signs up, Arena warns him that if his booth loses money, he will be expelled. Suma did not know that, so he is speechless. Everyone is surprised when they find out about the decision that Suma made, since it is a declaration of war on Kuga, so even Ikumi scolds him, but he cares more about how much the RS of the rice bowl has progressed. So the president tells Suma that they will help him in whatever he wants, since he and Megumi are honorary members. Back at the residence, Suma meets with Arena and Alice. Suddenly, Hisako arrived to report that Arena has an hour free, so Suma takes the opportunity to ask them to try one of his dishes, and to Arena's surprise, Hisako tells him to do it quickly. So Arena realizes that for some reason they get along better, although she is embarrassed to ask why. Suma prepares his mapo tofu, and even though it's very spicy, Arena tells him that it doesn't compare to Kuva's M.A. and Le. So Suma is confused, since this is Chinese cuisine. But Arena explains that in Chinese culture, spiciness is divided into M.A. and Le, and precisely the Shikuan cuisine that Kuba dominates has a lot of skill and spiciness. This information is really useful to Suma, so Arena regrets spilling the beans, but since she started, she ends up saying that Kuba's spiciness makes people want more. Alice says that this has to do with the fact that spiciness is not related to taste, but to pain and by generating pleasure hormone. It becomes addictive, thanks to this, Kuga enjoys bringing people to their knees with his spiciness, since he knows they will return for more. Suma wonders how to deal with this and Megumi tells him that she wants to help him at his food stall, so he agrees and they practice to find a spice that will cope with it. Later, Megumi ends up being a guinea pig who has to put up with Suma's crazy extra spicy food, but only with spicy he won't be able to do anything, since she also needs to combat the explosive taste that Kuga has. But Megumi tells him that maybe the secret is that Kuga prepares his own spices, so the secret of that addictive spiciness is found in its modifications. The next day, Suma and Megumi walk around the school to see how the others make their preparations for the festival, and are surprised to see that Alice will be together with Ryu and Hayama, since Alice appealed to Shayomi's maternal instincts to force Hayama to team up with his friends. After that, they go to see the competition and Suma sees that Cuba is a dictator, 
although the members of the RS enjoy being tortured and exploited so there's nothing to do. Thanks to seeing that the facade is important, he remembers that Arena told him that Shichu and food is not the only one, then a great idea occurs to him since as a child his father showed him some special ovens to cook at a festival, and Hojo gives them a pair so they can fight Kuga. Days later, they explain that the money will be exchanged for tickets of different value to function as proof of purchase and the festival begins, so Kuga already sees the customers coming in masses. Suma does not seem to be a threat since he has only a food cart, but he has a plan. Suma prepared black pepper buns which are delicious, but Kuga's booth steals all the customers, so despite it being a good angle to compete against Kuga, in this case, it's the customers who choose who to buy, they will always prefer the most famous, so after a long day, Suma sold very few buns. While Cooper sold a lot of his spicy dishes, and he tells Suma that his idea was a good one, but he should have chosen another place where to put his food cart, but it's too late to regret it. Megumi gets worried since both of them may get kicked out of the academy, if they continuing like this. Later, they start announcing the sales rankings where there are only two positions that have red numbers, and it's a big surprise since they are all Autumn Festival's finalists. Then Arena gives them a scolded epic for making a fool of the Autumn Tournament. But in Hayama's case, it's because he doesn't have a shred of teamwork with Alice, since she wants to do whatever she wants and without an ounce of remorse, she plans make a clean slate the next day. Suma arrives and gives everyone black pepper buns that they are selling, so everyone agrees that the dish is not the problem. But Suma changes the subject saying that it's amazing that the Elite 10 are tops in all areas, Arena even managed to the second place in the high area, but Hizako says that they only serve by reservation, and Arena says that not everyone cares about selling more, also Arena scolds Suma since he should worry about beating Kuga instead of seeing the other's results, but Suma is not so sure. Everyone leaves with their groups and Megumi is surprised that they had so few ingredients left, but when she leaves, she sees Suma talking to a suspicious person. The next day, Kuga's booth is doing even better than the day before, but so is Suma, as he added a new dish to his menu. At the end of the day, the ranking reveals that Suma moved up a few places. After that, Kuga is surprised that Suma's cart is not in its place. It turns out that Suma and Megumi went out to offer their free buns to those who were about to leave and Mayo gets annoyed that he steals customers in her area, so Suma makes her try his disgusting experiments and they become best friends for being lovers of disgusting cuisine. Stoma explains that he is handing out free dishes to get to know the clientele better since there are some who have eaten too much, and that is why he made an easy-to-digest dish with the dough of his main dish. They are noodles with pork that even if they are full, they are finished without effort because they are very light. Many people come to Suma's food cart, but since it's free, he can't celebrate. But Suma's new plan is to become famous, since his previous plan was to impress with clay ovens like when he was a kid, but in front of Kuga's big restaurant, he was outshone. Megumi tells him that it also affects that the black pepper bun is hard to know how delicious it is without trying it, unlike Kuga's dish, that you can imagine what comes just by looking at it, so Suma is left thinking of a dish that can help them defeat it. On the other hand, Alice keeps proposing unreal things, but to Hayama's surprise, after encouraging her a bit, she agrees to be more accessible with her whims. Back to Suma, he remembers that his mapo tofu isn't spicier because his father made it soft for the customers, so Suma is encouraged to do experiments and asks Megumi to accompany him. On the third day of the festival, Suma is doing better, but it's still not enough to cover the losses from the first day, so Cuba gets annoying and tells Suma to give up since it's impossible for him to win. But this doesn't even go through Suma head, because that Nike finishes the dish that will manage to reverse this situation, and they make some last calls to prepare the ground. On a fourth day, Suma brings the chairman of his commercial district to lend him more seats and pays him with a plate of food which attracts Kuba's attention, as he sees it as a useless attempt to fight because his problem is customers. Then Kuba sees the new Suma's dish and he and his staff look down on it, since it is Mapo Tofu Kuba's specialty, but with a few slight changes, so they stop paying attention to him and go on serving their customers. The chairman says it's delicious, but he doesn't know if it will be enough to beat the impressive dishes he sees in the competition. But Suma thinks that Kuba's restaurant is not an ideal restaurant since it doesn't keep all the customers satisfied for excess of demand. So he asks him to open the meatball on his plate. When he do it, he releases a scent bomb that draws the attention of several customers, snatching half of everyone waiting, making the Chinese food RS members nervous. But Kuba says to not to worry since because Suma and Megumi only have a small cart food, so they will not be able to keep up with the demand of so many customers and will explode in no time. As Kuba said, after a while they begin to have problems serving so many people, but Suma had already foreseen this scenario and took action on the matter, calling Subaru since he had been psyching himself up for days to be another Suma in the kitchen. 
and thus speeding up the pace unexpectedly. In addition, Megumi also contributes in her own way since she is very attentive to customers and generates very good customer service. As if that were not enough, she asked her regional cuisine RS for help to lend them lamps to illuminate the place at sunset. So they began to attract a lot of attention, and with how delicious their food is, they began to sell even more. Due to this, Megumi begins to have problems attending to so many people. But unexpected reinforcements arrive, Ikuni and the Aldini twins, since they do not want Suma to be left halfway to defeating Kuga. In that moment, Kuga realizes that Suma was paving the way for this day to be able to give everything. Later, the ranking is announced, Kuga is in second place, for which he is annoyed beyond power and Suma celebrates with his friends for having achieved the goal of first place. On the other hand, Alice finally managed to engage with Hayama's food, adding value to it instead of modifying it, so they also managed to get out of the red. Rindo begins to make fun of Kuba since he lost by neglecting his opponent in Kuba. No matter how angry he is, he knows that Rindo is right, so he admits the defeat and tells Suma to have their shock ejection. But Suma doesn't know what he is talking about since he wants a crushing defeat in the total of the five days. On the last day, they also compete with everything and Suma is very close to surpassing his total sales, but he ends up losing. Rindo reminds Kuga that Suma said the same thing when he met the Elite Ten, so it seemed like a duel that had to happen. Although in his case, Tsukasa defeated him in a humiliating way and that's why Kuba wants to go back to challenge him. But now that he lost two days to Suma, he couldn't win a bet with Tsukasa to have a shock of Jiki and Suma couldn't beat him in the accumulated either, so they both lost. Rindo invites Suma and Megumi eat at Tsukasa's restaurant since she wants to give them the opportunity to see how he's the best cook in the academy. Then Suma is surprised by the atmosphere and even more when he finds out that Tsukasa does everything alone in the kitchen. But the reason for this is that Tsukasa does not trust anyone else and is afraid that they will alter his dishes by mistake. Although when they try his dishes, they realize that it is on a completely different level and even though they eat several dishes, they always have a clear picture of what they're eating and each dish enhances the previous one, even as it changes in temperature and flavor. So Suma admits that Tsukasa is out of his league. Rindo admits that it is delicious, but she would like to try something that has Tsukasa's passion for food. Although he tries at all costs to remove himself from his food and enhances the flavors in this way, but paradoxically, he ends up projecting his intentions on his dishes. This motivates Suma to try the other ten elites' dishes, so he heads to Arena's stall since she owes him the dinner because Suma forced her to eat his black pepper buns. Meanwhile, Arena keeps a reserved table for Suma. As a child, she had Jutru as chef in her house, and she always longed for him to try one of her dishes, and that is why she has a free table. But the one who arrives is not him, but her father named Azami, who had been expelled from the academy. He asked Arena to cook her exquisite food for him and forget about the others, since in his eyes they are mediocre people, and the atmosphere becomes very tense. Suma arrives in the most chill way and asks if he can eat with Azami, but his face tells him everything. Then Azami loses his appetite and leaves saying that she should choose her friends better. But what surprises Suma the most is seeing Arena so pale and trembling. Before Azami can leave, the principal of the academy intervenes to kick him out of there, but Azami tells him that he has no right, since he raised Arena to be the best chef in the world, and at that school she is not being given the adequate environment since there are many mediocre people. But the director tells him that it is not his decision to say if they are worthy or not, since it is with the food that they will demonstrate. Azami stops arguing and tells everyone that if the majority of the elite ten of the council decide something, not even the director can change it. Then he informs that six of the elite ten have made the decision that Azami is the new director, so it is announced his reign will begin from the next day. As Azami said, some elite ten vote to change the director, and he holds a conference to inform all the students that he will take care of the academy from now on. But he acts in a very nice way, very different from the night before, for which some believe is hypocritical, as he called them mediocre, who didn't deserve to have access to real gourmet food. At night, Suma has an unexpected visitor. The ex-director of the academy wants to talk to him alone and takes the opportunity to tell him Irina's story. When she was a child, she was very kind. But when Alice left to Scandinavia, Azami took the opportunity to isolate her and begin to brainwash her to be stricter with the food that has mistaken. So her attitude changed radically, and the ex-director upon finding out banished Azami without hesitation. So Irina began to heal little by little with the friends she has gone acquiring. But Azami knows that there is still a shadow of Azami in Irina's heart, so he is sure that he will use it to manipulate her again. So the ex-director asks Suma to take care of Irina and saving her. Meanwhile, Alice, Ryu, and Hizaka go to rescue Arena since Alice doesn't plan to leave her in Azami's hands. So they run away from home, but they don't know where they will leave Arena, since they all live off in Akiri. Suddenly, they hear a noise near them. Back to Suma, he tells the ex-director that he doesn't care about Arena's family situation, but that he will continue to do what he always did, which is to make Arena accept how delicious his dishes are, so he doesn't think of abandoning her. Megumi is this person who saw Arena and the other, so she invites them into the Polar Star residence since it's raining. Because of this, Suma gets a big surprise when he enters and sees them. 
Hizako asks them to let her stay there for a few days, but they are not very sure, since it would be going against the new director, so Hizako tells them the whole story about Arena. When they hear her sad story, they do not hesitate for a second to offer her all their support. The boys from the residence take advantage of the fact that Arena hasn't eaten to prepare their dishes, and she emphasizes their mistakes as usual, but this only motivates them to improve, so the others also give her to taste their dishes. Suma also gets down to work, which brings back memories of Jochiro, but seeing that it's Suma, she tells him that she won't accept anything coming from him, but this doesn't stop him from cooking. The next day, Azami presents his educational reform, a new study plan that, according to him, will select the most suitable chefs, but this seems like an evil deed to the teachers. Azami announces these changes on television, and the most notorious is that the RS and autonomous bodies and clubs will disappear to be replaced by a single body called Central. All the students get upset, but for Azami, this is the best, since no one will be expelled for no reason and everyone will follow the recipes developed by the Elite 10, who are at the top of the school, so everyone will have access to prepare the best cuisine. Even so, the RS refuse to close. Later, Azim goes to the Polar Star dormitory to warn them that they must also close since the school cannot allow another autonomous place, so Suma invites him to have a cup of tea to talk, but in reality, the only thing he says is that he wants to ask for a Shaka Jeki to risk the future of Polar Star. Aizen says that he is not the only one, there are a lot of RS that ask him for the same thing, and he does not have the responsibility to answer them, but since he is a good person, he decided to do it. Right now, he has a Shakuchiki program that will serve as an example for the others, since if they lose, they will be expelled. Every student watched this Shakuchiki with hope, but Suma is intrigued since no matter how much he crushes him, it will not discourage the other RS, but the judges name Aizen as the winner without even trying the rival dish, so it is evident that the judges have been bought and all who challenge Aizen will end up expelled. The Shakajeki are officially dead. After this, all of Izen's Shakajeki requests were cancelled, and the Shakajeki's manager can't do anything. The next day, they begin to implement the changes and restrict recipe modifications, and the students must only follow orders from Central. That night at Polar Star, everyone is sad as they remember all the memories they did together in this year and can't help but break down in tears, as they will be unfairly separated. Seeing this, Suma does not plan to sit idly by. The next day, he challenges Izen to a Shakajeki and tells him that he is doing it for himself. He will not allow them to take away the place where he will continue to perfect his cuisine. The members of Polar Star find out about the madness that Suma is about to commit, so they watch him on television. Meanwhile, Suma verifies that everything is okay with the ingredients since he knows Aizen could cheat. Suddenly, Rindo arrives to see this Shakojeki in person. She finds it interesting and laughs at Aizen, since his effort to break Suma's spirit failed and he did the opposite. Now Suma wants to have this Shakojeki more, so Aizen uses his last ruse. He sends his men to the Polar Star dormitory to evict everyone and tells Suma to make him nervous. Aizen says that everything will be in vain because when Suma arrives, everyone will already be evicted. Suma doesn't care much because if he wins, Aizen will cancel the eviction, so Suma just had to win by cooking his Josas. The judges are outraged since it's a very ordinary ditch for such a gourmet ingredient like chicken Satsuma, but Suma has a plan. Aizen continues trying to provoke Suma, so he calls his henchmen to see how the eviction is going, but he gets annoyed since those of the residents are resisting. It turns out that Megumi refused to give up the residents, and all the others agree to resist, because it's not fair for Suma to fight alone, so Fumio gave them resistance equipment, which they had kept for years. In the past, it was very common for others to attack Polar Star out of envy. They put on helmets and shields to defend themselves and arm themselves with balls and water hoses. Suma tells Izen that whatever he wants to tell him, he can do it through his food, so Izen understands that this is the only way and starts cooking a dish that will make Suma understand how useless their efforts are. Suma is surprised that Izen knows how to cook, but Rindo tells him that he's pretty good, and if it wasn't for his business, he'd be higher in the Elite 10 rankings. Since Izen entered the academy, he began to earn a lot of money in very different culinary businesses which makes clear his great knowledge of food, which earned him the nickname of the alchemist. Izen finishes his dish, and it is a rice with chicken that impresses the judges and Suma since it is squishy. So the judges want to finish the vote at once, but Suma provokes Izen to wait until he finishes his dish, saying that maybe he is afraid that he will win. So Izen accepts, and Suma gives the final details to his Josas. The judges are further incensed as Suma adds cheese, and this is another strong flavor that would overpower the chicken in normal situations. But Suma adds a special sauce when the chicken is crispy and serves it to Aizen first, so he can see which dish is better. Aizen tries to say that it's impossible for it to be better than his, but he barely tastes it, and he's speechless. So he gives it to the judges, and one of them tries to say that it's not necessary for them to try it, and want to vote for once, but the other two want to even give the dish a taste, taking advantage of the fact that the result has already been decided. Then they try the Josas and feel the power of the chicken, but they don't understand how it is possible because Suma added pork and parmesan cheese, so Suma explains it to them. 
He used ketchup as a secret ingredient. The acidity of the tomato is perfect to balance these flavors, and this idea was thanks to the members of Polar Star. Meanwhile, Polar Star's dorm is still being attacked by Izan's men and defended by the members. Hizako stands in front of Arena's door to defend her. Then Arena tells Hizako that Polar Star members are weird since one night, Yuki asked Arena to give her opinion about her dish and Arena had told her to eliminate some things that were very powerful. But instead of listening to her, she decided to add more ingredients. Arena thought that the dish would taste ugly, but she is very surprised to see that it tastes good. After that, Yuki and Arena went to the kitchen and saw the members of Polar Star. They wanted to combine the chicken with the pork, so Arena tried to say that they have to eliminate one of the two, because sometimes less is more, since that is the cooking they taught her. But the Polar Star's member found a way to balance it, so it seems strange to her that this chaotic clash of ideas results in exquisite dishes. Thanks to this dish that was created by the members of Polar Star, Suma manages to break the judges, and without thinking, they vote Suma as the winner, so Aizen boils with anger for having been humiliated in this way. Then Suma looks at the camera and gives a message. If someone try to mess with Polar Star, they will deal with him. And it doesn't matter if it is a member of the Elite Ten. Thanks to this victory, Izan's henchmen have to abort the eviction mission, so all members of Polar Star cry with happiness for having kept the residents intact, so they start to celebrate. Everyone is surprised that Suma has beaten the ninth place of the Academy, but Suma knows that Izan didn't take it very seriously, and even so, he managed to present a good dish, so he wants to defeat him on even terms. Suddenly, Satoshi arrives and everyone is surprised because he had been missing, and they thought he had betrayed them. But he tells them that he was paving the way for Suma's victory to have a positive effect, since now they can fight for their RS and the judges will be neutral. So they start the real celebration with Satoshi with no clothes as always. Ermina is surprised that everyone was so confident that a miracle would happen. They defended the dorm until the last minute and even Hisako looked like someone who knew something would happen. Hisako tells her that for some reason she felt that Suma is the one who can turn around the situation they are going through at the academy. The next day, Azami revokes three elites who are now lined with Central, the third seat, Tosu, the eighth seat, Kuga, and the seventh seat, Satoshi. Although thanks to Satoshi, the rest of the Elite Ten will have to accept the Shokujikis and the judges will be neutral. Momo complains about this, but they have no choice but to go hunting for the survivors. This catches the attention of Suma and the others, so they divide into groups to go see the Shakacheki. Although they warn Suma not to do anything crazy, so Takumi and Megumi accompany him to Kikum at bay. Upon arrival, they see that those who try to protect their RS are crushed by the Elite Ten. After that, a group chosen directly by Azami arrives, the soldiers from Central, they call themselves part of the Elite, even though they were chosen and didn't earn their Elite position. They also have the mission of eliminating those who try to reveal themselves to Central's orders, like the Elite Ten. They win their battles brutally, but they are too loud-mouthed and self-centered, so Suma and Takumi can't help but try to put them in their place and manage to provoke Rentaru. But their own teammates take him away, since that fight is not necessary. After that, Alice and Ryu enter the arena. She is the leader of the cutting-edge cuisine Aris, and since Rentaru went to provoke them at their own house, Ryu got angry and accepted Rentaru's challenge. So now Rentaru will try to take it out on Ryu instead of Suma. They both use salmon and Ryu plans to make his best dish with salmon, so Rentaru decides to dig good his new toys. These are cutting-edge technology, but Alice says that they are really useful if you know how to use them. But if you know, they could overwhelm you, so Suma and Takumi doubt that Rentaru can use it since his appearance says that he is not very meticulous. Renteru's teammates tell them that they won't be able to repeat that once they see him because he's a master of low temperature cooking and this leaves Suma blank. So Alice explains that it is when you avoid exceeding 58 degrees Celsius at purpose to prevent the meat from toughening. It turns out that when he concentrates on cooking, Renteru changes completely. At that moment, he seems like a chef and even Suma recognizes that he gives his body and soul in his cuisine. So now he thinks that Renteru is a great chef. After that, Renteru finishes his dish and at first glance it looks as if the meat melts when you cut it. So it leaves a very elegant image and a very delicious aroma. So the judges say that what matters is the taste. But even in that, it is exquisite. It is a flavor bomb thanks to the salmon that has been finely cooked. So everyone believes that this is over and Rentoro won. Then Ryo finishes his dish and says that this will not be decided until they try it. So Ryu serves the judges his kaulibak, which consists of salmon wrapped in rice and bread that generates several layers of textures. This is a direct impact with the great taste of salmon. Then one of the judges does not know how to vote since both dishes seem very good, but they continue eating to find differences, since there was one of the two that took better advantage of the salmon flavor. Then Central's soldiers laughs as they believe that it is the work of the oven that Renteru used since he cooked the salmon in olive oil so the salmon juices would not escape. Rientaru believes that he is the undisputed winner, but to his surprise, the dish that the judges were talking about is Ryu's. Rentaru does not accept it. He believes that no one could use it better than him, 
Serbu gives him a taste of his dish, and Rentaru cannot believe that he has improved his use of spices so much, because at the Autumn Festival, all Ryu did was combine strong flavor, but in his internships, he had to help a curry restaurant, where they kept scolding him for his lack of interest in spices, so he took advantage of the time to improve his use of spices, and that is why now he is not the same one who was defeated before, which earned him a resounding victory against Central. Azami arrives at the place to see how the matches ended and is surprised to see that one of his chosen ones lost is Shakageki. So he falsely congratulates Alice. She hates Azami because as a child, she sent a lot of letters to Arena from Scandinavia, but he never gave them to Arena to have control over her. So now she does not plan to stand idly by if he tries to take Arena back by force. Arena hears all this, then Alice repeats it to her. So Arena does not allow herself to be manipulated again and makes it clear to her that she can think for herself. After this, all the RS that lost are destroyed and those who try to follow their activities secretly are harshly punished. Meanwhile, the classes are different. The student cannot longer create their own dishes. They must follow to the letter the recipes that those of Central order them. Suma comically thinks that they are worse than Shinomiya since he do not allow him to change anything in his recipe. To top it off, teachers who differ from Central's directives are fired, so in one class, the instructor will be the best chef in the entire academy, the first seat of the Elite Ten. He needs an assistant and asks for a volunteer, but everyone is afraid to cook by his side, so Suma offers without hesitation, and he follows Tsukasa's ridiculously fast pace, so they put on a show on another level in front of all the students. After the class, Tsukasa faints from his nerves since he did not want to teach class in front of so many students for fear of telling them something wrong. But he was surprised by how skilled Suma was, so he asks him to be his right hand and join Central. Meanwhile, Arena hopes that her father will not get away with his plan, so Hisako is surprised that she has changed so much. Arena tells her that after seeing how the members from the Polar Star Dormitory defended their place and how Alice confronted her father's command, she can't help but want to say and do what she thinks. As they are leaving the classroom, they see that Suma is having a conversation with Tsukasa and they hear that they will have a cooking duel, betting the first seat of the Elite Ten. But if Suma loses, he will have to join Central as Tsukasa's right-hand man. Suma tells him that he doesn't want to share his restaurant's recipes with Central. But Tsukasa doesn't want that, he only wants him as a right-hand, so he can focus on improving his cuisine. Suma never rejects a duel, so he accepts without thinking much about it, so they decide to cook a French dish using venison meat. After trying Tsukasa dishes earlier, Suma can't help but want to prepare something better with everything he learned in the internship with Shinomiya. Then Tsukasa starts cooking first, and the girls are surprised at how he prepares the ingredients. He has a care that gives the impression that he converses with the ingredients and raises them to the maximum. Suma doesn't understand why Tsukasa is with Central since he's a great cook. So he asks what Izami's plans are in the long term, and Tsukasa explains that Izami wants to eliminate restaurants that don't serve authentic gourmet food. Suma realizes that this means that many restaurants that people are very fond of will disappear, including his own family restaurant. He doesn't plan to join Central, so he gets serious to win this match. Stuma begins to cook the venison thighs, and he takes out his secret ingredient, sweet chestnuts from his backpack, so everyone is surprised for wanting to use a snack in a gourmet dish. Then Tsukasa tells him that using rare ingredients will not be enough to create an exceptional dish, but Suma is just starting and cooks the meat on charcoal. So Kazako freaks out as she doesn't see how he could possibly use charcoal in French food, as the aroma is too strong to combine with game meat. Irina agrees with Hizako, but using charcoal has its benefits since the temperatures reached are very high, but the smoky smell will be too strong for a French dish, which means it will be a French dish that only Suma can make. Suma finishes his dish first, but doesn't know who will rate it, so he asks the three girls to be the judges and taste their dishes, to which Tsukasa is surprised that they've been there all this time. Hizako doesn't understand how he asks this favor knowing that if he loses, he will have to join Central, but Arena accepts and warns the others to judge objectively. Everyone is amazed at the great flavor and texture of his venison, all thanks to the sweetened chestnuts that give them a unique flavor that could not be achieved with normal chestnuts. But what surprises Tsukasa the most is that he was able to use charcoal in French food without the smell getting out of control, then Arena realizes it's because Suma used coffee to hide the smell. Suma says that it is true since he learned this trick in his internship with Shinomiya, and the result is such that even Arena admits that this qualifies as French food. Tsukasa also presents his dish, which is divided into two parts, which are completely different since even though the venison is delicious, the sauces are on another level. On the one hand, it demonstrates a wild flavor enhanced by a venison-based sauce, and on the other, a refined sauce that uses red berries. The incredible thing about this is that a slight mistake would have been ruined everything. So this dish is only possible for Tsukasa and his great care with the ingredients. The girls start thinking which dish is better. Arena doubts it a bit, but the answer is clear to her. Tsukasa is the winner. The other two don't want to cast their vote because of what it means for Suma, but it's Tsukasa who annuls the duel, since he lost interest in Suma after seeing how crazy his cooking is, so he says that is a draw. 
Soma doesn't accept this as he feels that he lost. Hizako and Megumi forcefully shut him up to leave this as it is. Then, Arena doesn't understand why Tsukasa felt pity for Suma, but Tsukasa doesn't think that's what happened because he doesn't see himself as capable of controlling Suma and thinks it would be dangerous to have him near him. Meanwhile, Suicide feels completely defeated, but he doesn't see Tsukasa as unreachable, so he plans to defeat him the next time they face off. The days go by, and now Central soldiers begin to lose their Shakojekis as they face the first-year students who fight to defend their Arises, thinking about everything Suma did for them, and even Shukasa recognizes that this generation is peculiar, but he thinks that Suma is the center of them. Due to this, Azami decides to go to Polar Star and take Arena, but all the members protect her and Satoshi asks her to leave as they are celebrating, then Fumino intervenes and reveals that Izami was also a Polar Star's resident in his academy days. Everyone is surprised to find out that Izami even became the first seat of the Elite Ten of his generation, but now he is not welcome anymore at Polar Star, so he leaves. Suma chases him since he doesn't understand how he can go against Polar Star Dormitory that saw him grow up, and Izami says that the cuisine he is chasing is no longer in Polar Star since the cuisine he aspires to is Joachiro's a cuisine that was unpredictable but meticulous. Suma is surprised that his father is his role model, so he tells Izami that he is the son of Joachiro, the person he admires so much, and Arena also hears this, who is even more surprised since she also has as a role model Suma's dad. Azami is glad to know this and tells Suma that this is the work of fate, he will be able to show the fruits of his utopia to Joachiro's son. The next day, Tsukasa announces that the students will take an advanced exam and this time they will not expel students since the practices will be easy if they master the techniques they taught in class, but those who do not agree with Central's teachings will be disadvantaged to get rid of them. The members of Polar Star begin to lament because they know that they will be disapproved anyway. After that, Arena sneaks into Suma's room with the excuse that she doesn't want to hear complaints about her voting on the match against Tsukasa. But Suma tells her that he has no problem with her verdict, so Arena asks him to listen to her for a while. Since she was a little girl, she has been forced to try countless dishes and she thought it was normal because she had the god tongue, so she did not feel emotion for the verdict because some dishes were terrible, but one day, Joachira was in her mansion cooking for her grandfather and seeing that Arena was starving, he invited her to eat. It was at that moment when Arena felt the excitement of eating something, so she became very attached to Suma's father. But a few months later, she began to receive her father's education, and because of all this, she does not know what food means. Suma cannot sit idly by hearing this, so he begins to prepare a dish that will make her remember the seasoning of the chef that she admires so much in Arena. Seeing the passion that Suma has in the kitchen, becomes a little demotivated since she was like that as a child, but now she doesn't feel the same way about food, although Suma doesn't want her to be discouraged since this will be the moment in which he will make her retract her words when they first met. Suma shows her an egg that was fried whole and when opened the yolk melts, so everyone is surprised since they don't know how he could do that, and the girls panic since they saw Suma buy cheap eggs and Arena has always tasted high quality ingredients, but even so, Arena tries Suma's dish and is surprised because even though she knows they are low quality eggs, he manages to achieve very strong and refined flavors, so she asks him how he did it. Suma shows that they are frozen eggs and this method has a side effect, which is that it increases the flavor of the yolk, so if he had used a strongly flavored egg, it wouldn't have overwhelmed the dish, but with these weakly flavored eggs, he managed to create this unique dish. Arena asks how he comes up with such crazy ideas, since it's impossible for her to consider using eggs that aren't the best of the best, so Suma states his reason and reminds Arena that Joichiro said exactly that himself. He also sought to create new dishes in which he himself did not know how it would end, demonstrating his freedom for which Arena remembers what motivated her to be a chef in the beginning and manages to free herself from her father's teachings. Then Suma asks for her opinion on his dish, but Arena ignores him and leaves his room, leaving him wondering and she tells all the members of Polar Star to get up early the next day, as she will make an announcement. The next day, Arena sees that they still look sad, so she tells them that if they don't think they can overcome this situation, it's best that they leave the academy since it won't be an easy time. Everyone feels worse with these words, but everything changes when Arena says that she recognizes everyone's dishes because they show her how free they are and she wants them to continue in school, so they can develop their cuisine. So she wants them to accompany her to defeat her father and pass all the exams with her. Hizako informs everyone that the advancement exam is held in Hokkaido, and they are going to go around the entire prefecture as they pass the tests. Then Arena says that she will be her teacher, and will teach them everything they need to know about Hokkaido, so they can adapt to any situation since it is obvious that they will not make things easy for them. Arena is very strict, so everyone learns well in seeing that the twins Aldini and Akumen are also there, she calls them to join her seminar. Stuma sees that she is trying too hard, but for her, this is nothing, since she wants everyone to approve even Suma, which is a big surprise to him, since until recently she hated him and longed for the day when he will be expelled. 
but this change she does not want anyone from Polar Star to be expelled. Days later, they go to Hokkaido and the rules are very similar to those of the camp. If you pass, you go to the next stage. If you fail, they send you back to the school and expel you. But Central are not subtle at all and gather all the rebels into one group to expel them together. As their first task, they are sent to cook salmon, which is quite rare since it is not in season, but Central gives them some that look pretty good. Although the rebels are given old salmon which does not have much flavor, so they start with the countdown and the instructor believes that it is impossible for them to prepare a decent dish, since no matter how much they go out looking for salmon, they will not be able to get anything. Stoma remembers that Arena mentioned something useful for this situation, so they take advantage of the fact that they are quick cooks to go out to get another salmon and present the most delicious dish in the room. The instructor believes that they are talking nonsense things because the school bought all the salmon in the area so she starts to try the dishes and approving all the students who follow the techniques that Central teaches them, as if they were robots, but shortly before the end of time, Suma and the others arrive with the salmon, and it is not just any salmon, it is a very rare and exquisite salmon and above all a very good quality. The instructor asks them how they got it, and they explain that this salmon is special since it circulates in summer, and a store in Hokkaido used cutting-edge techniques to freeze them, so they managed to get it at the best possible time. In any case, they have little time so the instructor thinks they will not be able to finish a good dish. But she is wrong again because even though it is the first time they work together, their speed is impressive so they manage to finish the dish and the instructor feels all the impact and lightness of their dish, so she has no choice but to approve them. Luckily. All the rebels manage to approve, so they jump with happiness. But Arena tells them not to relax since it is just the first test, and they have a lot to do, so they will continue having classes until it is time to sleep. Then, they board a luxury train to go to the other stop of the second exam, in the middle of the night. One by one, they go to Arena's personal room, to invite her to see the stars, recommend massages, or give her hot tea, and Suma doesn't is the exception. So she asks him why they do that, and he explains that they want to thank her for her effort. Arena is a little embarrassed since this is the first time this has happened. Also, she realizes that now it doesn't bother her so much sit next to Suma while they look at the stars through the window eating snacks. The next day, the Elite 10 that are part of Central go to Hokkaido just in case it is necessary to take drastic measures to eliminate the rebels and the Exolates also go. Meanwhile, Suma and the others are sent to make a dish with noodles. Although the tricky thing about this test is that the ingredients are limited and they leave the rebels for last. So the noodles run out and they can't go out to buy since there is a snowstorm that has them locked up in the hotel. The instructor thinks this is enough to disapprove all the rebels but is surprised to hear that everyone is working like they have noodles on hand. It turns out that Suma and the others use the potato to make noodles because the potato is very versatile and can be used in many aspects of the dish. Later, when the instructor trying their dishes, he has to approve them. Then Yuki runs to Arena to thank her for her teachings since thanks to her, they manage to pass, so the instructor believes that they are only worth having Arena on their side, but she contradicts him, since all she did was teach them the properties of the potato, and they did the whole creation process. So the instructor is surprised to see that the rebels are so united to Arena's command. At night, they celebrate they go out to town and divide into groups to walk around, so Arena is surprised at how beautiful the town of Sapporo is, even though she has gone several times, she had never gone out for a walk. So Akubi tells her that she understands her, since she also had a lot of pressure from her family although she realizes that she is putting herself on the same level of Arena, so she runs out of embarrassment. Megumi is glad that she talks to Akumi again, and Arena feels bad since Akumi treats her very well, even though Arena kicked her off her side after she lost to Shakugeki. Later, when they get on the train, Hizako calls Arena to tell her an alarm that her train left half an hour ago, but Arena, Megumi, Takumi, and Suma are getting on theirs as normal, so they wonder what's going on. So suddenly, Rindo explains that this is the final test for the Rebels, facing the Elite 10, and for this reason, they have been separated into different trains. The next day, Megumi can't sleep because of the stress of having to face the Elites and Suma couldn't sleep either, but because of the excitement, so they go to Rindo and ask who will be her opponent, and Suma is shocked to see that his opponent will be Hayama, a new member of the Elite 10. Suma is speechless because Hayama is now the ninth seat of the Elite 10, provisionally, and not only that, he is also part of Central. Suddenly, the four are separated and are taken to other rooms to receive different tests. Suma stays with Hayama and asks him what happened to Xiaomi's RS. He answers that it disappeared since he dedicated himself to ascending instead of wasting time defending that laboratory. Then he challenges Suma and he accepts without hesitation. At that moment, Jin arrives at the place. He will be the person who will verify the legitimacy of the duel because he is neutral and says that the subject will be bare meat. The duel will be in three days, so Hayama smiles and goes to experiment with recipes. However, Suma is still worried about the situation of his friends and has many questions what happened to Aizen. He was the ninth place of the elite and what happened to Xiaomi. But Jin tells him not to worry about other people because when he starts experimenting, he will understand why this duel will be so difficult. 
Ben soon goes to the kitchen and prepares the bear meat with salt, but when he tastes it, he feels a stench that floods him, so he tries other species and he realizes that he is in Hayama's territory again. After a while he does not succeed, he needs other species, and when he goes out to look for them, he is surprised, since Kuba was there and gives him the species that he is looking for. So Suma asks him what he is planning and Kuba says that he only wants to help him because he wants Sum to challenge Hayama to steal his elite position, then he can defeat Suma and become an elite again. Leaving intentions aside, he genuinely wants to help him. So they begin to experiment and manages to eliminate the bad smell of the bear with a stew, but Hayama will prepare a dish that only he can do, so he must do the same. Then he realizes that the smell is not a problem by itself since many ingredients take advantage of this as a source to enhance the flavor, but he does not know much about bears, so he decides to go out into the woods to understand the bear meat. Later, they go out the hunter from the area, but they can't find any bears since it noticed the hunter. But while they rest, Suma sees a tree that brings him an idea to treat bear meat. The schizandra is a berry that grows in the area and by mixing it with sap, it makes the bear meat have an elegant fragrance and a strong flavor with a lot of juice resulting in an exquisite meat. So Suma thinks he has a chance if continues down this path, but one of Kuba's men arrives to warn him about what Hayama is doing. He doesn't get to speak when Hayama walks in to brag about his experiments with his dish. It turns out that he used a combination of Cajun species that gives the bear an aroma that takes even more advantage of the bear's scents than Suma did. Furthermore, he manages to discover what Suma was up to just by smelling his hands, so he warns Suma that he will not be able to defeat him with his tricks, and that this will end as an inevitable third defeat, and even worse defeat than before. Suma notices that Hayama doesn't seem very happy, even though he is an elite 10 and part of Central. Hayama says that he did it for Xiaomi, but he doesn't want to talk anymore so he leaves. After that, Suma goes to take a bath and meets Jin. He explains that Hayama initially opposed Central, but one day, the sponsors of Xiaomi's laboratory canceled their contracts due to Azami's pressure. So Hayama went to confront him and seeing that they would not leave him alone, he gave in to Azami on the condition that Xiaomi can continue researching with the laboratory that he would be given for being one of the Elite Ten. Then, Hayama defeated Central soldiers in a battle royale and earned his provisional ninth place in the Elite Ten. After that, Suma runs to find Hayama, he does not accept that Hayama gave up on the laboratory so easily, so Suma tells him that he would never lose against someone who looks so pitiful, but this only makes Hayama upset and decide to brutally beat him. The next day, all the rebels prepare to face the members of the Elite Ten. In the room where the match between Suma and Hayama will take place, Jin introduces the judges, who will be a couple of little girls who work in Alice's company, for which Kuva complains since they are little girls, but they are quite suitable since they are geniuses chosen by Alice's mother and finally, the judge of honor will be Alice's father himself who swears to be a neutral judge that he shows the bear meat that they will use, which is one of the highest quality and both start cooking. Hayama plans to fry the breaded bear meat and it will lock in all the bear's smell, which can go very well or very bad, but he is not the only one, since Suma had the same idea thanks to the advice of Kuga and the hunter. This becomes a tightrope fight, because if one makes a mistake, his dish would be completely ruined, but in this type of fight, Hayama has the advantage due to his great mastery of spices, so everyone is amazed even before he finishes preparing his dish. Suma makes his sauce with bear broth, which is crazy since it would add extra smell. He remembers the autumn tournament and is a little glad that he lost it, since thanks to that, he has been able to reach a higher level in his cuisine. Suma finishes cooking his bear burger and the girls are afraid to try it, as if he fails, the dish will taste horrible, but Alice's father doesn't hold back and takes a big bite, leaving him in awe. The other two also try it and don't understand how it tastes so good, so he explains that he used the meat closest to the bone, which is usually avoided because it is the most smelliest, but he knows that the flavor comes from converting the smell, so he went straight to face the smell without fear and got a unique flavor. Kuma's staff wonder if this will be enough to defeat Hayama, and he just finishes his dish, so Suma waits expectantly. Hayama cooked fried bear just by looking at it, the judges know that it is delicious, and when they try it, they succumb to the taste and cannot think straight. So they come to the conclusion that in a matter of meat, Hayama wins and he thinks that finally he will be able to protect Shiomi at all costs. But the judges still need to taste the meat with the sauce. When trying Hayama's sauce, they can't help but be amazed as it makes a contrast of spicy e and sweet flavors that hit you multiple times and inevitably makes Alice's father bare his chest, since he is the heir to the explosion for being the son of the former director of the academy. Hayama thinks that he already won with this, and that it is impossible for Suma to come back, so he doesn't understand why Suma keeps having eyes that wait for them to taste his dish. So the judges taste the meat with Suma's sauce, and the taste is so exquisite that even the twins are left without when the power of the uncovering is overcome. Another more powerful technique comes the gift, which is basically the uncovering of the people who are close to the Nakiri. Alice's dad wonders how he got to this point by using the bear broth and Suma reveals that he used honey and vinegar to season the dish, 
which is what Hayama did at the Autumn Festival. The judges decide that in a matter of sauce, Suma wins, then they begin to deliberate to who the two prepare the best dish, and the judges are divided, since the twins do not agree between them, and they vote differently. Alice's father is the one who will decide who is the winner, so he says the winner will be the one who has put his tenacity into his dish and asks Suma if he used a special honey. Suma is surprised that he noticed and confesses that he used cork oak honey, since honey can overload the dish, so he looked for a specific honey, which shows all the effort he put into not forgetting the defects of the honey and conceive this miracle. The twins wonder how he got to the cork oak honey and Kuba tells them that Suma spent the whole day collecting ingredients on the mountain with his subordinates, so he could experiment countless times until he came up with the answer that convinced him. Then, Hayama believes that it is impossible for his dish to be surpassed, but Jin asks him if he seriously believes that it is true, because Jin does not see a real motivation in Hayama's dish since he abandoned everything that motivated him to cook, so he asks Suma what motivated him and Suma gets upset because it is obvious that it was him. Suma puts so much effort because he wanted Hayama to try his dish and recognize how delicious it is. Hayama understands that he was defeated because he lost his motivation to cook. Suddenly, Xiaomi arrives and slaps Hayama and says that he is still too young to worry and sacrifice himself for the laboratory. What she wants is for him is to have fun with people his age, so Hayama feels that he has been saved by Suma. Later in his room, Suma invites Hayama and Xiaomi to live in Polar Star, and at that moment, Irina runs up and asks Suma how it went, and he scoffs because she is so worried that she messed up running. Suddenly, Azami's henchman arrives and informs Hayama that he has been expelled from the academy, and he is not the only one. Most of Suma's rebel friends have lost to the Elite Ten. Rindo appears and tells them that Takumi and Megumi confronted her, so Irina imagines the worst and runs to see them, but they are both still in shock from what happened. It turns out that the exam that she gave them was to prepare something that she thought was delicious and they passed it without problems. So out of all the rebels, only the four of them remain, Takumi, Megumi, Irina, and Suma. Then, Takumi gets upset, but Suma doesn't know whether to feel bad since they lost in fair duels, so Suma comes up with an idea to get his friends back, which is to beat four of the Elite Ten, and together with Arena, it would be five in the council, and they would be in the majority since Hayama was expelled, so they could annul the expulsion of their friends. Megumi panics at this crazy plan, and Takumi also thinks it will be very difficult, but Suma tries anyway and asks Rindo for a Shakajeki in exchange for her position. She laughs and tells him that she can't do that. Then Irina swallows her pride and decides to ask her father to forgive her friends and Rindo says that he is at the helipad, so Irina and the others go running to see him and she begs him. But Azami ignores her as he has more important things to do. Then Suma says that the quickest way to prove if he's right is to bet the elite ranks against them. But Azami doesn't see what he can win, so he ignores him. Suddenly, Joichiro appears to tell him not to be boring and to listen to his son. Azemi repeats that he's not interested, so Joichiro bets himself, tells him that he will abandon all his ideals to support him. So Azami decides to accept this challenge, since what he wants most is to have the best chef he knows in his troops. It's decided they will have a team Shakageki, Azami's crew versus Joichiro's crew. After this, everyone is motivated, but Joichiro says that they must train since they won't be able to defeat the Elite Ten in their current state, so they must prepare. On the train, Jin tells them that he was in charge of bringing Joichiro at the exact moment, since they have been working together with the former director of the academy in order to counteract Azami's power. They explain the rules of the team Shakacheki to them. There is a big difference since they can collaborate, so with good teamwork, they could beat the Elite Ten. They will start having fake competitions, but Jin's methodologies and Joichiro are very different, since one is very serious and the other is very relaxed. So they fight with each other and decide to fix it with Shakageki. For this, they call Arena to accompany them in training, and they can complete two teams of three people. So the director acts as a mediator and divides the teams of Joichiro and Jin. Megumi and Takumi will be Jin's helpers, while Suma and Arena will help Joichiro. But the director tells them that they can't talk, so Megumi gets nervous because she doesn't know what to do, although Takumi doesn't have this problem, since he knows what Jin needs, then Megumi realizes that she has to anticipate what the chef is preparing and act accordingly so she can start being useful. On the other hand, Suma and Joichiro start to fight since Joichiro makes the recipes in his own way, so the director calls them to attention because they are talking while fighting. After calming down, Suma and Arena wonder why Joichiro makes the recipe so different, but he's not the only one since Jin also deviates from the original recipe, and due to this, they realize that they are being tested to adapt to a complicated situation. Azami informs the Elites about the Team Shakajeki that is coming, and they all agree to get rid of the Resistance once and for all, especially Aizen who wants to take revenge on Suma, because their teammates do not stop bothering him that he lost his Shakajeki against a first-year boy, but Azami decides to use a Lufal to get a bit of an advantage. 
Meanwhile, on the train, Takumi thinks that he is not the same since he lost at the Autumn Festival and went to internships because he set out to deconstruct the kitchen he had created since he was a child. So he goes further and manages to prepare something to improve Jin's dish. So Suma is turned on by seeing Takumi's determination and gets to work. Irina is the one who begins to have problems since she doesn't know what to do. But she remembers the days she spent in the Polar Star residence, in which she was taught that ideas that at first glance do not seem to make sense can result in exquisite dishes. So she also begins to experiment and both teams finish their dishes. This time, the judges will be themselves, so they taste their dishes, and they are both wonderful. But to everyone's surprise, both teams see each other as losers since they see the efforts that the others made to improve the dish and start to stand out their qualities, which was the objective of this training session. Because they must know the skills of the others so well that they could work as a team, and the match ended in a draw. Suma and the others start to laugh about Arena since she finally smiled when she was cooking and even the former director tells her that he likes seeing her cook with such passion. But she thinks it's just because she was forced, since she could never have a relationship like Suma with his father. Although her grandfather believes that it is possible, and she only has to be selfish, sometimes. And perhaps she should ask her father. The next day, the two teams meet and reach an agreement on the conditions of the match. There will be no limits of participants, so they can gather all the allies they want, and the winners will have the elite positions of the academy. Gin thinks that Nazami seems too calm, even though he is putting his empire at risk, but he cares more about the possibility of having Joichiro and his troops. But he gives them a surprise, ordering Arena to join his team because she is part of the Elite Ten, so he must fight for them. But to everyone's surprise, Arena gathers her courage and says that she will give up her seat in the Elite Ten and fight only as Arena Nakiri. Azami accepts but puts one last condition. If they lose, Arena will do everything her father says without protesting and she will be part of her central all her life, just like Joichiro. After that, Arena ends up very motivated thanks to saying no to her father for the first time. So she starts telling the others to serve her since she will be the best in the tournament and the others jokingly say that she looks like a queen and Suma tries to seize her that position for which they begin to fight since he wants to be the top one. Gin asks the director if he did the group practices with those intentions and he says that it was not guaranteed. But he hoped that Arena would learn something about the relationship between Suma and his father, which was a success, so now everyone put their lives in Arena's hand, showing their trust in her. Later, Suma and the others are interested in the story of when Joichiro won a team Shakajeki against 50 people at once, so Joichiro and Jin tells them what happened. It turns out that even Jin admits that Joichiro was the best cook of his generation since he won more than 100 Shakajekis against him. And he kept winning contests, he also saw to get rid of household chores with Shaka Jekis, and those times, Azami was with them. Jin and Azami were friends with Joichiro, since he marked a path with his cuisine, and he always made his way to new dishes. But little by little, he got tired since the people did not stop asking him for more and more, so he earned that evil habit of creating emetic dishes. One day, he was invited to the Blue Contest, which is the biggest contest a chef under 25 can aspire to. At school, some student didn't believe that someone so young and with no known family name would qualify for the blue, so they challenged him to a shock of Jackie and Joichiro, decided to face the 50 by himself. As was obvious, he beat them all, but this time he demotivated his detractor since he did not understand how difficult it is for him to have to make his way to new dishes. After that, Joichiro earned the nickname, The Demon. After that, the golden age of the Polar Star residence began and Joichiro continued to sweep the tournament, but little by little it was seen that Joichiro was losing motivation. And as time progressed, the expectations they had of him only increased. So Joichiro only thought of moving forward to meet these expectations, but on the day of the blue tournament, Joichiro ran away and everyone goes looking for him. As Jin searches for him, he realizes that Joichiro made those disgusting dishes to get rid of his burnout. But now he has no time and can only think about creating new fascinating dishes. Fortunately, Jin finds him in the arena where the two of them faced each other in the autumn selection. Joichiro's eyes looked lifeless as he remembered the good old days of creating new dishes. But now he doesn't know what to do to create new flavors anymore. Jin begins to cry and tells him that he is not a demon, but a sensitive person like everyone else and apologizes for not being by his side as promised. The principal hears what's going on since he saw it coming for a long time, so he tells Joichiro to go abroad and free himself from cooking for a while, so Joichiro left the academy to travel. Years later, Joichiro calls Jin on the phone and tells him that he has a son and a small restaurant. He had finally healed and returned to cooking. At the end of the story, Suma had half fallen asleep, but he is glad that his father has not done anything to make Azami hold a grudge against him. So Joichiro challenges Suma to another duel, and is surprised that his son is still steadfast afterward of 490 losses for which he wonders what Suma would have done his situation. Although he knows the answer, Suma never gives up, and Jin thanks him since he was probably the one who saved Joichiro from that storm. The day of the competition arrives and all the expelled students go to cheer on their friends, 
although they are the ones who need encouragement, but Alice drags them anyway since they are risking everything to save them. When they enter the arena, they realize that all the students are central supporters so the atmosphere is quite toxic. Alice wonders if Suma managed to get formidable allies for this fight. At that moment, Suma's team enters accompanied by the former elites, Satoshi, Kuga, and Tosu, and not only them, Sumeru is also on their side. Yuka jumps to Satoshi in tears as she thanks him for taking a risk for them, although he says that he doesn't mind being expelled because he already has everything arranged for him and the Polar Stars members to go live on a farm and they can live happily there if they lose to Shakageki. After that, the expelled students are taken to his cell since they are rebellious. Then it is decided who will be the first to face each other. The first Shakageki of three will be between Tosuk, the old third elite, against Shoko, the new fifth elite, Satoshi, the former seventh elite, against Julia, the new eighth elite, and Suma against Nin, the sixth elite, who is quite cold. She has been raised since she was a child to follow the parameters of ancient Japanese culture, so she specializes in soba and is considered a thoroughbred of the culinary world. She isn't afraid to challenge herself in other culinary fields, so she asks Suma to be the one to draw the theme. But to his bad luck, he pulls out a piece of paper that says soba as the theme, so everyone is amazed at Suma's bad luck. Everyone is looking for their ingredients and Suma stays an extra time to think about how to beat her. But Nain advances her soba, which demonstrates her great technique since in this specific ingredient, a lot of practice is required to create a quality soba. Then, everyone wonders what Suma will do to beat Nain, and he remembers the conversation he had with his father. All of the Elite Ten are specialists in something, so he may not be able to beat them, but he has something that no one else has which is that he has cooked in a diner. So Suma starts using a pasta machine and everyone laughs as Suma, because he is trying to beat the best by making soba like this. Although in the eyes of Arena and Meme, it makes sense because there are sayings that says, a machine is better than a bad cook, so he manages to stay close to Meme with this method. Satoshi encourages Suma, and Julio gets annoyed with him, since he feels that Satoshi is not concentrating, so Julio shows off all his techniques, but Satoshi doesn't even know who he is then. Julio tells him that he will make him remember when he defeats him. It turns out that Julio's specialty is Italian cuisine, and he is skilled at eel, and there is also a lot of practice time in it, even more than in soba, so Satoshi will have to demonstrate all his skills. Julio begins to speak ill of Satoshi because he comes from a noble family of chefs and it annoys him that Satoshi decided to go with those of the residents that he considers to be lower class inferiors, but this annoys Satoshi since he can't stand it when his friends are insulted. Suddenly, Satoshi shows the true capacity of his talent, cutting the eel in a second, and sets out to destroy Julio for speaking ill of his dear friends. It turns out that his technique to cut the eel through the stomach is incredibly difficult since its shape makes it difficult, but for Arena, it is not so strange since Satoshi's family is the second largest family in Japanese cuisine along with means and they are known since they were children, since Satoshi went to train in her house when he was a kid, but she doesn't like to remember those moments. The judges arrive and everyone is surprised since they are from the World Gourmet Organization itself. The ones in charge of giving the Michelin stars, but one of them mocks Suma because his restaurant doesn't have any. So Suma wonders if they are actually qualified and all the students begins to boo him for questioning a WGO member. So the judge silences them and says that they will be impartial since they will only judge the quality of the dish they present today. Julio is happy to hear that since he finished his dish and he impresses the judges since the eel and tomato combine perfectly so they feel how it strengthens them and then traps them. But Satoshi is not far behind and takes out his secret ingredients but they are not just any ingredient. These were manufactured in Polar Star. A few months ago, he was observing the experiments that the members of Polar Star were doing and stole them to bring them to the competition and use them in his dish and show everyone the true value of his food. Satoshi prepares a cheese risotto with eel and broth with the ingredients of the residents which seems an insult to Julio, since he believes that by limiting himself so much, he will not be able to unite the flavors. But the judges are amazed by all the flavor of the eel since Satoshi used smoked garlic chips that Ibusaki and the boys made to give this impressive flavor to the eel, and by the way it serves as an accompaniment. Also, the way in which he cut the eel is the secret that everything is so united. Julio is still indignant, so Satoshi serves him the dish, so he will understand why he used his friend's ingredients and tells him that if he likes this dish, he has to apologize to his friends. Julio tries the dish and is amazed and still wrapped in the taste of Satoshi's eel. He says sorry. Then, Irina confirms a rumor she heard. Satoshi does not cook conventional Japanese food, but cooks his own style of Japanese food. The judge tries the ingredients that Satoshi used and understands why Satoshi is fighting against Central to defend his friends and the members of Polar Star, so she promises them that they will fairly value the encounters. Satoshi wins his match. After that, Nain is glad that Satoshi wins, because in the next round she plans to defeat him, but Satoshi doesn't see why she is like this with him. Before, Nain was ranked higher than him in the Elite 10, 
Although Mame believes that this is only because he wanted it that way, since they were children, he has always had a lot of talent and mastered in hours what took days or years for her. So she wants to make it clear that she's a better student than him. But Satoshi tells her it can't be, because Suma will defeat her first. Nin gets upset when she hears this and sees that Suma puts the soba to fry, which is a sin for her, then she gets even more upset since that person is the one that Satoshi placed his trust in. Alice is confused because the yakisoba instant noodles are always fried, but this is a different case because they are not soba noodles, so they fear that it will lose all its flavor. Then Nain finishes her dish and presents a dish of beautiful soba that shines just by looking at it. Satoshi recognizes that this is the fruit of all her efforts. Since she was a child, she has always dedicated herself to studying and practicing the traditions that she was so passionate about. The judges taste the dish and find it delicious, plus the tempura accompaniment is crunchy. With just the right texture and flavor, no ingredient stands out more than another and the judges finish it in an instant without realizing it. They ask for another dish to judge it again. But it disappears again, then they realize that the combination that Neem made is like a jump in time, which absorbs you with pleasure to such an extent that you don't realize how quickly you finish the dish. This seems definite, so Nain is on the lookout for Satoshi to take back his word, but Suma introduces his soba dish that doesn't look like soba. But what everyone is concerned about is the taste, since frying such a delicate noodle wouldn't be weird because it will become tasteless. To everyone surprised, as a lot of flavors and the golden parts even add texture when eating, so Mean realizes that he used the most resistant flour to make the soba without losing its aroma and flavor. That name does not understand how he came to fry it before other traditional soba dishes, and Suma explains that from the beginning he wanted to make packaged yakisoba, so he gives them seasonings and explains that since he was a child he has been interested in instant noodles because they offer a great variety in the same container. So he mixed all the ingredients in the wok and this results in instant noodles that change constantly depending on what seasonings you use to eat it, so it's a festival of flavors. The judges begin to deliberate and before saying the winner, they ask Nien to try her own soba since they want to argue before saying the verdict. So Nien realizes that the aroma is different from the one she always prepares although she didn't make any mistakes but Suma's dish retains all the qualities of soba. Alice realizes that it is due to the temperature since the aroma of soba is easily modified by the environment and for this reason, these winter conditions that have the arena affected Nien soba a lot, but on the other hand, Suma fried everything and enhanced the flavor of his soba so that it would not be affected by this. Neem thinks it's a coincidence, but Satoshi tells her that it's not true since Suma thought of everything from the beginning, so Neem wonders how it's possible since having to think about what to prepare in the middle of a shaka jackie already, it's complicated enough for you to worry about other factors, but Suma tells him that it's normal for him since he always has to be focused on making the dish perfect for his customers in the restaurant. Suma ends up being the winner of the match. Finally, Tasu manages to crush Shoko on their match, and Joichiro's team gets 3-0 in the team Shokokaki. The Elite 10 are angry but think it would be better to beat the Resistance while they are happy. But one who is not so happy is Azami since they have been defeated overwhelmingly in the first round, but Suma cannot relax much since now the hard part begins, although this is no reason not to celebrate with the others his first step towards victory. Arena tries to say a few words to congratulate him, although she is very embarrassed and blushing, but he leaves before she can say anything and Suma meets Tsukasa in the bathroom. He tells Suma that he can't beat him with that dish, but Suma is not intimidated and says that he will face him in the next round. The Resistance begin to plan who will cook in the next round and Hizako explains that it is useless to sacrifice pieces since the most skilled can be left and win by themselves. So they have to go with everything from the beginning since it is most likely that now they will send to the top places of the elite to recover the advantage that the rebels gain. Meanwhile on the elite side, Izan wants to go out as he can to get revenge on Suma, but the others prefer to wait for Tsukasa to talk about it. This time the matches will be between Sumeru against Somei, the current fourth elite, Rindo's Tosuke and Kubev's Tsukasa, and even though Kuba came up with a strange topic to cook, he starts cooking immediately, so Suma stares at him because he recognizes his will to win since he saw Kuba challenge Tsukasa earlier. Tsukasa told him that he will talk about it with the other elites, then Kuba got nervous and Suma tried to calm him down since they are counting on it. On the other hand, Rindo and Tosuke have red chili as their theme, but Rindo brings out a live alligator as an ingredient, so everyone is surprised since she did the whole process to cook it in the blink of an eye, which shows her great skill with knives and extensive knowledge of exotic ingredients. She is surprised that Tosuke is competing since he is a pacifist, so she asks him why he is helping Suma, and Tosuke tells her that it was by his will. It turns out that he is the patriarch of Raymond restaurants, and a month ago, Suma and Megumi went to see him to ask him for help, but they got big surprise since he doesn't like to compete, and he only entered at the academy because he heard that it was the best cooking school in Japan, 
although the only thing he found was endless challenges that he ended up accepting and for this reason he reached the position of third elite without realizing it, but the only thing that matters to him is to please his client, which is why he refuses to help Suma. Suma asked him to reconsider because if he manages to get first place in the Elite 10, he can help him improve his Raymond. but this seems like trash to Tosuk, so Suma told him that he can show him a better Raymond than him. Tosuk got angry and agreed to go to the kitchen, but to discipline him, he defeated him countless times, but Suma didn't get tired of losing one after another, so Tosuk wondered what drives him and Suma said that he doesn't want to lose his freedom in his dish, and that is what will happen if Central remains in power, so he will not allow it to be taken from him, even though he fainted from the exhaustion of so many duels. Tosuk conceded defeat because he couldn't make Suma give up. In the present, Tosuk starts making his ramen with lots of red chili and Rindo does the same, to which Tosuk laughs as he predicted this, and thus planned a ramen that won't fall short of Rindo's eccentric dishes. This match has become a battle of giants. On the other hand, Tsukasa uses various types of green tea to prepare his dish, demonstrating his great ability to converse with the ingredients and to be able to get the most out of it. But that's not the only thing, since he also takes out a rare grater that looks like a sword, which helps you cook at incredible speed. Meanwhile, Cuba is concentrating on his walk, so Tsukasa tells him that he should get out of his comfort zone of Chinese food since he won't be able to beat him that way, but Subaru interrupts them and passes Cuba a smoked soy sauce for Cuba to eat to start using green tea in his saucer, making it clear that this will be a 2 of one matchup taking advantage of Subaru's perfect follow-up. Isn't a surprise since Kuga wanted to beat him in a 1 vs 1, but he says that he is mature enough to put winning above his whims, that he will be the one to end Tsukasa's undefeated period in this duel. On the other hand, in Subaru's duel, he had tuna as the theme ingredient, but to his bad luck, he was up against the best sushi player in the entire academy, so he had worse luck than Suma, although he doesn't see it that way since his perfect tracking allows him to be Suma himself. And it does not stop there, since he has evolved into a new category of tracking, in which he does it in real time, imitating all of Sumi's techniques for which he gives Super of his sword so he can do it well. This new technique is very tiring because following several people at the same time is very exhausting, but he gave everything to be ready and be able to defeat any of the Elite Ten in their battles, so he is more than prepared to endure intense battles against these monsters. Both present their sushi plates, but the difference is that Subaru made an extra sushi which would make a difference. Suddenly, Rindo and Tosu finish their dishes as well, so the judges decide to rate all four dishes at the same time, which would be crazy if they weren't members of the WGO, and they are more than capable of doing it. They start with Subaru and Tosu's sushi and ramen, and are amazed at the flavor bombs in front of them as Subaru also used the smoked soy beans he made for Cuba as a secret weapon in his latest sushi, impressing the judges. On the other hand, Tosu's African ramen amazes them with the perfect combination of spiciness, so that it becomes pure flavor, although they end up losing 3-0 against Somi and Rindo anyway. It turns out that in the case of Sumeru, the sushi is smaller than usual, so his sushi lasted less in the mouth than Sumi's, having less flavor consequently, and on Tosuk's side, he simply lost in his power battle against Rindo since her dish with alligator got more flavor out of the chili peppers than Tosuk's ramen. So Cuba tells everyone not to get discouraged because they still need to evaluate his dish, so all is not lost. Cuba wants to give it his all because when he was in his first year, he always won his shakajeki no matter how old they were, but when he faced Tsukasa for the first time, he was humiliated and lost a lot of confidence. But this wasn't the worst, because when he went to ask for his rematch, Tsukasa didn't even know who he was, so now he wants his name to be engraved in his memory when he loses. Then he presents his sweet and sour pork with green tea, which the judges love as it combines Chinese cuisine technique with French cuisine, creating a whole new flavor that completely surpasses traditional sweet and sour pork. Kuba looks victorious after so many compliments, but Tsukasa presents his green tea of four types, which shocks the judges at the first bite, so Tsukasa has to feed them himself, so they can try the dish with the help of the sauce, which is the secret that four types of tea could be combined in this masterpiece. Unfortunately for Kuga, Tsukasa wins the battle. The members of Central celebrate as the Resistance sent their Stroma's competitors and they all lost, but it was not in vain as Tsukasa and Rindo are tired after these tough battles. It turns out that this was Arena's plan from the beginning. If they lost by beating, the Elite could compete again immediately. But if the Resistance gave them a tough fight, they would leave them tired, so it would be easier to beat them if they are forced to cook in the next Shakajeki. Basically, Kuka Subaru and Tosub accomplished their goal, and the Rebels still have a chance to win. After that, Tsukasa tells Suma that if he wants to compete against him again, he will probably have to wait for another two days, but Suma plans to compete the next day, since his task is to eliminate as many as possible then Arena and Satoshi will take care of the rest. The day comes and Takumi is in concentration mode, although not everyone is like him since Megumi performs rituals to calm down with the help of Hizako and Suma, 
plays cards with the others. Suddenly, Momo arrives, which means that the match is about to start, and she starts calling everyone with nicknames, which is pretty cute, although Satoshi tells them that she only does this with people she sees as inferior, so she doesn't see them as a threat. They enter to the arena, and Aizen is quite upset since he wanted to go against Suma, but Suma will face Soma. Aizen will have his duel against Takumi, as revenge for the Autumn Festival, and lastly, Megumi will face off against Momo. Megumi is determined to win. Hermina trusts them, and the three smiles at her. So they start to cook. If the resistance manages to beat them all, only the last two elites who are still resting will remain. While collecting ingredients, Momo proves to be quite intimidating as she orders Izan around without him being able to refuse and when she talks to Megumi, she shudders as she remembers what Satoshi told her, but she remembers all the training she had in the train with Shinomiya and leaves determined to win. Everyone is surprised that Megumi has trained with Shinomiya, but he is the best for it since being a Legu magician. He will be able to help Megumi become stronger in what she specializes in. It turns out that after finishing the training of teamwork, each one parted with a teacher, and Megumi got Shinomiya. But at first, she was super nervous since it reminded her of the camp, when he almost expelled her. So she makes countless mistakes as if she was a novice. This frustrates Shinomiya, but he changes the focus a bit and tells her that she has to have guts to cook. So Megumi remembers her childhood when she read a manga, and the coach motivates her student in this way. So she starts calling him coach, and she begins to work properly. So they create a duet specializing in legumes. Returning to the present, the three get together and talk about what they are going to cook to help each other. So they begin to work as a team as if they were professional chefs with years of experience together, which allows them to do more laborious jobs and creates a chance to beat the elites. Suddenly, Momo's pot gives off a sweet aroma that cures all impurities, so she starts plating her dessert at top speed, resulting in a basket of roses. But every single rose sits atop a pie crust. The roses are sweets made with apples. When trying it, they fall in love with her dish and its aroma, since Momo used some roses to impregnate this aroma to the apples. But is something very complicated since, if you cook the roses with the apple, it would lose its flavor. So she only soaked in what she had already boiled before, because this is the work of a queen who only immerses herself in roses, which resulted in this dish that gives the impression that she enchanted the apples to steal the hearts of the judges. They wonder if there will be something better today, and Megumi arrives with a dorayaki, which impresses everyone since it is very simple and loses its presentation and aroma at first. But the important thing is the flavor, so they begin to taste it, and they are surprised at how smooth and delicious it is. But this would not be possible if it weren't for the fact that the dough was made in a special way, since Megumi used a French technique that allows her to mix two opposite ingredients like butter and apple. It turns out that Shinomiya taught her this technique even though he didn't know if she could master it in such a short time, but Megumi never gave up and kept trying until she reached this point. Even so, the dorayaki is inferior in taste compared to Momo's dish, but they notice that Megumin's eyes are still burning, so they believe that there is still something hidden, and upon taking another taste, they discover a flavor that leaves them speechless, so Momo wonders what trick she used. It turns out that in the center, Megumi used an apple ginger confiture that stands out when it is contrasting with the apple pieces and the dough since it occurred to her that she could use this double flavor when she heard that Takumi would use ginger and ends up being a secret hit of Megumi. Unfortunately, Momo ends up winning 2 to 1 because two of the judges thought that so much sweet made the dish a little unbalanced, but one of them rewarded Megumi for going for a different angle when creating the dorayaki. Megumi apologizes to everyone, but they are not upset with her, so Megumi breaks down crying because she wanted to win so much. But Momo stops believing that Megumi is cute, which means that she does not see her as someone inferior anymore. Meanwhile, Shinomiya leaves a message for Megumi with Jin. She is welcome to his restaurant if she wants to continue learning. On the other hand, Takumi is preparing shigirini, which is a sweet dish. But the surprise is that he will put it all on a pizza, so Aizen plans to destroy Takumi's pride again like in the Autumn Festival. Izan prepares his roast beef with impeccable technique, but the Resistance have a hard time recognizing it because they don't like Aizen. He was the one who wanted to destroy the Polar Star Dormitory, although Takumi feels nothing more than the desire to defeat him. Izan always tries to unbalance his rivals with provocations, so when he sees Takumi put the pizza in the oven, he tells him that this means a checkmate, since he will use artichokes, which have a component that enhances sweetness. So his dish that highlights its light sweetness will end up extra sweet, which will result in a disaster and he can't do anything to avoid it, since it will finish before him, so Aizen tells Takumi that if he were Suma, he can overcome this situation just like he did in the Autumn Tournament, but he is not that skilled. Those of the Resistance ask from their cell that justice be done for doing this type of dirty tricks, but the judges do not see the problem since everything was planned within the time of the Shakakeki, so it is valid. To top it all off, the dish tastes delicious, and Suma wonders what a dish with so many artichokes tastes like. One of the judges lets him try, so he is shocked to see how the bitterness of the dish stands out so much and becomes a delicacy with the meat. 
It turns out that the compound of the artichokes leaves a brief coating on the tongue that blocks the sweetness, so the sour flavors of Eason's dish will be enhanced, and once you continue eating, this coating is gone, so the next thing you eat will be sweeter. But then the effect wears off, then it won't affect the other participants, which is a masterpiece that only someone like Aizen could achieve. Takumi finishes his pizza and Aizen begins to make fun of him. But Takumi doesn't flinch and shows his double shigirin and cheese pizza. Although Takumi has a request, and that is that the judges start with a shigirin, which alarms everyone since it is what Aizen wants. But when trying it, even the judges are surprised since it tastes very good. So Aizen is surprised since it shouldn't be like that. Then, Takumi then explains that he made a sauce on the pizza that limited the sweetness and enhanced the bitterness of his dish since he predicted that Aizen would use artichokes. Aizen can't believe it since he decided at the last moment to use them, but Takumi foresaw that he would try to sabotage him, and when Takumi saw the ingredients in the store, he guided Aizen, so the only option would be the artichokes. Aizen realizes that is why Takumi did not take his eyes off him in the store, since Takumi wanted to make sure that Aizen did everything he had planned. After that, the judges try the cheese part and they are fascinated by Takumi's four cheese pizza. Since everything was a sequence that reached the climax in this third part, that is the Italian food revolution that Takumi is creating. In the end, Takumi thanks Aizen for sending Subaru to confront him at the autumn selection, otherwise he wouldn't be the chef he is now. Finally, the judges name Takumi the winner. On the other hand, everyone wonders how Suma and Somi will use butter as the main ingredient since it is always a secondary one, but Hizako is confident since Arena taught them all about butter. Even though his friends know that Suma slept most of it, so they only have to trust him. Suma starts with a strange ingredient, mochis, and uses them to create a fake white sauce. But the judges don't understand why you don't use butter, but they will wait to taste the dish before judging it. Then they both start cooking their dishes with butter. Meanwhile, Kyuga meets Nin and she recognizes that Suma is not an idiot who talks too much, since this was what she thought when she heard his speech at the opening ceremony. But Kyuga says that he saw his talent as soon as he got to know him a bit, and that's why he thinks he's the strongest in this round, although Nang doesn't think so since Sumi is a samurai who doesn't give up. Precisely, he expects Suma to present his dish first, but since he doesn't, he takes the initiative and shows the judges his butter kazden that uses butter and salmon, and when combined with the other sea ingredients, generates an irresistible flavor, although the real trick is in the rice as this combination should be very heavy, but by using orange juice, he managed to avoid it. It turns out that Sumi is skilled with all the ingredients that are related to fish and butter is no exception. Since when he was a child, he admired his mother a lot because she ran a sushi's restaurant by herself and thanks to her, he managed to enter the Tatsuki Academy to be a sushi master like his mother, but when she started working in a renowned sushi restaurant, she discovered that it was a very archaic and old-fashioned environment that did not accept women, so she got sick from working so hard and Sumi started to adopt a samurai attitude to make his own way in the world of sushi. Thanks to all this time fighting, Sumi achieved this high level, so Suma worries since he knew that he was good, but he is still surprising so Suma asks him why he joins Central with such good ideals and Sumi says, to protect the weak and Suma thinks they are in the same boat. Then Suma introduces his Inari Sushi, which is stuffed with rice pilaf, which sounds crazy because it's too heavy having butter as the main ingredient, but Suma treated all the ingredients to be as light as possible, and the main reason for this miracle is that the white sauce has no butter. So the judges realize the reason why Suma made a fake white sauce. Also, he used Takumi's four cheeses and Megumi's apple butter. So he didn't use one sword like some in the samurai, but a lot of swords to attack countless times. Suma wonders how he can be so good, and Suma tells him that's because he knows how strong he is. It turns out that Subaru trains Suma, Megumi, and Takumi with his perfect tracking, and Suma realized that he could not defeat Somi with a single attack. So he devised the strategy to use all the knowledge he has acquired in his short time in the academy, and all the battles he has had with his friends, then Sumai realizes that his strength comes from the people who accompany him, which represents him even more as samurai, so he admits defeat. The judges announce Suma as the winner of this match. Everyone comes out of their cell to celebrate Suma's victory, and Takumi tells Megumi, smiling that they won as a team, so Megumi feels better. Then they prepare for the next match and decide who the rivals will be. On the other hand, Tsukasa and Rindo come back to life after a long rest, while Momo is upset, so she tries to be as cute as possible, but she doesn't understand why she's still angry, so she decides to destroy her next rival, whoever it is, then Arena tells her that she knows what bothers her, but Momo doesn't care about her opinion. The following matches are announced. Arena and Momo will fight each other with brown sugar as their theme, Satoshi and Shikasa will have to use wild rabbit, and finally, Rindo against Takumi will use squid. Momo starts making lots of cute shapes to create rolls cakes and a judge think that this time won't be as visually pleasing as last time, but Momo starts making candy in the flashiest way possible, even though Arena isn't left behind since she also cooks at a fast speed. 
although she decided to prepare a sweet against Momo, so everyone worries about her. Momo finishes her dessert, and the judge who said it would be something simple swallows his word, because Momo presents a castle of rolls cake. But they judge the taste, not the visual, so they try it, and as expected, the flavor is exquisite, which gives the impression of a perfect dish that bombards you with its sweetness. It turns out that since Momo was a little kid, she has been good at predicting what will be cute in the world. So many clothing and toy brands were going to ask her for advice, but she decided to be a pastry chef, since that was where her cutesy stood out the most, and that is why she does not accept anything that she doesn't consider cute. Irina makes a soulful ledger de grace, which has a dough that has an incredible texture, but the secret is the mixture in the center, which makes it a dorayaki, the same as Megumi did, but with this one, it feels like Arena suppresses you and dominates you. Momo doesn't understand why she used Anko instead of Meringue since what she did could affect the texture of the soulful, so she gives her dish a lower grade of 100 points. But Arena insists that this dish shows what irritated Momo, so tells her to try it so she will understand. Momo accepts and when trying it, she reacts in a way that has never been seen before since she is very critical of other people's sweets. But now Momo understands how Arena's dish did not lose texture and managed to highlight the brown sugar even more. On the other hand, Alice explains to Megumi that this dish is in her honor, since grace means the same as Megumi. Momo spends her time looking for desserts that are 100 points of cuteness, but Megumi did something different. She looked for more and Momo can't stand the idea that someone aspires to something better than her dishes, so Momo tells Arena that she is the same, that she always seeks perfection. But Arena is no longer the same since she met Suma. She saw how he could invade her castle of perfection with recipes that she didn't know, and at first they seemed irrational to her, but not anymore. Momo doesn't want to accept that this dish is prettier, but she can't stand having it in front of her and not eating it, so she admits defeat. Arena wins this match. After that, Megumi thanks Arena for making this dish in her honor and she begins to cry with happiness. Suddenly, Azami changes the rules and from now on, he will be the one to judge the following dishes. The members of the resistance complain since Azami is one of the organizers, even Rindo, because she doesn't like that they interrupt her shaka jiki. But the former director accepts that Azami be a jury, so they can't refuse. He also brought two more judges from the WJO, who will also judge the dishes and are nothing more and nothing less than the superiors of the judges who are qualifying the dishes. Anne, who is the head judge, says that she will stay as judge and Azami accepts, so one of her friends will have to stand, although she doesn't seem to have a problem since she would prefer to sit on Azami's lap. Everyone is scared, but Suma thinks it's a good idea since now they can hit him directly with their cooking. Rindo and Takumi finish their squid dishes, where Takumi stuffed the squid, giving it a lot of sea flavors by contrasting sour and salty flavors, so Azami's friends are amazed by this exquisite dish. Even Azami praises Takumi, for which everyone is happy, but Rindo's dish is undeniably superior since she used squid and an exotic fish from the Amazon that goes perfectly in this dish and has a far superior texture, extracting all the flavor of the squid and the fish which gives the impression that it makes even the scruffiest person in the world into refined. So Rindo easily defeats Takumi, and he knows how strong Rindo is and accepts the result. Rindo wins her battle. On the other hand, Satoshi is cooking his dish, so Nin is surprised at how much fun he is having even though he is up against Tsukasa, but Satoshi cares more about having fun than anything else, so Nin envy him because he is very talented already. Satoshi's friend believe that he prepares something different from Japanese food, but they are wrong since he chose a dish that is characterized by its delicacy. Then everyone goes crazy since game meat can completely destroy this dish, but to everyone's surprise, the aroma that it gives off is very warm, which makes them all his bunnies. Nin can't believe how such things occur to him if he was born in a family rooted in traditions just like her. But Nin's intense gaze begins to make Satoshi uncomfortable since she always did this, so Nin gets upset since she thinks that he teases her for only being able to follow the traditions, though Satoshi doesn't believe that as it is thanks to her that he was able to continue cooking. It turns out that when he was a child, everyone was very strict with him because of the family he came from, so doing everything well was the minimum. But this caused to Satoshi to see no point in cooking, so he saw Nin try so hard to master new cooking techniques, and that tenacity is what led him to strive to feel the same as her. Returning to the judges, they realize that there is something hidden in the accompaniment, and it turns out that the venison is inside. So the transparent broth into miso soup and the flavor changes completely, being a Japanese work of art that launches aggressive attacks constantly to defeat Tsukasa. Tsukasa is surprised by this wonderful dish, so he asks Satoshi to be his assistant when he loses. Then Tsukasa presents his dish he made Livre et le Royal, which is a dish intended for French royalty. But despite everything he did, Satoshi's dish still looks more amazing. The resistance is happy, but this does not last long since at the bottom of the saucer, there is an extra royale that gives lightness to the hair without losing a bit of power, which leaves the judges impressed since the combination he made is too risky and any chef would try to avoid it. But he is a genius. If he sees something that can improve his cooking, he takes it. 
Unfortunately, Tsukasa defeats Satoshi. For the final meeting, the former director decides to change the rules since he wants everything to be decided in a final bout. The cooks will prepare a complete menu with a starter and a main dish. In addition, there will be no thematic ingredient for them to give their all. So Uzami accepts since he wants to see the splendor of the two best cooks in the academy and says that Irina cannot prepare a true gourmet dish. But Irina tells him that she is no longer the same obedient girl he knew. So both sides accept the challenges and stay waiting for the next day. Tsukasa and Rindo will face Suma and Arena. Then, Takumi goes with Rindo since he felt that she was a little scared, but she gets upset by what he is implying and runs away. Then he meets with the others and they begin to give ideas to Suma and Arena. But Kyuga pushes them all away since they have to rest and the best thing they can do is trust them. After that, Arena and Suma start arguing since they both want to make the main dish. So Suma presents his specialties and Arena rejects them since they don't go well with a gourmet dish. Meanwhile, on the side of the elites, they decided quickly, so Tosu goes to talk to Rindo since she looks sad in the team Shokakeki. It turns out that long ago, Rindo and Shikasa decided to be the best cooks in the academy and in the blink of an eye they succeeded. But she didn't realize that Shikasa got upset when the foreigner gourmets he served at the restaurant praised his food. Then one time, Azami told him that his food was horrible and left him intrigued by what she tried to make him forget about Azami. But he found himself alone with Azami again and made him realize how much it bothered him that people who doesn't know much about cooking praises his dishes since they don't allow them to improve by being surprised by anything. And Shukasa began to go often with Azami and he convinced him about his plan to create the perfect gourmet meal hand in hand with Arena. Back to the present, Tosu wonders why she agreed to be part of Central, and she says that because it seemed like the most fun and she could continue cooking with Tsukasa, but it seems that she evaded the question. The next day, the participants enter and those who helped Sumo look super tired just like Suma and Arena, since they spent the whole night arguing and didn't even decide who would make the main dish, so they end up deciding on rock, paper, scissors. They start cooking and even though Tsukasa doesn't want Suma and the others to be expelled, he thinks it's necessary for Central to meet its objectives, so they start working together. Meanwhile, on Suma's side, he still can't stop arguing with Arena, so Azami sees the victory of Central nearby. The first to finish are the elite from Central and Rindo presents a mushroom milf will that surprises the judges for its sour taste that, to everyone's surprise, comes from ants, so the judges couldn't imagine a better starter, and they still have to try the main course, which is covered with salt crust to keep all the juices and flavor inside. Tsukasa shows a dish with venison that is his specialty, which is enhanced by Rindo's dish, since the milf will only made the venison stand out even more. So Azami's gift is activated by making the rebels un -less. demonstrating how good Tsukasa's dish was, which Azami recognizes as a true gourmet dish. He believes that Arena cannot prepare something so good since she was contaminated in the academy, so Suma decides to prepare a specialty so as not to lose, but this worries the resistance since they know how unpredictable he can be, although he had a plan in mind. It turns out that he decided to use Arena to his advantage and had her taste his mixes for the perfect flavor, which Arena would be fine with except that he's adapting the recipe she had given him for the side dish, resulting in a piece of meat that doesn't look like a side dish. This annoys Azami, but the judges decide to try it anyway, so they realize that the meat is on the outside and he is used to roll the pate, and as if that weren't enough, it releases juices after the first bite that improve the flavor of the pate, generating the gift from Azami, making it clear that the dish is at the level of a specialty. But Izami says that Shukasa's dish was enhanced by Rindo's accompaniment, so in matters of menu, Suma has no chance of winning. Then Arena scolds him since she doesn't understand why he did this, and Suma says that he wants to win and tried Arena's dishes earlier, so he knows that if they followed a normal path, they would lose. Now she will have to overcome the dish that Suma just prepared, and this should be easy for her, since she always says that she is better than him, so Arena has to discover her specialty. It's basically a shaka jackie between Suma and Arena. In the past, Arena always presented dishes to her grandfather, though they were never acknowledged as specialties since they were all specialties but none of them were Arena's. In the present, Arena gets upset and tells Suma that he doesn't know how to work as a team, but even so, she ends up accepting Suma's challenge. So she asks for his help since she will have to change the dish to make it her specialty and she only has 10 minutes. Arena begins to run against time and cooks in a way that she never did, since she looks very rushed. But she remembers all the experiences she went through in the academy and thanks to that she is no longer the same girl she was, she puts her all into this new dish, a bowl of rice with chicken. Everyone is surprised since it doesn't look like a bowl of rice, and it's a dish that she considered for commoners, so Azami refuses to eat it since. He doesn't acknowledge this type of food as gourmet and thinks that it will be disgusting just by looking at it. Then, Irina laughs and says that he can't taste it with his eyes, 
So she challenges her father and tells him that if his precious alights admit that it is tasty, he will agree to taste it and Azami agrees. After that, Arena gives Suma's appetizer and specialty to Rindo and Shikasa. They are surprised at how juicy the chicken is and how well it matches the texture of Suma's appetizer thanks to a thin layer of breading called croton, but what managed to unite both specialties was Suma's peanut butter squid, because she can turn his emetic dishes into works of art, which allowed her to combine two such powerful flavors, generating this combined delight. Suma laughs that she copied him again, but it's obvious that she changed since she had never smiled like she does now, and Shikasa admits that it is a delight compared to a concert, that even though their voices try to stand out, they result in a perfect combination. Seeing his daughter cook like this, Azemi refuses to try her dish, then Arena reveals the true shape of her dish as it is missing the furikake, the same that Suma had used when they first met in the academy admission test. Azemi can't help but take a bite of such a beautiful dish, then the judges feel like this dish invades the Eden that Tsukasa and Rindo had created since Arena is willing to endure anything to protect the freedom of cooking. But Azemi doesn't believe in this because he has already seen how the freedom that they love so much ends, and he doesn't want more talents to be lost in the wasteland of trying to innovate infinitely, because it only leads to sadness, like Joichiro. Although his body cannot deny how delicious this dish is, so the gifting spreads in a way that it had never seen, since the number of people stripped of their clothes is too much due to the pulses caused by Arena's dish. Azemi still refuses to give a verdict, because going through the lonely wasteland like Jochiro once did is too tragic, but Hizako comes out to defend Arena and says that she will never be alone in Suma tells him that he didn't know the sadness his father went through because he always saw him as a happy man when he was with his mother. So Azami's clothes explode from compressing the gifting so much, and it is undeniable that Suma and Arena won the team Shokujeki battle. The rebel forces have won. Everyone is happy for Suma and Arena's victory, but Tsukasa doesn't understand how they achieved such a feat if their talents were repelled, but Satoshi says that the two of them had the most fun in the kitchen, then Azami leaves without saying a word. And he meets Jochiro and Jin who were waiting for him at the gates. Jochiro tells Azami that he shouldn't have worried so much about him because after all, he was happy in his life thanks to his wife and son, so they can leave it there and go drink someday. Azami says that he will look forward to that day. Everyone starts to plan what they will do from now on, for example, Tsukasa and Rindo don't have the pressure of being elites of the academy, so they will have more time to go to travel the world and discover new cuisines. Meanwhile, the rebels that participated in Team Shakojeki will be named as the new Elite 10. So Irina asks Suma to be the first seat in the Elite 10, since without him, she would not have been able to create her specialty. The others think that this recognition seems fair, but is also necessary to decide who will be the new director of the academy, since Irina's grandfather prefers to stay retired, so Suma asks Irina to be the new director, so he can accept being the new first elite, he feels that he still hasn't completely defeated her because she still hasn't told him that his dishes are delicious. Then Irina proposes other Nakiri to take the position, but even her uncle thinks that she is suitable to be a director, so she has no choice but to accept. On the other hand, the students who are on the side of Central are afraid of not knowing what they will do with them, since they openly express their hatred towards the rebels, but Suma does not hold any grudges against them, and since he does not feel that he has been the best in the team Shakujeki, he will accept any Shakujeki from any student for his position as first elite, because he is not afraid of walking through the wasteland of discovery that Izami is so afraid of. After several months, the third-year students graduated and each one followed their own path. Momo is a pastry chef, Sato at his family's sushi restaurant, Tosuke selling ramen in Paris and Shikasa with Rindo traveling through the Amazon hunting. Meanwhile, in the academy a rule was given the shakujikis can be done without any condition. Now they are much more common, so the former members of the resistance do not stop fighting in shakujikis and Kuba, third seat of the Elite 10, is surprised at how talented his juniors are since Hayama, fourth seat of the Elite, was close to defeating him, and he is not the only one, since Ryu, 5th seat, and Alice, 6th seat, also go from Shakujeki to Shakugeki. At that moment, Satoshi, 2nd seat of the Elite, defeats Nin, ninth Elite, in Shakujeki, although her fans seem to increase. Elsewhere, Suru continues to practice his cuisine, since he declined his seat in the Elite 10, because he thinks that he has not yet reached a level worthy of Elite, so Aizen stayed with the 8th seat of the Elite. Meanwhile, Takumi is the seventh seat and fights in double Shakujekis with his brother. Meanwhile, Arena is already getting used to the position of director and everyone recognizes her leadership, although she is more focused on getting along better with Hizako, since now their relationship is deeper and they consider themselves friends, although they are embarrassed to admit it. On the other hand, Suma also travels a lot with Megumi, tenth seat of the elite, discovering new cultures, although due to this, his work at the academy accumulates and Arena has to constantly cover for him. 
But despite everything, Irina smiles much more than before, so everyone is happy. Summer begins, and the students are sent to the beach to take an exam, where the new teacher named Suzuki will instruct them. Then he explains that they have to revive the small restaurants on the beach and earn 3 million yen. Stuma and the other members of the Elite 10 think it's a piece of cake, but Irina thought of everything and to balance the exam. She gives them the restaurant furthest away from the beach that needs the most repairs, so everyone gets to work. While Suma is helping to repair the old restaurant, Suzuki approaches him and cryptically says that he wanted to meet the first elite of the academy and tells him not to relax as it would be disastrous if he disapproved. On the second day, Suma and his friends continue to repair the restaurant. Since they plan to raise the 3 million yen on the last day then, Akumi goes to take a look, but she gets a big surprise since the organization they have is a disaster. Then a boy named Ken appears, which challenged Suma many times for his first elite position and tells him that this is the end of them since they are dominating sales with their exclusive menu, so he hopes they will disapprove and leave their elite positions to others. Akumi is annoyed by his arrogance, but Suma does not see the bad in Ken's attitude. He believes that this is how Tatsuki Academy must be, because everyone must pass tests that seem impossible to aspire to be the best cooks in the school. Besides, they already have a plan to pass this exam, they just have to carry it out. Although Megumi reminds them of everything they have to do and they rush back to work. At night, Suma sees Arena smile as she looks at the moon, which leaves him gawking, and when she notices, he tells her that he likes her smile, to which Arena blushes. But she quickly changes the subject and tells him that the Elite 10 cannot fail at examen like this, but Suma has no problem since this environment reminds him of what the dining room was like when his mother was there, so Arena assumes that she was a good cook, although it was the opposite. Harina gets serious and tells him that he must pass the exam, and Suma is not worried and trusts that they will pass the exam without problem, and then he will challenge her to a shakajaki. Harina laughs and accepts, and they continue conversing in the moonlight, unaware that they were overheard by Suzuki. The next day, Suma and the others finish the repairs and prepare to open the restaurant, while Ken already rejoices in victory and thinks that nothing can go wrong since they have a lot of customers waiting, but suddenly, the beach is deserted and he feels an irresistible aroma coming from the Elite's restaurant. It turns out that the Elite made a poche egg yakisoba, which has a spicy liquid inside that releases an irresistible aroma all over the beach, attracting more and more people. Ken thinks that it is impossible for them to reach 3 million yen in a single day since it is inhumane. But the ones who cook are Suma, Ryu, and Takumi, and nothing is impossible for those three. So Hayama gives a plate of their yakisoba to Ken, as compensation for stealing his customers, and when Ken eats it, he realizes that this flavor is priceless, so it would be impossible for them to beat this. At the end of the day, the Elite 10 pass the exam. After that, they start planning their vacation for the summer break, but suddenly, Jun arrives to tell them about the ones chosen for the Blue Tournament. Suma gets serious, since the Blue Tournament is the one that his father should have participated in many years ago. It turns out that they have been given three positions for academy students apart from Arena's position. She was directly invited, so she organizes the blue preliminaries. All the students can appear for the preliminaries. The dishes will be evaluated by the judges, and the three best scores will be able to attend the blue. Everyone refines their dishes and presents authentic works of art, but the dominance of the Elite 10 is undeniable as they score higher, and Suma presents his golden eggs, which release a lot of the juice of the soup of different flavors that you will enjoy. It gives the impression that you are eating the entire menu of the restaurant in a single dish, leaving everyone amazed, although he only reached third place. To everyone's surprise, Megumi was the winner of the blue preliminaries. Takumi managed to beat Suma by one point and came in second. On the other hand, Suma's dad accepted a shakajeki of an unknown guy and lost, so this mysterious cook takes Jochiro's knife. Days later, Suma and Megumi meet Suzuki, who had just returned from abroad. So he asks Suma to tell how they won the team shakajeki. And after being surprised at the crazy things he did to win, Suzuki asks him to have a duel with Megumi as judge. This surprises Suma, although he always gave him the impression that he was not an ordinary teacher, so Suzuki reveals his true intention. It turns out that he wants to marry Arena, so he has to make sure that he is the best chef. But Suma doesn't plan to let him take her away. Suddenly, Arena manages to hear that they are fighting over her and faints from surprise. Soban accepts Suzuki's challenge, then tells him that if he wins, Suzuki will have to tell him in detail who is he. Suzuki agrees, but on the condition that Suma will have to give him his knife if he loses, so they start cooking and Suma finishes his fried pork with cheese first, which Megumi loves as it's incredibly light despite being a fry-up, but Suzuki says that Suma doesn't take full advantage of the pork, then he shows them his dish that is exactly the same, but with a different sauce and to show him the difference between the two, he tells Suma to try it too, so Suma and Megumi feel a completely different world in such a similar dish, making it clear that Suzuki won. Suma gives him his knife and Suzuki says that it is an inferior version of the one he already has, then Suma confirms his suspicions, since the knife that Suzuki was using looked familiar. That knife is the one Suzuki took from Joichiro. Then Suzuki smiles mischievously and says that his real name is Seiba Azahi, 
Megumi doesn't understand why he has the old name of Joichiro. Suma tries to get revenge on him right there, but he passes out from exhaustion, so Suzuki leaves and picks up Arena, who was still unconscious on the ground and asks her to marry him. In the afternoon, Arena tells Hizako everything that happened, and Hizako is relieved to hear that Arena firmly rejected him. But at that moment, Jin calls her since he has to talk to her about Seba Azahi. On the other hand, Suma goes to his house to open the restaurant and meets his father, who also tells him about Azahi, since he is the only disciple he has ever had. It turns out that 10 years ago, Joichiro went to help an orphanage and met Azahi. He reminded him of Azami and the members of Polar Star, and that's why he taught him to cook. Also, at Azahi's request, he gave him his last name. Sometime later, Joichiro returned to Japan and did not see Azahi again, and did not imagine that he would see him again to challenge him to a shock check, for which he apologizes to Suma since he is in trouble again because of him. Suma doesn't understand why his father apologizes, since he was the one who lost his shakageki, so with his characteristic smile he challenges him to a new duel. Meanwhile, Jin also tells Arena that this blue will be different since the head of the WGO accepted anyone talented enough this time, and that is why a group of cooks called Nor will participate, which are led by Azahi. Then Arena asks Hizako to gather information about them. But that night, while she was alone in her bedroom, the Nor group enters through her window led by Azahi. He says that if he defeats her in blue, she has to agree to be his wife. Azahi also asks her to leave the academy because they are all weak, since he easily defeated Suma, who is the first seat of the Elite Ten, and asks her to join Nor since he would make better use of her talent there. But this annoys Arena, and she ends up accepting Azahi's challenge. And to scare her more, he shows a dish that impresses Arena, since she can't imagine a better dish than that, making it clear that they can't defeat them. Meanwhile, Suma finds out about Nor, and he wants to win Blue even more, and Jochiro gives him the secret to being a better cook, cooking for someone you love, but Suma doesn't quite understand what this means. Suma, Arena, Megumi, Takumi, and Nor are ready. Everyone that night sets out to win the Blue. The long-awaited day has arrived, the Blue tournament starts tonight. Suma, Megumi, and Takumi meet and listen to the conditions of the tournament, this will be divided into floors, and they will have to reach the highest floor to advance to the castle and compete in the blue final. At that moment, Azahi arrives, so Suma is motivated to have his revenge once and for all. Although he advances to the third floor directly since he is the leader of Nor, so he asks Suman not to lose in the first trial, since he will be waiting for him at the top. Harina also has a special exam, and Suma decides not to think about it too much, since they have to pass their own tests. They are divided into groups, and Suma has to please an old man with his food, having the theme of Last Supper. All the chefs ask the old man personal questions to prepare a dish to his liking, but after trying those dishes, they are rejected one after the other, while the only ones who approve are from Nor since they are used to these themes from working in jails and preparing dinners for criminals on death row. Meanwhile, Suma gets angry at the nature of the test, since he doesn't understand how a cook can want to have a last dinner when he is going to continue living so he prepares a dish that will make him want to stay alive to continue eating, then shows him his monaka. The old man thinks that Suma playing with him since Monaka is a simple sweet, but Suma tells him that if he has that much energy, he should try it, so the old man is surprised to see that it is not a sweet, but rather an appetizer that stimulates and fills him with energy to what is appetite. Suma tells him that he shouldn't leave the kitchen because even though his body can't cook, his teeth can still eat, so he still has many things to discover in the vast world of flavor. The old man reflects on the decision he had made by losing the will to live, so he approves Suma and tells him that he will go to his restaurant for his real last dinner. It turns out that the old man had planned to commit suicide after finishing the tournament, but now he has returned the desire to live and continue trying new dishes. Meanwhile, Arena has to face all the cooks who failed the first test alone. After that, Sumimi Takume, who had to cook infant food that was both nutritious and tasty, and Megumi, who had to cook dishes that pets and their owners alike could eat. The three of them advances to the next gate and get a big surprise since Tsukasa is waiting for them here. In the second test, they are asked to use products and ingredients from a convenience store to prepare a dish worth more than $100. So they all run to choose the best ingredients and Tsukasa tells Suma to compete with him to see who makes the most expensive dish. Suma accepts the challenge and decides to experiment since they have several attempts, so he quickly cooks a meat with various ingredients from the convenience store and even manages to have a good flavor. But for the judge is not enough since Suma only combines everything without improving any of the ingredients. Tsukasa presents his dish, and it is a duet of chicken and meat that has been enhanced to the point that the low-quality ingredients from the convenience store seem like first-class ingredients, so this dish leaves the WGO judge ecstatic, and she gives him more than $500 for his dish. The judge takes the opportunity to ask Suma if he would pay $100 for the dish he made, and Suma, without hesitation, says no. So now he understands what the test is about. Suma goes back to the convenience store, and this time he comes out with a lot of ingredients. 
The judge gets angry as she thinks he's picking random ingredients, but Suma says that he'll use everything, then everyone watches as he prepares a bunch of things, giving the impression that he's just combining whatever comes to his mind, although after a while he finishes cooking a complete menu called Osiki Set. The judge believes that he did it too fast, since restaurants take a whole day to prepare this dish, so she believes that the dish will taste bad and when tastes it, it is nothing special. But when she takes the second bite, she cannot stop since this dish has the feature to whet your appetite for the next part of the menu, regardless of the order in which you eat it so Suma got premium taste without the need to increase the flavor of the ingredients separately. So the judge has to approve Suma even though she doesn't want to, although Suma wants to know how much she's going to pay for his dish, and if she doesn't have money, she'll have to pay with what she's wearing. So the judge runs off and leaves him without knowing the true value of his dish. Meanwhile, Arena B Everyone failed their first exam and prepares to face more contestants. The rest of Nora and Tatsuka also approved, so they go to the third level and here they receive a notification from the bookmaster, which is the highest authority of the Jevu Jo. She tells them that they will have a supplementary prize, they will have the honor of being the bookmaster's private chef, but in exchange, she wants to see the true potential of Nora's chefs, so everyone is motivated to give their best. Nora's chefs show off their powers. Sarge, who uses a chainsaw to season the meat and cut it finely without spoiling the texture, creating specialty-level meat in no time. There's also Malkanta, who makes circus cooking by using the rotating grills to juggle and cook the meat evenly, resulting in delicious meat. Then Claude, who extracts the blood from the meat and prepares it in an exquisite and super-fast way. Then several members of Noor appear who are preparing dishes at the level of specialties one after another without stopping, so Suma and the others start cooking to pass the third test, since they do not plan to be left behind against those of Noor. After that, they finally arrive at the final tournament, where all those who have survived so far will face each other, and the first to compete will be Sarge and Suma, with the theme of a Christmas dessert. After the judges have dressed for the occasion, Sarge begins to create the meringue with her chainsaw as it has several accessories that vary the function depending on what is needed, she also uses other unconventional techniques, such as crushing the chocolate with a mallet and generating an explosion in the oven to prepare the puff pastry. Then she finishes preparing her cluster bomb cake that leaves the judges amazed since the chocolate has mint and this gives the sensation of explosions in the mouth every second. In addition to Sarge's way of cooking, it adds a lot of points in texture and flavor so you feel like Sarge herself gave you a flavor explosion for Christmas. While all this was happening, Suma had gone shopping at the convenience store and shows his chainsaw, although it's only a wooden ice cream spoon, but he prepares the dough with yams, which is a very rare ingredient for this task, and he doesn't cook either in a conventional way since, instead of using an oven, he uses coal to prepare the dough and has a better texture. His Yukihira-style midsummer Christmas cake is ready. Suma's cake is a classic Christmas sweet dish except for the two fireworks shells on top. Meanwhile, the former director asks Joy Chiro, if Suma has a chance to win and he says no, since he is just a cook in a diner and Sarge belongs to the most dangerous organization of cooks, but then he smiles enigmatically and says Suma doesn't work in a normal diner. In the arena, they can't believe that Suma's dish can directly compete with Sarge's cake blast, but his Christmas cake has many surprises, for example, it is sugar-free so it is suitable for summer. Sarge does not accept that his cake is better than hers, since her explosive cakes meet the theme of limiting up Christmas parties with constant explosions, but Suma has not yet finished presenting his dish, since that is why he put the fireworks shells. When they are released, a shine is seen that stimulates visually and completely improves the flavor of the dessert since it adds acidity and bitterness that combines perfectly with the sugar-free dessert, which is why Suma created a Christmas dessert that can be eaten by people of any age. Then, Sarge wonders how he can be so good, and Suma tells him it's because he works at his family's diner. It turns out that since he was a child, Joichiro sent him to do tasks that defy logic for a boy his age. But Suma passed each of those tests, he basically trained his entire life in a first-class dining room, and that's why he's so versatile. So Sarge tries the Suma dessert and has no choice but to accept defeat, which is embarrassing for her since she could have beaten him, if it weren't for Suma concentrating more on the diners in front of him and thus creating a perfect dish for the theme. The next to compete is Sukasa, and his opponent will be Azai, so he asks the other Nor members for their knives, but they are not as faithful to him as Sarge and refuse to help him, so Azai he decides to take them by force. Then he challenges Shukasa to bet his knife, and Shukasa doesn't quite understand why he wants his knife, but he accepts. Then everyone is surprised at Sukasa because he has improved a lot. It turns out that now he does not limit himself to eliminating his presence from the ingredients so they stand out as much as possible, but rather he talks directly with them and gives them part of his personality to create a flavor even superior to what they could have achieved on their own. But Azahi shows off his large collection of knives, he has a unique technique called Cross, which is based on his incredible sensitivity that allows him to master any kitchen utensil just by touching He ends up having the power of the strongest cooks. 
And as if that were not enough, Azagi can combine different knives with the technique of cross knives, which results in an exponential improvement since these techniques support each other and elevate the dish to a new level. They both finish their dish at the same time, and Azagi's dish takes the judges to heaven thanks to the fine cuts he made with Sarge's chainsaw. But then, they try Shukasa's dish, which extracted 120% potential from the ingredients thanks to some new exotic ingredients that he learned to use on his travels with Rindo, and although despite this, the judges cannot forget the Azagi dish. It turns out that he hid thin layers of bounty, which elevates the dish beyond perfection, so he ends up winning and taking with him Miss Sukasa's ability to speak with ingredients. Sukasa is shocked at having lost, so he leaves everything in Suma's hands. The next duel will be a group duel between Takumi and Don Kama. They have to bring their assistance and Don Kama, who has his army of robust girls helping him, mocks Takumi because his twin in Asami hasn't arrived yet, although Don Kama knows that Asami won't come because he has him kidnapped. They start cooking and the theme is amused Booch with teamwork. So Don and his women work in perfect coordination and manage to prepare many sauces at the same time and end up with a varine that has countless layers. Although the most impressive is that each glass that they prepare has a different theme of flavors. But that's not all because even though they have many flavors that should be strong, they pass very gently towards the stomach. And this is because he prepare it in their special shaker that generates a foam that lightens the amuses bouche that impressed the judges with this painstaking work that has only been possible due to the perfect coordination of Don with his assistants. Don continues to taunt Takumi, but is confident as he doesn't think he can defeat him, though he didn't count on an unexpected reinforcement come. Suma arrives as Takumi's partner and the bookmaster agrees to Suma help him because he does not violate the group theme of this battle. Don Kama is upset about it, although they calm him down by threatening to investigate Asami's disappearance. Don Kama doesn't think that Takumi can coordinate with Suma, since Takumi only shows his true potential when cooking together with his twin brother, but he is quite surprised to see Suma work along with Takumi. It seems like a perfectly coordinated dance, which is the result of countless shuck of Jeki among themselves who have been vying for Takumi's Mezzaluna day after day. After that formidable team dance, they manage to finish their yin yang varine, which mixes dairy and turtle juice. Don laughs since it is impossible for them to make this mixture taste good, but when he tries it, he realizes that there is some secret for it to reach this level, and he is not mistaken since Takumi used Kaki no Tame that he had previously used by Suma in their first duel. Thanks to this, he managed to link two such different flavors, and this victory shows that he has improved a lot in all this time that he has been in the academy. Asami finally arrives at the castle thanks to Kuba who led his men who are experts in martial arts to free Asami from his kidnappers, and Suma tells Takumi that even though they combine well, he and Asami are unbeatable as cooking partners. On the other hand, Don gives his shaker to Azahi since he couldn't win against Suma and his friends. After this, Suma and the others get a big surprise since they see how Arena was fighting against all those who had been disqualified. But this annoys the bookmaster because she did not want the god tongue to fight in her tournament, since it seems unnecessary to her. Rina joins the main tournament and destroys her Nor opponent. Then it's Megumi's turn for her first battle. She's uneasy since Arena doesn't seem to be having a good time, and to make matters worse, her opponent is a descendant of a family of assassins who makes fun of Megumi, but she defeats him without problems. After that, Suma gets upset since it doesn't seem fair that Arena was able to face so many people and he didn't, so he goes to see the bookmasters. He sneaks into her castle with his friends, and they end up listening to the conversation the bookmaster is having with Arena. It turns out that she is her mother called Mena, although she doesn't care about God Tongue at all. So Arena warns her that she will be the one who wins and creates the non-existent dish that she is looking for so much. Suma and the others are discovered, but Mana doesn't care that Arena's friends have heard their conversation, although she almost fainted due to the lack of nutrients since her feeding is through IV, so she asks them to leave, so she can rest. Mana also possesses the god tongue, and in search of perfection, she lost the ability to enjoy food and now she can only feed herself through an IV and abandoned the Nakiri family to isolate herself from it. The next day, the matches are between Takumi and Arena, and simultaneously there will be Megumi's match against Azahi. He tries to woo Arena again, so Megumi asks him to stop bothering her. But Azahi has no plans to listen to her, then Megumi challenges him to a shaka jeki to leave Arena alone if she wins and Azahi accepts. But on the condition that Megumi stops being friends with Arena if she loses and Megumi agrees as she is willing to do anything for her friend. The duels begin and Takumi admits that Arena is a better cook than him, but that he will try to learn from this duel, which upsets Arena since that is not a winning attitude and on Azahi's side, he uses the knives of the previous chefs that Megumi has defeated to focus on the theme of preparing cheap meat. Megumi thinks the theme is perfect for her as she traveled around the world and learned a lot about conventional cooking. She learned how to give affordable ingredients the best flavor possible. Meanwhile, Arena prepares a dish that leaves the judges immobile and makes Takumi try it, so he understands the difference in level between them, but he is not intimidated and prepares Hatch's Parmentier. 
which is the dish which what they trained in the train for Team Shaka Jakey, and he did it with the intention that she remembers how much fun she had cooking, unlike now that she looks very upset. But it's not enough to beat Arena's dish. Despite having won, Arena is angry with herself because the dish she prepared is not enough to win the championship. Meanwhile, Azahi manages to improve the flavor of the meat, giving the impression that it is very high quality meat, since he knows the chemical processes that occur in matured meat and with the weapons he has. He can replicate this process in the kitchen. He creates a perfect dish of the highest quality with the cheap meat they provided him. Megumi also presents an exquisite dish that draws all the power that cheap meat could offer. But it's not enough since Azahi literally improved the meat he had and extracted all the potential from it, making it an inevitable defeat. Megumi has lost. Azahi takes this opportunity to ask Mana for Arena's hand if he wins the blue tournament, and she agrees that he take what he wants if he wins, since the only thing that matters to Mana is that someone can prepare something that will satisfy her. Azahi takes the opportunity to tell Arena that he is the only one who will be able to please her and her mother God Tongue, and if she knows someone more suitable than him, he wants to know him. Then Suma appears to tell them that he plans to win this tournament, but Azahi tells him that Arena doesn't even trust those words to come true. Azahi withdrew the bet with Megumi, he only wants her to support their marriage, but Suma doesn't think she has to worry since if everything continues as it is now, he will face Azahi first and he will beat him. But Arena isn't sure because even a part of her wants Azahi to win to see if his words come true. When she was a child, her mother had to leave because of the god tongue curse and her mother doesn't want to someone who has the god tongue win the blue. So, perhaps the only person who can please them is Azahi. Then Suma says that he can't meddle in Arena's family problems and only thinks about winning this tournament, so he leaves. The days go by and Suma, Arena, and Azahi defeat all their opponents until reaching the semifinals. Finally, Suma will face Azahi. He wants to practice, but it won't do him any good because the theme of the semifinal will be given before the match starts, so he plans to have as many Shokojeki as he can until it's his turn. On the other hand, Jochiro remembers the happy times when he lived with Tamako, Suma's mother, it was she who taught Suma to cook. Tamako cooked more disgusting dishes than him, but they had fun in the restaurant and the customers too. The three of them were a happy family until she died and Joichiro went into depression, until Suma rescued him from the abyss with his strong attitude and willing to go ahead to continue challenging him to culinary battles. So Jochiro stopped seeing Azahi to dedicate all his time to his son, and although he invited Azahi to live with them, he refused to go and lived with resentment towards Suma, since he took away the person he loved the most. The day of the semifinals arrives and Suma tells Azahi that he can do whatever he wants if he beats him, like he's sure that he won't be able to make Arena happy, so they both enter the castle. Everyone sees Azahi as the winner because of how impressive his cross knives are, but the members of Polar Star arrive with their big flag and loud shouts of encouragement for Suma. Azahi mischievously tells Suma that he notices that he's worried about Arena, and that's a distraction, but Suma doesn't let himself be intimidated because he was training with Tsukasa all night, so now he's focused only on beating Azahi. Then, Azai takes out Joichiro's knife, and Suma gets even more motivated since it will be like trying to defeat his father, something he is already very used to. Mana reveals the theme for this fight and decides that they have to combine five types of cuisine, French, Chinese, Turkish, Indian, and Italian, so Suma goes blank having no idea how to approach the theme. Azaki takes the lead, with his cross knives he can use different techniques at the same time thanks to all the chefs he has defeated around the world. He reaffirms his superiority as he can make leaps and bounds in the stormy wasteland of the kitchen, just by adding tools to his collection, but Suma smiles saying that's basically a cheat code's version of all the training they have done so he's glad because it means they're on the same level, and he just has to hurry and catch up. Suma finally decides what to prepare and his great idea is to prepare five dishes and combine them into one so everyone is speechless since the different cuisines use different ingredients, spices, and techniques, so this is the biggest madness he's come up with so far, but Suma firmly believes that he won't achieve something unmatched if he doesn't try something that no cook has ever tried. Meanwhile, Arena watches from afar with her grandfather. Suddenly, Hizako and Alice arrive, they have the task to find Azami and bring him, and Arena's grandfather reveals that Azai had to be present in this battle, because he was not only trying to save Joichiro, but he was looking for a solution to save his wife, Mena, and then his daughter from the Curse of the God Tongue. Meanwhile, time runs out and both cooks manage to finish cooking and present their dishes, but there is a big difference in the aromas since Azagi's dish has a unique aroma that attracts the judges and forces them to try it first. Also, he offers it to Mana, since this is what she has been looking for so long. Mana accepts and the judges try the Basti at the same time, they are amazed at his great decision making since the Basti combines French, Chinese, and Japanese food, so he only had to add the ones that were missing with some ravioli filled with Turkish ice cream and even the judges accept that this dish would not exist if it weren't for him, since these ingredients in the hands of any cook would have collided with each other. Suddenly, the clothes of the entire audience start flying in the air as Mana's gifting has been activated. 
hinting that Mana found this dish delicious. Azadi tells Suma that this is his true power, and that he doesn't stand a chance, but Suma reveals his dish, fried rice. Azai laughs at first but realizes it's not ordinary fried rice, although the judges don't want to try it since they want to stay with the flavor of Azahi's dish, but after the first bite, they can't stop eating and Suma offers his dish to Mana. She accepts to be fair, but she is prepared beforehand with a bucket, in case her body does not accept the food when she tastes it. She realizes the secret of this dish, the rice has been trapped by a light layer of egg that explains the lack of smell of the dish, despite having ingredients that are very strong in aroma. This makes them look like miniature omuris, but this is impossible in the eyes of Nora's chefs as it is an overly complicated process and any slight mistake would have resulted in catastrophe. Then Suma proudly reveals that he knows this technique thanks to a failed dish from his mom. The first dish that she taught him to cook was fried rice and smilingly tells Azahi that he knows a flavor that Azahi does not and that is why he is capable to making these kinds of dishes. Suma knows the taste of failure. Azahi laughs at him since it is obvious that he does not know the taste of failure because he is the best cook, but immediately begins another gifting from Mana. With the same power as the one that Azai generated, so it'd be understood that both dishes are equal, then everyone wonders which of the two has prepared the most exquisite. Azami realizes that is not a simple gifting, since it not only detaches the clothes of those affected, but also destroys them. This is a divine gifting, and it is the first time that this phenomenon has been seen, which means that she considers Suma's dish better. But Mana says that the tastiness of Suma's dish is not the only problem, which she tried Asai's Basti, she felt that his personality is being ignored by himself by using so much cross knives and on the other hand, Suma's odorless fried rice is full of his personality that he has been learning from all the classmates and instructors he has had at the academy, which makes him superior. Suma is the winner and goes to the final. After that, Azai returns him Jochiro's knife for having lost, but Suma doesn't want it since Azahi won it fairly. But Suma wants to know why he was so determined to marry Arena, and this is because in the past, Joichiro told Azahi the same thing as Suma, to look for the person he will love, for whom he wants to cook, although Suma thinks he is looking for something different, so Azahi leaves puzzled. Then he meets Joichiro and he tells him not to worry because sooner or later he will get what he wants and his henchmen are after him because no matter if Azahi leaves Nor, they are faithful to him anywhere. Meanwhile, Suma's friends congratulate him on his victory, but Mana tells him that it is still not enough to fulfill what she had asked of them, so she tells him not to be conceited and present something better in the final. Anyway, that was the plan Suma, he smiles at Arena and they will face each other in the final, but she ignores him leaving everyone baffled. Later, Azami goes to see Mana and they fight as usual, which brings back memories of when they first met, since she once tasted a dish of Azami, who was depressed by Jochiro's departure from the academy and as a result, Azami ended up working in different restaurants, it seemed to her a very sad dish and without a hint of personality. So Azami was improving, so she swallowed those words, and in this way he was able to feel the passion and love for cooking again. They were very happy, although it wouldn't last long as the god Tom would snatch her away. At that moment, Joichiro enters to talk to them. In the past, he took Azahi as his pupil, because he reminded him a lot of Azami, and Mana agrees since her god Tom allows her to see inside the cooks, and the Basti of Azahi tasted like the same person as Azami was when he lost Joichiro. Meanwhile, Jin asks the former director if his plan worked and he says that the results will be seen since now, in the past, when he found out about the curse of God Tongue, he could not allow his daughter and granddaughter to succumb to this while he was alive, but he sent his eldest son to collect a generation of prodigies that would help Arena to refine her skills, because as he once said, rough diamonds need to collide with other rough diamonds to refine themselves. And that was how all the members of Polar Star and Arena and Suma's friends were unknowingly recruited to attend Tatsuki Academy. The next day, the grand finale begins, Arena and Suma must create a new dish never seen before, and this time Mana will be the judge who will decide the winner. They start cooking and Arena looks lost as she feels the pressure. She has to make a non-existent dish and has to impress her mother that doesn't expect anything from her. Suddenly, Suma tastes her mix and tells her that she's cooking something boring and encourages her to improve because he would not be happy to beat her in that state. Seeing her like this, Suma decides to prepare a dish exclusively for her, which will make her come back and this dish is a tempura bowl with eggs that he had prepared for her in Polar Star, although it has several improvements since he was studying his own dish all this time and also the first dish that Arena showed him, and then he applied all the knowledge about Eggs Benedict and the bowl of eggs to create this new dish that leaves Arena and Mana speechless. So Mana realizes that Suma is different since everyone holds back and fears preparing something unpleasant to God Tongue, but Suma doesn't care about these circumstances and just keeps going to not be left behind by them. Then Suma tells her to stop the trash and keep an eye on the person she wants to cook her dish for. Then Arena wakes up and begins to emit the pulse of the gifting. But again, Suma released a new level of it. 
since it is even more powerful than the divine gifting and disrobed even the castle. But after that, Ermina tells him that his dish is disgusting. But in comparison to the one she's going to present, she gets to work and again begins to smile in the kitchen thanks to Suma, while he looks at her thanking her for taking him to this point since he finally feels that he made a dish with a style that surpasses the Yukira style. For the first time, he created the Soma style, his own style and only his. Days later, everyone celebrates Suma's achievement, but he is still upset since he lost to Arena. So he decides to train before inheriting his father's restaurant and finds out that while he was dueling against Azagi, his friends were dismantling Nora from outside, taking advantage of the fact that the best cooks were at Blue. Everyone wonders if Arena will come to celebrate, but she's at home receiving her mother, so they try to tell Suma, but Suma sneaked out to go abroad to train. Meanwhile, Arena welcomed her mother at the Mekiri's mansion, but suddenly her father goes to see her, since he has something to tell her. It turns out that Azai is a son that Azami had at a very deplorable moment in his life, and he cannot live with this sin while maintaining the Nekiri's surname, so he plans to leave. But Arena hits him and tells him that the way to fix this is by sticking together. After that, they travel to New York, and Arena invites Azahi to be the second cook for the Nakiri. Time after, they all hang out together like a happy family. Six months later, Suma returns to his restaurant where Arena is waiting for him since she wanted to try his dishes. It turns out that after a while, her heart began to yearn for Suma dish and himself, but she wants to stay by his side forever and continue to be surprised by the new flavor that Suma will discover, although she is not the only one. Suddenly, all of his friends go to his restaurant to welcome him and eat what he has learned, and Suma gives them his new disgusting dish, and Arena tells him that he is stupid for not having changed that habit, so Suma tells her to wait a little because with his next dish, he will make her say delicious.